Rally X is brought to you by Cooper Tires, Olsbergs, and Thorns and Keen. Dagen är kort och det är alltid mycket som ska göras. Saker som de flesta inte tänker på. Sånt som får samhället att fungera och som många tar för givet. Våra kunder bygger samhället, ser till att det finns mat i butiken och skapar arbetstillfällen. Året runt lägger de grunden till att vardagen fungerar. Och de förlitar sig på sina maskiner. Deras arbetsredskap som måste fungera för att samhället ska göra det. Även om vi inte syns vet våra kunder att vi alltid står vid deras sida. Om något händer är vi där och ser till att arbetet kan fortsätta. Våra kunder är aldrig ensamma. De känner oss. Och vi känner dem. Visst, vi jobbar med några av de främsta varumärkena inom entreprenad, lantbruk och park och förvaltning. Vi har flera avancerade anläggningar där vi kan göra allt för de maskiner vi säljer. Men ännu viktigare är att vi är tillgängliga. Vi finns i närheten och kommer när våra kunder behöver oss. De vet vad de kan förvänta sig av oss. Eftersom de känner oss och det gör att de kommer tillbaka. På Staffare säljer vi inte maskiner. Vi säljer trygghet och kunskap. Hello from Nice and Barnum in Denmark. We are ready for the 2023 season of Rally X. Can't wait to get started. My name is Andrew Coley. This is Hal Ridge. We've got supercars behind us and, and we're, we're just about fit to burst. I'm excited. It's not unusual for me. No, but I think that's unanimous across the paddock, isn't it? There's such a, a great feeling here. We haven't been here very long and uh, nobody can wait to get going. It's a, a lovely, sunny Denmark we've arrived in. And uh, yeah, the action is going to be frenetic all weekend. It is. So we're going to take you down, just introduce you to some of the supercars. We've got tons of cars here, as always, all the support categories. This is Peter Hedstrom. Let's go this way. We'll head down the paddock. Uh, that is Cal Ward, who's a new driver. How come? With us, obviously. Can't leave you behind. So um, Hedstrom's back, late entry. Maybe not going to use that car all season. No, I mean, Hedstrom runs a, a customer program, and uh, he's going to race the Hyundai this weekend. Might use different cars through the year. Of course, the Hedstrom Motorsport guys have polos available, but critically, he's going to do the season. So that's great. They've got Cal Ward, a, a rookie to rally across this weekend. So fantastic to have him along as well. Valentino Rossi down here. Look, uh, in, unfortunately, he's not racing this weekend and that tracks us. He's not going to win in the supercar category, but I do like RC cars, so that's cool. OK, up to here, uh, we've got a couple of names which are going to be very familiar to those of you who've been following Rallycross for a long time or even indeed a short time. Johan Christofsson, five times FIA World Rallycross champion and OC Vaby is teammate, of course. Uh, these guys were here last year, but how there's been a bit of a switcheroo with the cars. Let's go in. Yeah, so Johan's actually driving the car that his teammate Gustav Bergström drove and Nils Andersson drove in uh, in Julius last year. And OC Vaby's driving the car that, that Johan drove in Rally X last year. So there's a, a few technical differences between them and it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out across the course of the weekend. Cars are looking good as well. Have a look around the liveries on this. Lovely tribute as well to Craig Breen on the side of the cars. Everybody thinking of Craig this week, uh, particularly with WRC Croatia going on as well. Uh, looking good to go. That's about as mint as those cars are going to look this weekend because once we get stuck into turn one, we all know what happens down there. Uh, our man's walking back because we're going to take our time. There's a van reversing in behind him. Don't want him to get run over. Uh, so we'll go, we'll go this way. Let's go this way. Then you won't get run over. Let's go, Eero. Nice one. Okay. So JC team over here. Excuse us, guys. We're going to head in. Another familiar name. 
but a different number how so backward is normally 113 but unfortunately he can't have the 13 this weekend so he's normally 13 and sorry this weekend 113 well yeah he's owned 13 for so long hasn't he but uh, of course uh, another late entry to this championship Andreas w was commentating with you last year in Hullius, wasn't he? Uh, a massive rallycross fan, racing this weekend with the JC squad. Of course, he raced in Nitro with, with the DRR JC team. And uh, yeah, 13 was already taken. Victor Ranks, I think, has got 13, hasn't he? So uh, Andreas is 113. Quite common to see a driver use their number, but add another digit on the front of it. So they've still kind of got that number, but not quite. I was talking to Victor Ranks at British Rallycross last weekend, where me and Hal both were at Lydon Hill, and he was joking about how they were going to approach the situation with Andreas. But looks like Ranks has won the fight for the number. Now, behind us, we've got a new driver to uh, lights, supercar lights in Anderson, stepping up from Crosscar, Crosscar Junior, I think, and, and the second driver ever to be offered the licence under the age of 16. Yeah, so a 15-year-old Lucas Anderson driving for the JC squad. He moved to JC to race in Junior Crosscar for last season, had a brilliant final round in, in Strangnas. And of course, Oliver Solberg was the, was the first driver to drive as a 15-year-old. Remember Oliver driving his father Petter's DS3 in, in Rally X a few years ago. So a big honour to, to get that privilege to be sanctioned by the ASN to, to drive before your time. And uh, you've, you've got to prove your worth to do that, haven't you? So Lucas has had a, a great junior career in, uh, in this JC squad. I think he's got some great foundation here to, uh, to really surprise some people this season. Getting back to basics, let's go this way. Come on out of the tent. You can uh, follow us down if you like, if you don't want to get run over. Um, get it, there you go, perfect. Come this, go on, follow us. Come this way, come this way. So, supercar is 600 horsepower, four-wheel drive, two-litre turbo. Supercar lights is around half that in terms of power, but still all-wheel drive, sequential gearboxes. So many of the, the big drivers in Rallycross have come up through that feeder category over the years. Ah, the smell of fuel and anti-lag. It's, you know, it's like going back in time a little bit, isn't it, somehow, with all the electric motorsport going on. It's OK to like electric motorsport and still to like anti-lag. Look at this. Honda Civic being warmed up. How another late entry. How much do we have to shout? I've forgotten. Yeah, me too. Fantastic to have Kevin Erickson back, a real part of Rally X, the, uh, an intrinsic part of Rally X. I don't know if anyone can hear us now, Andrew, but he's racing this Honda Civic that he drove in, in Nitro Rally Cross a couple of years ago. And uh, it'll be really interesting to see the developments the OMC squad have made and how fast he can be this weekend. Now we've spoken about supercar lights already as one of the support categories coming in this way. Uh, we've got Cross Car and Cross Car Junior. They're going to warm this up properly now. And we've also got open two-wheel drive. And behind me is Derek Tohill, who's been a twice a European champion in the, the rear-wheel drive, the touring car category. So this car should be well suited to that. How our previous champions, Simon Tiger, I think had a million horsepower before, has got an extra hundred. Uh, we've got the, the, the crazy Merc with the hybrid drivetrain. I was so excited, I can't wait. Yeah, uh, Simon Tiger had a, a real problem last year, didn't he, with uh, all the misfortune, and uh, Johansson came out on top in the title race with his, with his mad hybrid Mercedes. Fantastic to have Derek here, double European champion, as you say, a, a British Rallycross champion as well in supercar. This is the car he used to race in, touring car, and uh, Rally X is really attracting drivers from different areas. It's someone travelling all the way from Ireland, and uh, yeah, there's been a lot of work gone into this car, I know personally, so it's going to be a, a big weekend for this team, and. Fantastic for him to be carrying Craig Breen's sticker on the side of the car. It's been an incredibly difficult week for motorsport in general, and uh, especially in Ireland, you know, the, the motorsport community in Ireland is very close-knit, so um, Derek's proudly wearing Craig Breen's sticker on the side of the car this weekend. Yeah, I think everyone got Craig in mind, doing it for Craig this week, and he loved this sport so much. We're looking forward to getting another season of Rally X underway. Kevin's car's getting warmed up. We need to warm up our vocal cords. I think it's about time we go racing. Andreas Backward, a bit of a different role for you this weekend than the first rounds of Rally X last year. Last year you were filling in for me in the commentary box, now you're back where you belong in a, in a Rallycross car. How is it to be back in an Audi S1 supercar? I definitely like being in the car better than in the studio, even though it was fun in the studio as well. Like uh, Working with uh, Coley and all the guys in the, in the comm box there, uh, it was a great experience. And second best to do uh, other than racing myself. So cool to be here in, uh, in Newsom. I think the track is absolutely epic. It's, uh, it's a proper Rallycross track. First time for me racing rallycross in Denmark. Uh, I raced here as a youngster in karts with uh, Kevin Magnussen and those guys. Uh, so yeah, really, really cool to like start the season off here. And you've been racing uh, electric cars lately. Now you're back in a supercar, the ADS one that you're quite familiar with. Back with JC as well. How is it to be back in uh, this supercar around this circuit? 
I mean, I've sh I missed the shifter and the, the smell and the sound, and it's proper cool. It's not as fast as the electric car, but it's it's as much fun, you know. It's uh, I enjoy it very much. Like the, the car is so fast. This car I've uh, have been in the hands of EKS and JC for many years, and they have dialed it in for many years. And we we can only do small bits, you know. I, I think the pace is decent, and uh, we're up there fighting. So pretty pleased with how it's going so far. You haven't had many laps around here so far. It's a technical circuit, isn't it? A little bit like earlier, there's every corner's got different dynamics. Have you have you found the secret to Nissan yet? Uh, I think I'm getting closer to it, but definitely the, the braking in underneath the tunnel is very hard and tricky. After that, there, there's this hairpin coming over the bridge to get the correct line so you get like really good speed. I see Johan there is flying over the jump where I, I'm flat on 60, you know, but I, I can't get the grip to to, to match his pace over the jump there yet. So I know he have a few more laps than me. Uh, so hopefully with a few more, uh, then maybe I can beat him. Good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. All right. Kevin Eriksson, a double Rally X champion back in the past. You're a Nitro Rallycross driver now and uh, your first time here at Nissan this weekend. How is it so far? Uh, you know, to start with, really cool track. Uh, I, you know, I watched it from the sidelines so many times. So it's, uh, it's really finally great to, to be able to race on it. You've had an injury you've been carrying for the, for the last year or so. You've been racing the electric car in, in America and, and this car is, is quite different. It, it, I, I know you're still carrying a bit of an injury of your foot. How is that in the Honda Civic? It's not perfect. For sure, you know, I'm still hindering slightly by my, by my right foot and the throttle is slightly longer in the Honda, so I struggle a little bit more. I, I, I've lost a lot of movement in my, in my foot. So, uh, but I mean, I need to adapt to it. It, it. it wasn't a perfect run now in free practice. It was also also, you know, the first time I was back in a supercar, we didn't have any time to do any testing or anything. So it's been kind of a wake up call again, how to drive a supercar. So, but I, uh, you know, the lap times are there. We are very tight, uh, the top guys. So it will be a fun day. It's a new joke lap here, isn't it? I know you haven't raced here before, so maybe that doesn't make as much difference to you. But what do you think of that new section after turn two? Really cool, really tricky. I almost ended in the wall now in, in free practice too. So uh, for sure, I need to have a much cleaner one in the, in the heat, but I like it. Ulrich, welcome back to Rally X. It's been a couple of years since you last competed here and I think you'll be hoping for a, a better weekend than last time. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I'll try to relax and have fun and uh, especially my guests. Uh, I have 150 people in the tent, so uh, that's sponsors and friends and everything uh, is following me here. So uh, I hope they will cheer, cheer for me and, uh, and let's see what I can do. Have they got a few beers in the tent and, uh, you know, are you feeling the pressure of the support or, or, or is it good to have them here? It's good to have them here. I, I try to have no pressure and, uh, and have fun on the track. Uh, I know the, the pro drivers with, uh, with the good cars will be really hard to compete against. But uh, after the practice, I saw that I was uh, have, uh, quite a bit in front in, in the AM class. I have eight tenths to the second. So, uh, yeah, I think I think I'm I'm uh, the best AM driver. So uh, let's see. Um, we have uh, a little issue with the clutch in the second practice. It was sliding a bit. Uh, so uh, we try to to make it and uh, and be prepared for Q1. Is it nice to be racing at home? I mean, obviously you've got your guests here, but this is this is a home race, a big home race for you. Yeah, it's really big. It's I think it's more, the more, most important race for me to win because it's uh, it's in front of home crowd and uh, all the Danish people here. Uh, they are complaining about me when I didn't win the European Championship, so now they can see how good I'm uh, on home track. All right, well we'll come down to the party in the tent later. Good luck. You're welcome. <laughs> there will be pl plenty of beers, so welcome. <laughs> Johan, back in Rally X. Great to see you here. Uh, what's the what's the plan for the weekend for you and your teammate? Uh, well, I mean, we, we have try, of course try to do our best results that we can and uh, I mean, we didn't have maybe the best preparation going here, but um, this is a little bit the preparation we, we do uh, before the World Championship uh, kicks off. So, uh, yeah, we'll try to do our best. I mean, I really, really enjoy Rally X Nordic. I think that is uh, a great time of the year to, to start off the Rally Cross and, and go here and, you know, drift some cars and have some fun. Nissan Barnum, there's that lovely double jump coming onto the straight. Seen some big commitment in practice this morning. What's the trick to getting round here quickly and, and how's the new Joker lap? 
Uh, yeah, new Joker Lab is nice. It's quite tricky over a crest. You have to set up the car before the crest is a bit blind. So uh, I think that can can make some changes. Uh, the Joker merge will be interesting. Uh, let's see what happens when two cars arrive there at the same time. But but that's always the same in rallycross. Uh, apart from that, it's uh, quite fast and technical in some areas on this track. You need to be really neat and tidy on the last uh, tarmac part. But you have to have some big commitment on the braking under the tunnel and, and after the, the bridge as well. So uh, yeah, it's a nice track. And how's the adjustment back from electric power to uh, internal combustion? Uh, no problem. <laughs> Good luck, mate. Thank you. So we've got a brand new Joker Lab at the Neeson Barnum, which is just after what I would kind of call, is it turn one or is it turn two? Because the start comes through the middle, it's complicated. Yeah, so it's a unique track, this, because you start halfway around the lap, cross over the main circuit, and then you come, you rejoin the lap after the second of the jumps down the hill. <laughs> So this is turn two, effectively, yeah. because turn one's in the background on the loose, and that's where you get those lovely still images from the photographers of the cars all sliding sideways through the first corner, and then turn two has always been very, very tight. We've seen loads of action here over the years, and I think the Joker being on the inside on the exit is actually going to free up the first corner a little bit because you can afford to go tight and, and Joker, and you can also afford to run wide and know that the whole pack's not going to be coming with you because someone will probably joker. So it's going to change the dynamic in the first corner. And uh, the joker itself is also quite interesting. Yeah, it is. So the joker used to be over the far side, if you remember, it was at the end of the straight. It was kind of a little kink off the left. It wasn't very long. It's still not very long. If we make a move over and have a look at it, Hal, it's, we come off tarmac basically in turn one, turn two sweeps across this way look and, and drops down the hill. When they told me where the joker was going to be, in my head I was like, oh, I was going to be quite flat around the back of it, but actually the elevation change here is massive compared to what I thought it was going to be. Exactly the same for me, Andrew. It's funny what you have in your head and then yeah. how things are in reality, because it's actually quite an incline up there into two. And you see that a lot, what we've seen in the past, where the cars rotate on the way into that second corner. There's that big curb on the inside, and you get the cars slow down a lot because they're climbing that bank. So this section of the track behind us, as you run through the barriers down the hill and then back to the finish line, is actually coming downhill quite a lot. And that's made it a big drop here in the new Joker section. Really, really loose as well. I mean, we've just been walking around, but if we have a look at the... If we have a look at the surface, it's, it, it's really, really loose. You can smell the dust sticks off it as well, the, the substance that's used in Scandinavia to keep the dust down. And um, yeah, it's fantastic you go from gravel to tarmac and then immediately back to gravel again. This is a proper old school rallycross venue, and I think this addition doesn't detract from that at all. I don't like turn one jokers, but by turn one, I would mean over there. So when you split the pack in turn one, I've never really liked that. I think it takes away from the action. What we've got here is we've got a joker just after a tightening turn one into turn two, which is awesome anyway. And it's going to be at the end of the lap because remember, the start comes in here, but then they complete the entire lap. And we're basically here two corners from the end of the lap. So I'm expecting tons of action. Uh, the barriers look pretty close down there as well. How not particularly tall. I think it's going to, anyone's going to end up in there. Well, there's a big compression, or well, not a big compression, but there's certainly a compression. So you, the cars are going to come in relatively straight, but they're going to be loaded up to the left-hand side, and they'll step sideways going down the bank, and you'll inevitably end up running wide. We can't quite see the exit from here, and we, as we've only just got here, we haven't looked at the exit, but I'd imagine the exit also tightens because it's quite a tight right-hander and then into a very tight left. So you're not going to be able to carry loads of speed there through the latter part of the corner. Back to your point about it not being in turn one, it's very similar to Julius, isn't it, where you have all of that action in the first corner, and that's the big disadvantage of having a first corner joker, isn't it? You know, like Lydon Hill used to be, is you would split the pack and you lose half of that drama. Now you've got all of the drama for the first two corners. We did see a lot of incidents here in this area before three, didn't we? Because the, the, the circuit funnels down, there's just nowhere to go. So I actually think this is the best of both worlds. You get all the drama in the, in the first two corners and then this splits up and yeah, I, th I think the, the elevation change, where it was on the circuit, the Joker here before was very, very fast entry, and we saw lots of difficult manoeuvres there, didn't we? And, and the, re the return speed, you'd come back onto the circuit very low speed compared to the cars on the main lap, and uh, it, it was a solution, but I think from what we see so far, this is a much better solution for me. So we're both excited about it. I reckon the Delta's going to be 1.6. I'm totally making that up. I've got absolutely nothing to base it on. How was your guess? Uh, there's a fence there. I might go and sit on it, but... Um, <laughs> I don't know, two and a half, two and a half seconds. There you go, find out who wins later. So welcome to Neeson. That is uh, a bit of cross car action going out on the track. Here we are in our lovely commentary box. Look at this, that's real. It's not a green screen. You know, we're not projecting it in. That is the paddock and Neeson Barnum 
bathed in sunshine. How Ridge got sunburnt yesterday, um, and we picked up some suntan lotion this morning. You know, I mean, <laughs> all, all you need to know all the important things that have been going on. We're super excited. Q1's happened already. We'll bring you some updates on where everybody is, and we're going to go racing with Cross Car in a minute as well. How is it good to be back? It's fantastic to be back, isn't it? It's uh, a brilliant old school rallycross venue. This, as we look back at some of the highlights from Q1 in Supercar, and uh, yeah, there's a lovely mix of loose gravel, some quite abrasive tarmac in places as well, and. Uh, yeah, old school. That, that, we always use that word, don't we? But it, it is a but it, real old school. Yeah, it's pro, there's proper loose dirt here. I mean, that, look at that turn one. That was Roma getting ultra late and sideways in the first corner. This is the new Joker dropping off around the outside. Again, here, look at the dirt. Uh, we were speaking to Backer earlier on. He was telling us about his Q1 experience, which you'll see in just a moment. Drone shot here. There's the merge. She come out the Joker on the inside line, but on that occasion, he was beaten to it. So I'm already disproved immediately at the start of the show because we hadn't walked to the end of the Joker yesterday when we made that, uh, that VT, and uh, it's much more open on the exit, so I think it's actually a lot quicker than we thought it was. So this is backward, look, getting a squeeze with Belevsky. It was OC Baby that got caught in between them. Belevsky ran out wide, backward with a bit of contact on the inside. And then Belevsky was pulling out loads of dirt. We spoke to Andreas Hal, and he said that Belevsky's cutting all the hairpins, and that meant he couldn't make up the time. So when you know when the joke attacked, look at this again: the dirt out the road. Andreas hopping off to the Joker, not enough. Yeah, we saw Belevsky pull out quite a big bit of uh, curbing uh, earlier in the lap. This is uh, Yuri getting out ahead of Andreas. They're very similar cars, those two Audi S ones, although run by different teams, both from the EKS stable initially. Great to see Andreas in a fight. They're great to see him back in Rally X Nordic. Christophson on the inside here with Hedstrom and then Kevin Eriksson in the Honda. But look at this move from local man, Ulrich Linnemann. Last time he was here, as I hinted at in the interview, he had a bit of a disaster. He's got 150 guests and sponsors here. And he absolutely nailed turn one on, didn't he? It was mega. Experience of the track, that very significant. That uh, ability to run really wide on the exit of the first corner there. We'll see that a lot through the course of the weekend. This is the elevation change in the Joker. They came out comfortably ahead of Kevin Erickson in the end. Kevin, as we heard from that interview, carrying that little injury, so he's struggling a little bit in the car compared to the Optimum, and he's right there, Christofferson. Now, Linneman, in fact, won Q1. He was faster than Belevsky, Christofferson, backward, Kevin Erickson, so a brilliant result for them. They'd had an issue with the clutch, which meant that they were working on that just prior to the session when we went down and spoke to Ulrich. So he'd be very pleased with that as a result. And uh, it was a 228.7 was his time in the session, but Supercar, crucially, is actually split into two different categories. So there's there's Pro and there's Am. And uh, he's in the Am category. So that's the, the lower of the two categories, and he won Q1. They'll split them up for the semis and the finals, I think. Uh, first time we've ever ever done that. We're going to go racing now, though, with Crosscar. This is Crosscar Senior. Forgotten how good the noise was at the start. Just thought he'd let you enjoy that. Me and Hal were stood down there for Q1. Absolute bundle into turn one. All the different lines you can take, and then getting late on the brakes. It tightens up into turn two. And then you drop off with the Joker on the inside line. So they are allowed to take the Joker on lap one, as you can see. Look at the elevation change through turn two, Hal. Cross car will talk you through the different categories as we go as well. Want to introduce you a little bit to the Nissan track. You come through, and then they cross over where the start line is. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty epic place. Absolutely, and, and what's important to note here in the Rally X series is the fastest go first in the next session. So these are the fastest five drivers from Q1 earlier on today. Passy Penton it was, the finish driver, such massive experience in this cross-car category, who went quickest earlier on, and the track's cleaning a lot now as well. We'll see, let's watch as they come down into what is turn two away from the start, and there's so much loose on the outside, and that really affects your Joker entry, as you saw in those Supercar Q1 highlights. It's Hammerquist who leads. Al got Hammerquist and Sebastian Ehrenholm, who of course won the uh, NRX Cross Car Series this year. Well, last year, effectively, because Cross Car was uh, just on the European leg. You can see the gap, 0.6 of a second, onto the straight. The straight started to pick up just a few little bumps and dips. The drivers were saying what a brilliant job the track team had done in prepping this place. And if you've watched this track before, you'll know that the Joker that used to be up at the far end. So just where they've gone past, uh, they're heading up now onto the top of the, the double crest and the jump coming down. These cars don't get so much air, but supercar this morning, we saw some people hanging onto it over there, didn't we? Yeah, it's like uh, Rally Finland almost, isn't it? Where you hit the limiter twice as you skip over the jump. This is Enholm in the Joker on the middle lap, lap two. This is to cover off those that have Joker behind. And he hasn't. So Stur I think it's Sturberg who's got through. Baldin's, uh, we bear in mind, this is the first time we've seen these cars, guys. So apologies, we're not IDing them quite as fast as we will as the season goes on. Window flapping as well. 
Ah, uh, so Ann Holm hooking a wheel. Look at the dirt they're putting out on the inside of that kerb. Enholm, another super experienced cross car driver. Of course, he won the uh, European leg of the uh, the Nitro Cross Car Series, yeah. didn't he, Andrew? That you were commenting, commenting on. Uh, I was going to say earlier this year. It was last year. Now, we're, we're getting so confused with our years, aren't we? We're really not sure when anything happened. To be honest, <laughs> off into the Joker, up, up on the standard lap, dropping down. There's that elevation change. So the standard lap sweeps down much more smoothly. And then as you come across, oh, tight merge in the background. Over the line, though, it is uh, Hammerqvist to. Ah, oh, no, Hammerquist hasn't jokered on lap three out of three, according to our timing. So Hammerquist is not showing as indicating on the joker on our graphics. So we'll see. We don't actually have a uh, a joker indicator um, at the moment. Issue. Because, yeah, that's a technical issue. And the technical issue is, and it's very, it's very simple, is that you do three and a half laps here. So the section they're in at the moment, they actually do one more time than the running lap because the start line's so unique. And I love that, that it starts halfway oh, through the lap. Yeah. But uh, of course, that brings some technical issues sometimes. Well, the technical issue is that basically on lap one, they can't fire the Joker indicator. There's a loop under the track if you want to get right into it. And, and as the cars cross over, the transponder on it sends a signal to that loop. They've crossed it. Now, because they're on lap zero, in effect, it couldn't pick it up. So our timing screens don't show it. The graphics on your TV screen do. So you can go off the graphics on your screen. They should be accurate. The minute I say Hammerquist uh, showing us a 236.1, Okay, yeah, okay, so that, that as, as far as we can see that stands, so that may just be an issue with our graphics. Must be honest, pretty tricky to keep up with it all when we're trying to introduce you to all the classes, a brand new season, liveries have changed, but uh, we're here and we're enjoying ourselves. Hope you guys are as well. Let us know on social media if you're watching. Let's face it, cross cars aren't the easiest to identify at the best no, of mate. times from a long way away, no, are mate, they? Especially not in the mud. Luckily, no mud today. It might rain overnight tonight, apparently. It's about 17 degrees Celsius here. You've got good experience of driving a, a cross car type machine in the mud, haven't you? Mate, right? yes, I, I have. <laughs> Recent. <laughs> too, yes. Yeah, they need side... A lot of these guys actually run side windows, so you look at the cars on the three cars on the far side of the grid, including Nick Merstow, I think it is, on the far side, isn't it? And, uh, yeah, it just gives you a little bit more chance to keep the wet out. Oh, climbing up the back. You've got to be very careful with open-wheel cars that you don't get completely launched here. You get rubber on rubber like that, and you can get the car fired over. See, Merst out, he gets down into turn one first, runs a little bit deep, though, opposite lock on the exit, and then straight off into the joke lap goes uh, Noel Eliasson in the black and yellow Edge Extreme car. The Edge cars are the slightly squarer cars. Speed car wonders are the ones with the, uh, with the kind of pointy windows. P1, P2, P3 at the minute. Different manufacturers for cross car. They all have to meet the same regulations, if you like. And they're getting closer and closer to... FIA changed the rules, didn't they, basically? And, and they, these cars were a lot lighter, Hal, and they're now getting closer to those FIA specs so that people can compete between countries. Yeah, and what's been great about the uh, the Rally X Cross Car Series over the last few years is that's been a, a staged introduction, hasn't it? There hasn't been a, a wholesale change to all. Oh, this is going to be a move around the outside. It'd be amazing if you can get that done. Into turn two as it is on the start of the lap. Still side by side, down the hill. Nice. Hang on to it. Hang on, I wasn't sure when he got on the dirt and just ran a little bit wide. These two, Eric Anderson and Rasmus Pearson, super experienced as well in, in racing these cars. And you've got to give a good degree of respect. Yes, those crash bars are between the front and rear wheels, but it is still possible to lock the wheels up between each other. So you need to be, it's not like a car, is it? You can't use the side of the car to rub you along lean side someone else yeah. like you would do in a, in a supercar or a lights, for example. Yeah, you can't, so that, yeah, as Hal said, the bars kind of stop you getting hooked up, but you can't lean, which, which you can in anything with doors on it. Um, just a word about the, the two straights. So there's... Oh, Look the at the flames out of the back. Get in. Merstad stays out. So top left-hand side of your screen, if you're brand new to all of this, which uh, I'm sure... I hope we have got a few new viewers. But uh, the green indicator shows you whether or not a driver has joked. And we'll say Hammerquist, it didn't show last time out, but that's, uh, we'll get that sorted, don't you worry. I always feel pretty new to it at the start of the season as well. You know, It takes a little while just yeah. to get back in the, in the green, doesn't it? Different series run, different timings and different graphics and things, so... Uh, I love the first round, though. New liveries, you get to see people you haven't seen for a long time. Oh, it's just a, it's just, oh, no, I love every Rally Cross event I ever go to because I'm a sad anarch, aren't I? But, uh, <laughs> God, can we have that on your graphics strap, <laughs> mate, in future? But the first round is always extra special, isn't it? Because it's, it's all new and fresh. <laughs> the flames again! All cars must belt flames on, on liftoff. I'm sure we're going to arrange that for electric motors. Well, there must be some sort of way we're going to flame. Well, maybe you don't want flames coming out of there. Merstad's absolutely nailed that on, look. Through the long left hand. Watch this, look. Certain amount of opposite lock on the throttle. Runs it out to the arm code. Checkered flag. 
237.9, so 1.8 slower than uh, Algot Hammerquist went. Oh, look at the rear right corner completely off. Must have clipped the barrier. I was just looking at the timing screen. Rear right corner. I don't know if we can get a replay of that if we did see it. Sam, we were just looking at timing to see if he most had gone quicker than Hammerquist. Here's another look at the start. That's we do see wheelies with these cars as well. If you're not simple, not like that, actual wheelies where they sit down at the back with so much grip and wheelie off the line. Was that Rasmus Person, I think, with the damage across the line or or Eek Merstad? They basically look identical from the rear, don't they? So uh, it wasn't Eek Merstad because Merstad uh, crossed the line without touching the barriers. Yeah, so it was Rasmus Person, and, right. and and Person lost so much time here in this fight and probably could have gone a little bit quicker. On the uh, this is a great oh. move. I got, the braking down there is so difficult, isn't it? Into uh, Down the end of that straight, because the gravel gets dragged into it all the time. So to go around the outside... I got halfway through my sentence and then something exciting happened, Hal, and as always I got distracted. But we will, we will talk to you about the two straights here in the next race, because the commitment in them is epic. Oh, is that, has it gone there already? Up the bank, that's not where you wanted to go. Drone shot from Vigo Koch, he's here again. Absolutely killing it this morning. Uh, we, were, we were stood there and he would just come over towards us and... Oh, here we go in the background. Boom! Quite was more than a tap, wasn't it? Hung on to the position, though. Go on. Probably didn't lose that much time. Okay, a, a maybe lost a drive shaft, but <laughs> well, and a corner. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, we're going to gather that up. We're going to get the get the sweeper truck out there and, and get cracking. Lap time wise, Eatmaster there went only one and a half temps slower on ultimate pace than Hammerfist had gone in the uh, previous session, and was actually a second and a half down in uh, the overall standings. So the pace is pretty similar in the top couple of races here. And we've got some out of position drivers as well. Riku Hukar, the Finn, he's uh, always spectacular. He's coming in race four later on. So, um, and Elias Fenson, who won twice last year, was the only top driver to win twice in, uh, in cross car last season. He's coming in the last race of the session. So the strength and depth in cross car this year, as always. and. Um, yeah, it's some of the most frenetic racing you'll see anywhere in Rallycross. Absolutely. There's those windows, look how. What I would have given for a window. I think you need to stop complaining. I enjoyed it, mate. It was brilliant. It's interesting that... Well, I think we need to explain to the viewers what we're talking about. Sorry, yes. Uh, I was very lucky to, to race uh, the, the, the British equivalent of a cross car, an RX150 at Lydon Hill, in absolutely atrocious conditions. And Were you uh, feeling lucky when you were having your no, face mate, filled with mud? I was feeling very lucky when uh, when I did the deal to come, and then I looked at the weather forecast, and, and it had changed from a 5% chance of one millimetre of rain to rain all morning. To all the millimetres. Yeah, and that when I tried them a few years before at Lydon Hill, it also rained. It got to the point, actually, where marshals and people were saying to me it's a shame you're here because whenever you're here the weather's absolutely terrible so uh, apparently I'm, I'm the jinx but what I was talking about is, is it's interesting some people use a grid across the front screen specifically so they don't get mud on the screen yeah the mud comes in you get filthy but your vision is always clear uh, some people have windows on the side but again you get mud on those there are no wipers on the side of the car so it's pretty tricky to to, to get exactly dialed how you want um, but that's but something all rallycross cars need isn't it a wiper on the side oh, window mate. Absolutely, absolutely. Side windows. If you're not looking through the side window, you're not going sideways enough. I know, but then Clara Anderson won in the same RX150 yeah, that you, you did know. the day before. She didn't get sideways once. Very oh, boring. Fast. I know, it's just so tidy. <laughs> Clara, you're frustratingly good at that. You really are. No, it's good fun. You had better pictures. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a bit of an in-joke. Uh, right. Well, so, yeah, we're going to gather up a couple of cross cars. Look at that. Just look. There it is. They're down on the grid already. Go racing. I still haven't got my paperwork even in order, Hal. I've just, you know, there's too much going on. To clarify that, you always have better pictures. The more sideways you go, the better you the picture. pictures. Yeah, the worse the lap time, but the better, the better the picture. And, and what do you want to hang on your wall? A, a, well, unless you're Johan Christophson, you don't want to hang a, a lap chart on your bedroom wall, do you? You want to hang a sideways picture? Johan would hang a lap chart of course up he would, he, yeah. with, with identical hundreds the whole way through. You just want any, any shots of you on the lock stops. That's what, that's what wins, you know, just looks good on the wall. Uh, I feel like we're back into the swing of Rally X already. Um, you know, we do go off piece a fair bit. You're going to have to deal with that. Um, it's good fun, though. You can get in touch with us on social media. It's pretty busy during the course of a race weekend, but we will try and come back to you. You can find me and Hal on, uh, on Instagram. 
posted some stuff this morning from free practice. Vigo doing his loop the loop away from us. Hal saying it's like Finland and laughing as people are going down the straight on the rev limiter. Talking to rev limiters. Here we go again. Traction. The traction on the outside there from uh, it's Jake Herskainen, so we've got uh, more new drivers. The car just sat, Hal, and that's when you hear the RPM. They weren't as high on the RPM as we heard in some of the previous races. You get too much wheel spin, obviously, and, and the car doesn't go forward quickly enough. You don't have the revs high enough. You do what I did last week, stall on the grid like a Muppet. So, but that was bang on. You just saw the car it just sat and went instead of wheel spinning. Yeah, and we saw quite a few people wheelie earlier as well. So the car hasn't bogged, but it's got enough grip to just grip enough and pick the front wheels up. Oh, and they're side by side coming under the bridge. The braking down here is so very difficult indeed. That's whom that's got up the inside into that corner. These are the two straights you were talking about, Andrew, and uh, the braking areas into both are very tricky. Yeah, they are. So let's let's cover the one you're going to see now. You come down here, look, off a crest, onto tarmac. You're going ludicrously fast, but there is dirt all over the tarmac, and that varies on every lap. And as we say in the background, that's how you get it wrong. Yeah, so nothing that's gone, uh, gone yeah. off there. It, but it's so tricky, isn't it? It's so easy to do, and of course you're, you're using the car in front of you as a reference point to what that grip level is like, but you're also desperately trying to close the gap to them. And it's so easy to get sucked in, isn't it? Anyone that's spent any time playing uh, Dirt Rallycross on the, on the PlayStation or the, the Xbox or whatever platform, you get sucked into someone else's accident, and it's always easy to feel so annoyed with yourself, don't you? And that's the same in real life. Quite often I've been sucked into someone else's mistake yeah. and made an even bigger one, because you're just, your, your vision is, you're just, that bit focused on the person ahead, it's very difficult to drive your own way always and be focused on what you need to do. Unless you're really, really good. And, and I'm not, uh, we're, so. <laughs> we're just average. Um, this is Alexander Hume, who's leading at the minute, Norwegian driver in the Kazmat. But I think it's, I don't think it's uh, incorrect at any level because Kenneth Hansen, 14 time European Rallycross champion, used to come to Croft for the Rallycross Super Prix. And despite his level being that much better than everyone else, he would struggle to beat the local drivers. And he and Kenneth always, always talked about this years and years ago. It's you sort of you don't stoop to their level, but you don't have miles of advantage. John Christophson's five-time World Rallycross champion. He hasn't got massive advantage here, even if he's in the best car. So it, you, you're always battling the people around you. And talking to him this morning, I don't think he thinks he's in the best car right now. They've got a little bit of work to do on that. They've. Uh made a change to the back of the polo, it's the polo, look at this, off the crest, look, pitch it in, look at, look at that, we're turning right but with left lock on, there is no right lock the whole way through and that is how you do a joker lap here at Neeson Barnum through the left hander, Hume comes out, sees the track is clear in front, sees the checker flag, 238.4, remember each of these times is compared with all of the cars within the session and it was fastest first. Um, so fastest first means you're less likely to see people getting right up amongst the top of the times. Where's him going to go? Uh, 238.4. He's going to drop him into P4 in the session at the minute, just in front of Jimmy Osterberg. So to put you on the fence, what did you think of that joker? It looked all right, didn't it? Oh, yeah, I thought it looked mega. So that was 3.1 slower than his best lap in that race. Right, so, so that, we're still so trying to figure out what the delta is, aren't we? Because we had a little bet yesterday and so I was like... Well, unfortunately, we didn't bet anything on it because it looks like I might be right at this stage. Nah. But we'll have a workout in the next race as well. To get a good Joker Delta, you need to see a lot of different races to get a good uh, indication. You can't base it on one instant no, because absolutely. someone might have made, put in a massively good lap yeah. or a not very good lap or whatever. So you need like, four, four or five Averages. to get a reasonable average. Yeah. Look at that. Too late on the brakes. Off into the gravel at the end of the straight. We haven't looked, look at that again, the flames, and then just rotating the car in, look lovely, on the exit, drops off into the joker. Brilliant. That's the other straight, which goes underneath the bridge. We'll talk you through that one in the next one. DNS for Jensen and Linda Quist. Whom does pop into uh, fourth overall, so uh, yeah. a good run, considering the 15 fastest from uh, Q1 have now been. Didn't get out of the gravel trap. Look, we saw them go in, but we didn't see whether they came out, and they didn't. So it's deep enough. There's actually a gravel trap between the road and the, our commentary box, isn't there, Howard? We're having to pitch the uh, rental car over fairly quickly to make sure we don't get stuck. Yeah, that's just to slow you down in your enthusiasm to make it to comms. Well, it's because I you know, just love it so much. Um, I can't wait to see some Joker merges What's when it really there? matters. Is that a bar, Hal, over the far side? In the last corner, do you no, see that? No, that sums up you and I. I was looking at the Joker merge and you were looking at where, <laughs> where we can be entertained later on. <laughs> I, I don't know who's that. sadder. Probably me. Both of us.
Right up here. No, it's not actually. If you look, if you can't enjoy a bit of beer and a bit of rallycross, what's wrong with you? But that look, what a great place to watch. That's the last corner of rallycross track, and I think it might have a bar in it. Neeson Barton, and that's the clue. I'm trying to decide whether I would like to be. I, would I rather be looking at chassis numbers or. He didn't the, even give me the courtesy of a chuckle there, did he, Hal Ridge? What, what are you doing? Thinking about. Oh, Neeson Barton, the hat! Yeah, yeah, you see. There you go. Yeah, so. <laughs> RM2 do Paul Hoffman and Hukar in this one. Hukar on the outside. Riku the kid with a great start. Now, Hal, this is um, unusually low for Riku to go, so it must have been a problem in Q1. With this, we were filming during Q1 this morning, so we didn't see the races from Q1. He jumped the start. Yes, so he did. Uh, we were down there, jokers. weren't we? Yeah, so he, he would have done two jokers. And he, just got, he did a massive wheelie then on, the, on his second start, and he also picked the front wheels up there as well. Now, I don't know if that's... Uh, a, an offence you can be penalised for. I, I must find that out. We'll have a word with Krista, uh, the was... race director, because in autographing, for example, in the UK, you can only wheelie to a certain height for a certain length. You know, it, it's a really, it's, it's regulated, yeah. Because otherwise, you're totally out of control. You've got no way of steering. So I wonder if you popped a wheelie for the entire straight. Let's find that out after uh, this session. But Hukar might be my favourite driver in in rallycross because he is absolutely on it and. Um, what would you say? That's not send me at all, but normally, well, he, he normally, normally is, full he, send. He, he, basically, we don't see Liam Doran very often anymore, so Sandy McSenderson may have to go to Rico Hukar. Who's the most sendy person In now what? that Liam's not about? Robin Larson's got less send. He's got boring and fast and championship well, winning. Yeah, but, that, but that's Robin, that shows Robin's capabilities, doesn't it? If you want to see Robin at his sendy best, you needed to see him at Hollius a few years ago when he'd had an absolute shock at having ended up in... Turn one in hell. Wrong heat, and we've. Oh my god, yeah, through the joke lap. 40 million people have seen uh, the turn one in hell, haven't they? Yeah. Through uh, Anton Markland, courtesy of Anton Markland. TikTok was that? I can't remember. Instagram, Instagram. stories. Yeah, there you go. But, uh, that, but that's where you see people. But it works in some places. I mean, you know, to clarify, it's not always the fastest way. It depends on the cars. The cross cars do need pitching around a little bit more, don't they, to get the rotation on? Yeah, lovely rotation there from Hukar. And he's going quicker than anyone has on lap time so far in this session. A 41.7 last time around, a 41.5 this time. The fastest lap so far was a 41.8 from Hammerquist in the first race. Look at this braking zone here. They are almost onto the tarmac when they get on the brakes. You can see as well, which we always talk about, how much we love the way, if you watch the nose of the car coming up and down, look at that, couple of inputs and, and then Beautiful getting Beautiful the positioning straight. there as well, because yeah. he hasn't put the wheel inside the kerb, just sitting it on the edge, real spatial awareness. Oh, Hukar backing it in down at the hairpin, getting a pop off to the Joker on the left-hand side. His target time at the minute is that of Algot Hammerquist, which is a 236.174 bottom left of your screen. Through the Joker now, watch him try and get the traction on the exit, or flick it back the other way. Hal Ridge said he got the fastest two previous laps. Has Hukar done enough to take the lead in this session? Crosses the line. 235.6, he is fastest. So 235.6, Riku Hukar, Riku the kid, goes quickest in Q2 for cross car. Hoffman, Tudo, Paul and Orav coming around. Yes, Riku. Now that's one of the sometimes advantages of being late. Look at this start. Jumped it in Q1. This time he gets it bang on. Look at look at the gap he's got. And just straight away. Into turn two, look. Gets the brakes on nice and smooth into the inside line. Behind him, there's a bit of battling going on. And then it was really about just trying to get the lap times. Now the tracks do develop a little bit. Problems in turn two. Look at this. Look at this. Exit of the Joker. So his joker split was over three and a half seconds, so it is really? quite long the joker. I think it does the entry so slow you lose you must lose so much there rather than at the exit. That's uh not what we're looking for. <laughs> so <laughs> don't worry, it's fine. Riku Hukar, 235.602 is all you need to know. So the marshal look will go across, little thumbs up to everyone, which is basically saying you, you realise we're doing this now. <laughs> A few little graphics issues at the minute, forgive us for that. Get the gremlins out. And that's a bigger issue. So that is a jump start for uh, Maiju Niemi on the outside of the grid. Pretty sure sometimes, sometimes you react to somebody else, but I think the the, uh, the car in grid slot one, how reacted to uh, Maiju's joke, uh, sorry, jump start. Yeah, she's stepping up to cross car this weekend for uh, the first time, having raced in junior cross car the last couple of years from a, a strong rallycross heritage in, in Finland. I think she went off yesterday in, in free practice too, because of course the, 
the junior cross cars and the cross cars did their practice sessions yesterday evening and um, That's yeah, there's very keen to get away in Q2. 10 million cars here. We have a curfew of 6 p.m. So lots of circuits these days have a curfew of uh, basically a time at which they have to start making noise. And uh, we've got so many cars here, the basic free practice. Some of it had to happen yesterday. And they looked at lunch today and we're going to have to nick 10 minutes of that. We've got too many cars. So lunch was, was extra short to make sure we get more cars in. There you go. So Jorgensen, Gothelsen, Munch on the inside. Then it's uh, Rasmus Rus. And Maiji Niemi trying to come all the way around the outside. Go on, Maiji. Look at that, fantastic. Getting out from the outside slot after a jump start, P5 to P2. I think that's really impressive, Hal. Tell you what, she has come on so much since she first turned up in Cross Car Junior with uh, not a lot of pace compared to the front runners. And to pull that sort of move off around the outside just shows how far she's come as a driver. It's sensible there to Joker on that one, get out of the fight, get uh, your first of the Jokers down. Now she's got clear air to get her head down and uh, try and Joker again. You Joker next time around as well with you. these two guys ahead don't just to stay in that clear air. She's on the back of them already in the background. That may hold her up. That's the problem, of course, of doing an early joker. So you take an early joker. But with only three laps, it's so difficult, isn't it? It is. I, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, I might have been tempted if I'd gone P5 to P2 to hang on just one more lap. But if you if you know, you know she may have looked at the car in front, gone, I know I'm quicker than that car. I'm going to joker straight away. But unfortunately, with five cars in the race, there's every chance there's somebody else out there who's not as quick as you either. So. Cross car. We need to see more cross cars all around the world. It's kind of taking off in lots of different places, but it's it's such a cost-effective way of going racing. And that's the whole point of the FIA cross car system: is that these cars are the same as the cross cars you'd race down in Belgium, especially with the TN5, the, the Thierry Neuville concept with from uh, LifeLive being used down there a lot. The speed cars are, are designed in Spain and used across Europe. So in theory, you can take your car from the Nordic region into the into the middle of Europe, bring it to the UK, and race it anywhere. And, and that's why these are so cost effective, because you can be racing every single weekend and they don't cost a lot to run compared to a, a supercar or a normal car, for example. And they're also hella fast for the money. They really are, that, that's the thing. But they, they don't weigh anything. So the braking is ludicrously late. They require a, a fair amount of skill to pedal. You go through rear tires fairly quickly. But they don't cost a lot either, no. you know, relative to a, a supercar tyre. Exactly. They are cost effective. And they're such a good learning ground. You see someone, I always think watching cross car drivers that, that driving a supercar, and I've had the pleasure of driving quite a few supercars to, to whatever level I've got, and they're so much easier to drive yeah. relatively to, than one of these things. It's like being in a fight driving a, driving a cross car in RS150, you'd knack it after it, whereas driving a supercar is a bit more like cruising around in an armchair. <laughs> There we go. If you ever want to know what driving a cross car or an RX150 is like, it's like being in a fight. And he, he is right. He is right. I would argue that, yeah, supercar and armchair, you know, yeah, that's, that's a fair comparison. Jorgensen coming through and takes it from uh, Gotherson, drops into uh, P2, Kalle Gotherson. Lots of these names will be familiar to you from last year, but we got some new ones as well, as I say. He's right. It's like being in a fight. You, they're so cross cars are so visual, aren't they? Just everything from the the reaction time, watching the nose pop up, and then just as they're in the, you know, you're seeing the nose come down with every little bit. When we talk about left foot braking and someone balancing a car in the corner, you'll see these cars where the nose will come up three times, which you just wouldn't see in a supercar because the the weight is too much for you, it to be so visual. And, and just the inputs as well, how when you see through the window and you see someone, you just can see the lock being that, opened and shut and opened and shut. Yeah. And that's what luminous gloves should be mandatory. Should. At least you can see yeah. what the hands are doing. Yeah. They certainly should. Quite like that livery. It's quite cool. Easy too. And the best livery award was won by. Uh, I like Riku's Riku car. You not like that? It's got the kid written on the side now. Rasmus Roos Martini. Oh, looking really? In the last yeah. one, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Anything with a take on a Martini livery wins. We really do need the to get around, the paddock, get around the paddock, don't we? And have a good look at them all again, considering uh, Brinterson wasn't used to run the golf livery, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. There's some names in this, aren't there? This last race of the session. Elias Fenson, Martin Ugar. Who's missing? Patrick Kong, I think, yeah, on the, the outside. Yeah, the grid. So yeah, it's Ugar, Robin Graner, Elias Svensson, Tanel Terleping. 
Maybe you can look over our shoulders, Andrew, because my eyes are pathetic. I can't see whether he's oh, what, still is going eyes down. of a bat? Eyes of a bat, yeah. What, is it, what would you like me to look at? What, see if he's still... Oh, no. He's, well, are they waiting for... I don't know. Patrick Kong? To the left-hand side of the screen there, where the... Where the uh, well, basically, that, that's the podium, but it's actually blown over backwards. I don't know if anybody's realised that yet. I did spot that this morning. Um, you, the, you've realised. I have. The pre-grid comes down from the left-hand side. So your tyre warm is in a regulated area. It's between two pairs of cones. And it's on the left-hand side coming downhill be behind those two marshals on the left. And a, down, a downhill tyre warm, is, is a downhill tire warm isn't really that useful because you've got gravity in your favour. It, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give you a good idea of what the RPM might be, but that would be where uh, Patrick Kong would be. I still think the tyre warm is a misnomer anyway. Tyre warm, tyre clean, or just a bit of wheel spin. A bit of a rude boy burnout before we start. Rude boy. No one's going to know what that is unless you live in Essex. Or... Well, yeah, rude boy. A uh, man with a car with lots of modifications who hangs around in car parks at evenings with, you know... Any... Normally fast food outlets. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Stick a couple of McDonald's trays under your rear wheels and go, go and send it. That's, that's showing your age now, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> so what? <laughs> <laughs> and I would never do that, McDonald's. Other fast food chains are available. They have trays too. <laughs> there will be people who have no idea what we're talking about. Google it. Oh. Great start uh, by Elias Svensson, white and orange car. Numbers are on the roofs, if you're wondering, you see the 133 there. Look at that, right the way out, over the tarmac at the outside. Oh, inside, trying to make that pass. They nearly got hooked up, and in fact, into the lead because of a mistake by Svensson. Svensson ran super wide there, Hal. Svensson was a bit of collateral damage through, uh, really struggling to turn the car in. That was the same through two, so ran wide and then got squeezed up the inside. That was a brilliant move from Martin Ugar. Yeah. Surprised he didn't joker them, but massive commitment and self-confidence today to try and drag it around the outside. In the past, we've seen one or two people make it work around the outside of three, haven't we? But it's such a tight corner that then drops away and then you're into that tight left hand. It's very hard to make it work, but fantastic. That's the best first couple of corners move we've seen so far this weekend. Yeah, definitely. You can be you can be very opportunistic down there, but it, it, it all depends how it unfolds in front of you. Look at this again. Look at the brakes coming in all crossed up. Just about gets to the apex. Runs a little bit deep like Elias Svensson did on the previous lap. Chucking it in again. Look, hooking a wheel over the inside of the kerb. Svensson was so unlucky last year, wasn't he, to uh, get disqualified from the opener in uh, in Julius. It was something to do with the exhaust silence, oh, so wasn't it? It was and, a tiny uh, little thing. But he held his hands up, said it was wrong. He should have paid more attention to the regulations. But well, then it wasn't really a performance advantage. I think that's the important thing: is that there wouldn't have been anything to gain from it, would there? No, I always it always struggle with these things. You know, like the amount of people that have been lost World Championship races for a, you know a fraction something of a millimeter. Dark. But yeah. where do you draw the line? If something's wrong and you lose out, that's fine. And what it does mean is that people are much more stringent on those things afterwards. And uh, Elias held his hand up and said, yeah, it, it was wrong by the rules. I didn't fully agree with it, but that's fine. And went, and I think that fueled his fire a bit more to, to push harder during the year. And um, he can be a real title contender this season. Was he, uh, he thinking around Tom Markland, Norway there at all? Oh, there's been a few things, hasn't there? That, Kevin, that was the one for me. That Kevin Hansen lost third in the championship last year for an overweight wishbone. Oliver Solberg lost Julius last year for uh, an overweight, you know, rear diff guard. Or, uh, it, it, it happens, doesn't it? Elias Svensson, what was, what's the points for a win, mate? Can you remember? I can't, is it 30? I can't remember. Yeah, I think so, yeah. So with those points, would instead, could potentially have been the champion last year by two points if it's 30, because Svensson was DQ'd from the win, then won the, the set round two at Holius. Crazy, isn't it? How's frantically looking through my notes with me? <laughs> Yeah, I'm right. It was Svensson who then drove with uh, Hedstrom in the final round in, in Strangnas. Do you remember he was absolutely wild in the polo? Super committed. <laughs> like drive, a, drive like a like massive a cross car. Yes, that doesn't work like that, mate. But good effort. Good effort. Hugo's time was actually surprisingly slow there compared to that of uh, Hukar, considering it was a pretty clear run out front. A little bit more scruffy, wasn't it? Especially down here, you know, you lose a couple of tents here and there and they soon start to add up. But uh, 2.39.3, Hukar in the previous race has done a 35.6. So 39.3 is going to put him, Hugo, eighth overall. So still uh, 
It's going to be in the first couple of races of Q3, so that's significantly better than how Q1 had gone for him earlier on today. Decent. In the background, they're clattering up over the kerbs. And now the cross cars are, are going to head back in and, and people are going to come out and wish there wasn't anywhere nearly as much dirt on the track as there is, thanks to them and their efforts. Patrick Conga, DNS. Remember, with these huge entries, we've got a massive entry in cross car and cross car junior that we have three semi-finals. So the top 18 will make it through to the semis. The top two from each of those semis will go through to the six car final. On then to open two-wheel drive. Now, this class is a bit of a mystery to you. The, the, the engineering, the contraptions in this are absolutely bonkers. It's wild. It's like someone's gone, mm, rules, yeah, kind of. I mean, there are rules, but they're loose. This is Rallycross. See, there it is. There's your quote from your man. Hal Ridge says, open two-wheel drive, this is Rallycross. But it, but it, I know exactly what Look you mean. Look at the size of those stones that oh, they're pulling out of... Uh, yeah, oh, did you see the way he booted that off? Skills. Maybe he's a Danish international. Do you remember... We're gonna, here's a throwback for you. Ulu. Ulu, yeah. <laughs> and the bloke with the bollard on the inside. It would take you a long time to long find weekend, it. But if, you, if you head to uh, try and find it, go, go and find Ulu from Finland. Ulu's on Saturday because that's when we lost the uh, power in the paddock. It was, and then nobody knows what happens, do they? Why the power went off. Uh, that'll be in the book when we write it. But, uh, but yeah, basically, um, yeah, there are some big old rocks out there. What was I talking about? The bollard, the bloke with the bollard. Do you remember he, each session he'd be going out and somehow he managed to make this bollard stand up like magic in about a centimetre of sand, didn't he? And then the next race it'd get knocked down again. Then there was the man who stood in the front of the, um, the excavator and they trying to fix stuff. I don't know if health and safety go, is allowed to go that north in Finland. Maybe it just isn't. You know, what I mean, you know what I mean, don't you? It was, yeah, anyway, it was great. Yeah, so you need to go and go and watch that. I'd like to be finished. Was that where Fraz went off at the end of the straight over the rocks, Fraser McConnell? Yeah, it looked like he had gone on into the moon. Yeah, what? Yeah, he went a long way off, didn't he? Oh, I wish I, I wish I could rim. do Fraz's accent because remember him explaining how uh, concerned he was as he started to go off about all these boulders. I remember Fraz actually posted last night on Instagram as well about his supercar win here. Yeah, it was yeah, his yeah. first supercar win against the likes of Johan Christofferson. First podium, wasn't it, the previous year and then first yeah. win, yeah. Yeah, so he was, he, and we were, this was where we said, wasn't it, like what, uh, Superman in a supercar, was it or something? Do you remember? A superhero in a supercar, something along those lines. I can't remember if he said it or we said it, but either way, Fraz, if you're watching, Peter, Stephanie. Big up, Jamaica. I hope they're still watching. Do you reckon they all need more Jamaicans, don't we? Can we not get one in cross car? I'm sure, yeah. Get us a Jamaican over here, come on. You can change your nationality in racing cross car. <sighs> yeah, I could. I can't do the accent yet. I'll have to practice a bit more. They've been teaching me a bit. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, open two-wheel drive. In the middle of the grid is your reigning champion. Oh, steady on with the clutch there. Simon Tiger just inside was the champion the previous year. Kenneth Kong on the far side. And you've got Jorgen Spearson and Simon Hensvik this side. But it's a brilliant start by the champion, Victor Johansson, going to try and shut the door as Tiger runs up the left-hand side of, uh, the right-hand side of Kenneth Kong. Simon Tiger then dropping back in the pack. And in fact, they've all ended up behind, I think, Spearson or is it Engsvik? Joklet now dropping off. It's Spearson in the uh, Fiesta running third. Ensvig in the polo, who's out front. Tiger, that sort of summarised his season last year, didn't he? Yeah. If there was trouble to find, he was in it, had so many different problems, but uh, fantastic to have Ensvig back. Hasn't done all of the open two-wheel drive races in the last couple of years and showing great pace here. Open two-wheel drive with Simon Tiger the year before, which remember was almost a whitewash, wasn't it? Yeah, Except yeah, yeah. For the contact with, where was it? It was in Ulu again. It was in Ulu yeah. with... Um, uh, Thomas Van Leinen. Yeah, it was, yeah, down they into the first other. corner. They both got... <laughs> three times, though. Do you remember they hit each other three times? The run Look at the splitter corner. that Johansson's got on the front of that Merc. Now, we've seen that in, as he goes into the joke. We've seen that in Rallycross over the years, especially in, you know, like, the Metro 6R4 used to have the rally front splitter. Then uh, most Rallycross drivers ditched that pretty soon because it didn't stay on for more than a couple of minutes. Will Gollops, Persia 306, now owned by Ollie O'Donovan, or won the championship, uh, British Championship with Ollie O'Donovan in 2007. That runs a front splitter, but that hasn't lasted very long in Rallycross races before. I wonder how long uh, Svensson runs pretty wide at the bottom of the hill. Yeah, I wonder how long Victor Hansen's splitter's going to stay on his 
enormous Mercedes if he's fighting in traffic like this all weekend. He's made some modifications to it. We're, uh, we're due a quick visit up to his paddock area later on to, to check it out. If you remember last year, he drove... Oh, tight, oh sorry, Andrew, Tiger had a big lock up there. Late, so into the joke that goes Ensvig. Not sure there's quite enough rotation at the start of that. Simon Tiger trying to get through, going to come around the outside. Listen to that noise. Oh, contact between them. Tigers in the wall, running the car the whole way down the wall that time. Now trying to come around the outside line onto the straight. Has to drop in behind. Now looking to the outside again on the brakes. These guys are going at it big time, and it's day one. I was going to say a lot of respect. Well, there was a lot of respect there on the Joker Merge for Ensvig because you could easily just stick the nose there into uh, the final corner and push the other driver wide. He did, and then Tiger ran wide into the wall. I do think with these high-power rear wheel drive cars, they're fine if you're on the optimal line. If you get off it, you in a taxi to the barrier on the outside very quickly, aren't you? Taxi for one, yeah. severson has gone Joker. Has Ensvig lost too much time in the battle with Simon Tiger? No. So Ensvig... Uh, comes around, going to take this one from Tiger. Tiger having run it up the wall on the previous lap. Severson slots into P3, 1.2 seconds back. The winner of the first session, by the way, was Kenneth Kong. So 243.7 by Kenneth Kong in the first one. That's a 243.6 by Engsvig in this one. So their time is a tenth of a second apart between the two sessions. There will be a bit of track development. The track in Rallycross changes on every lap. Look at that, got launched and that. Did that damage Kenneth Kong's car? Did Kong finish? Yeah, he did, but a fair way back. Oh, that was quite an impact yeah, through the front wheel on uh, Tiger as well. Johansson really lost out there from being close to the front early on. I wonder if he'd picked up a problem as well. That um, that huge Merc is a hybrid, and that was what we were trying to talk about earlier before we got before this distracted. Moment. Yeah, and uh, basically he drove his wife's BMW Mini, wasn't it, yeah. with, with a, a hybrid drivetrain in it, and thought, hmm. Electric, I think it's was electric, it electric yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's, I wonder if I could, and, and they've managed to amalgamate that with a ludicrous horsepower engine. Oh, Simon Tiger, by the way, there he is. I said uh, in the preview, uh, what well, the start of the show, that he had about a million horsepower last year, and he, he did. Look at that, cool, he did bang the wall hard, Hal. Mm. But he's got another 100 horsepower. Uh, went to some magician with a rolling road, and they've managed to sniff out another 100 horses in there. I don't think he actually needed them. No. I, mean, I know, but it must be a great feeling when you see the, what, the, the numbers off the rollers. That's great, it? isn't it? 243.6 is the benchmark in Q2 for open two-wheel drive. Got another heat of cars to come. I forgot how frenetic Rally X is. I've got paperwork mate, everywhere. I, I, mate, I, 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 and we're all so outdoors, <laughs> meaning that normally we can put the paperwork where we want. If you're wondering why we're both leaning on the desk, it's because otherwise we'll lose all our grids and all our results in a, a single fell swoop. Norman Pearson, Berkinson and Toehill. The car missing from this side of the grid is Bjorn Stuhart. Toe with a great start, two and a half litre turbocharged engine in that car, trying to head down towards the first corner. Toe Hill's been hung out to dry on the outside line, loses a couple of positions, and into the lead goes Marcus Norman on the inside. Look at that again, the car rotated again. Love that car, looks like a CLK Black Series, doesn't it? But it's, uh, it's a CLK Wankel powered engine. A Wankel is the Mazda rotary engine. Listen to it. It just sounds epic, here we go. And Toehill's car sounds pretty epic. So we went to saw Derek this morning, twice a European champion in the old touring car class, which was two litre rear wheel drive. But how that's not two litre, is it, as we were just saying? It is two litre, but it's turbocharged. So basically... I thought he, it was 2.4, he's gone two two litre, two litre turbo. So, yeah, my bad on, on that. He has switched to supercar. He remember he did the World Championship 2014 with LD Motorsport. Then he bought his own supercar from uh, OMSE. He's been racing that Fiesta since the end of 2015 now. Won the British Rally Cross Championship a couple of years ago, and a six-time Irish champion now as well. And now he's decided to come and do Rally X in his touring car. Now, the plan was just to stick a supercar engine in it, drag it out the shed and... Uh, as you do. You know... A supercar uh, engine. Uh, just yeah, take it racing, and of course, it's never that simple, is it? And I know that, uh, to my cost, trying to uh, do my own stuff. It's, it's never as straightforward as you think, so they've put a massive amount of work into getting this car here. He drove it in the Irish Championship uh, opener at Mondello Park at the start of March and had a few niggles. They tested earlier this week. It's been a massive week uh, for his team and he's just delighted to be in this paddock and uh, driving the car, but they've got a lot of work to do to get it set up how he wants it. Yeah, so this straight in particular has been causing him a few problems, as uh, Andreas Backer had said this morning to, to Hal in his interview. Just making sure that the, the car is doing what we want it to do. Derek was saying he's coming through the right-hander, off the gravel, onto the tyre, grip, then kick. 
then it's still kicking as it comes up over the top of the two crests, at which point he's trying to lay down 500 plus horsepower through the rear wheels. So he said, what are you going to do? He said, well, we've put the rain map on it. So they've put the other map on the engine, which is a softer map, makes it a bit easier to drive. So we were then sort of joking with him, saying, mate, you better hope it doesn't rain. Because <laughs> he's got nowhere to go if it rains. And actually, Hal, it might rain overnight tonight. Might yeah, we, we, we're hoping for sunshine during the racing, but it might be a wet track tomorrow morning. And they were working hard on going back to a setup that he felt more comfortable with, with a uh, spotter, Peter McGarry himself, an accomplished rear-wheel drive driver. To do. Not for Marcus Norman though, out front. Remember, he introduced this car at the end of last season and uh, they've done more work on it over the winter. This looks really beautifully balanced. It's nice, isn't it? Completely different to a cross car, obviously much heavier. He's aiming for that time, not quite going to make it this time. Be close though, 43.9, three tenths of a second off. So Norman will slot into P2. Quicker than Simon Tiger. Tiger was a 44.1 in that first race. A couple of attempts off the best lap done by uh, Simon Ensvig in that previous race. 254.1 for Derek Toe. Look at the wheel spin from the rear wheels. The front wheel's barely moving. Something happened to Derek on the last lap, Hal, from the looks of things. Lost 10 seconds, yeah. Yeah, which because he was in P2, wasn't he? We've got a DNF and a DNS in it. Fair bit of dust as well, and look at that. All locked up on the way down in, just rotates around. That was Person going off and ended up in the gravel trap where we saw... Derek's driving back in through the paddock behind us from our commentary position, so the car looks OK. No one needing to go to the wash bay at the moment because it's lovely. And, hey, the dust isn't bad. I know there was some concerns yesterday about the dust, but... Uh, the dust isn't bad at all, and that, of course, is great visibility. Not great for Norman's visibility, though, out of that left mirror because there's no glass in it. So these are the standings after Q2. Simon Ensvig leads, in fact, from Simon Tiger. Kenneth Kong, you can see, is in P3. So Ensvig with the with the win in the... These, these points, though, these are not championship points. These are qualifying points. You get 50 if you win the session, then it's 45 if you're P2, 42 if you're P3, and so on down. So actually, not a great result for Ensvig in the first session, but the win in the second session is enough to see him at the top of the standings. It's three qualifying sessions, semi-finals and a final. Um, and that will be each of the uh, each of the days. So Saturday and Sunday, we've got rounds one and round two. We've got three double headers this year. We've got one here, another one in Tiep in Sweden in two weeks, a couple of weeks after that. We've got another one in Kovala in Finland. And then later in the year, we've got quite a big gap in between, haven't we? I think it's uh, July, August, is it August? I can't remember, late. We're not, we'd, we only work a couple of weeks ahead, otherwise it will get a bit overwhelming. Um, but yeah, so later in the year, we've got two single headers. And one of those will be with the end of the Swedish Championship and the other will be with the end of the Norwegian Championship. So those will just be uh, individual events over two days. More of a traditional rallycross style. Do you, although I think the tradition's changed, to be honest, how most championships now, aren't they, are trying to do double headers? I think the, the concept's been proven. I know the World Championship's going back to uh, single headers for the most part this year, in Europe at least, and then double headers elsewhere. It, just, it does work. Oh, there's but the advantages to both. Yeah, definitely. On to supercar lights. Fastest first, Simon Olofsson on the inside line. Martin Enlund next to him. Enlund doesn't get the best start. And uh, Lucas Anderson doing a great job in P2 here. Just gets mugged a little bit by Enlund here. Going to get run wide. Anderson coming out really wide, trying to make the pass all the way around the outside, but can't get it turned in. Then Enlund just pushes the nose out as well. Goes joker on the first lap. And Lucas is 15 years old and has made the step, hasn't he, how straight from junior cross car up to up to lights. Yeah, and lost out badly there, didn't he, in the first couple of corners. Just ended up outside, then you've got nowhere to go. And then Enlund got forced out by Shukvist coming up the inside. And uh, Anderson lost out, but ducked into the joker. Fortunately for him, no one went in front of him. Now he can get the hammer down. Yeah, correct, Andrew. He's uh, stepped up from junior cross car. Only the second driver in the series to be granted dispensation by the uh, Swedish ASN to race before his time. You can usually race in the adult classes from 16. Oliver Solberg, of course, was the, uh, the first driver to do that and won the supercar title in style. And was so late on the brakes there behind Shukvist. He's going to joker this time around. We're following the two race leaders. So Enlund drops in and Enlund was, uh, I'd say, got caught up in a lot of that first corner action as well, but does come out in front of Lucas Anderson. A word for Anderson, how P3 in Q1. That's a hell of a job, isn't it, on your debut in Supercar Lights. And that was ahead of the likes of um, Isaac Hockvist, Ola Henry Steintold, Casper Janssen, who, who's won Nitro's North American Series this year and was overall Nitro 
um, NRX Next champion last year. So we're talking about class drivers. To come up, I think, at 15 years old and go P3 in Q1, I'd be well pleased with that. For me, I think that step from Cross Car Junior into lights is probably very good in that you've got momentum. to be so clean and yeah. tidy in a junior car to maintain momentum through the corners. And that's exactly how these lights cars are. Yes, they're four-wheel drive, but they're almost underpowered for the grip that they've got with their four-wheel drive, big, wide Cooper tyres. So uh, they used to move around a lot more when they were using the Yokohama, didn't they? Because it's a different construction of tyre. But using these cross-ply Coopers, they're a little bit underpowered. And I think, no, underpowered for the grip they've got, not underpowered in that they're bad. So I think coming from junior cross car into lights, it's probably a really nice transition. OK, they're a lot faster. You've got to go on top of the speed. But uh, yeah, he's doing an impressive job. but. He's very talented, so I'm not surprised. No, and he's also with JC Race Technics, so he's just got, you know... They've got a bit of experience, haven't they? Why, well, I mean, why haven't they won? We were joking with Yol, uh, it was, I might have been on Instagram, actually saying, when are you retiring? Because you've won all the titles. Like, he's won <laughs> Nitro, World, Euro, everything, literally everything. Drivers, teams, the lot. Like, he might and he's still, about, he's still about 18 or something, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, he, he said he was going to disappear off to some island with everybody's money and never come back. Which was, <laughs> it was a joke, I must say, it was a joke. But it was it was funny, and I'm very pleased for Yol. He's such a, such a lovely bloke, and it's a great atmosphere down there as well, I think, as a a driver you can well understand why you might choose to go with them. It is Olofsson who wins that one. Of course, but you know, Lucas Anderson's sharing a, an awning. He's the car next to Andreas Backerud. Yes. Andreas Backerud, one of the world's best rallycross drivers, yeah. and I personally think that rallycross drivers are some of the best drivers in the world anyway, because look at that how ability. they perform yeah. when they compete. Again, look at Johan Christofferson or Timmy Hansen when they're in Extreme E or circuit racing, how they compare to other great drivers. So what an amazing opportunity for Anderson to be learning off someone like Backerud, because Okay, maybe they're not discussing setups, but you just pick up little details all the time. Yeah, it's just a good place to be, isn't it? You want to be with people who've got more experience than you. But also, they've got to be generous enough to hand that information to you. you but know? I just think you pick stuff up anyway, don't you? How people yeah, operate. The atmosphere. Yeah, atmosphere intent. Mate, we pick it up. You know, if I'm on the line. I mean, I know Andreas Backwood reasonably well. I wouldn't copy everything he does. No. He <laughs> doesn't know what day of the week it is half the time. But he's yeah, an incredible he's very good, rallycross he's very good driver. Rallycross. Yeah, Andreas, if you're watching, you know, yeah, sorry, mate. He's good at snacks as well. He won't be watching because he won't be able to find no, the no, stream. Yeah, sorry, that's Andreas. True. No, he won't. Yeah, he won't. But yeah, you, you pick it up. And as I was saying, if I won the lottery, I have a good idea of the order of places I'd go. And it's not to say the places I wouldn't go wouldn't be wouldn't be bad. It's a case of what works for you. And we've seen drivers come up through all of the teams in this that paddock. That would be such a hard decision. You know what I mean, don't you? Because some people are really hard on their drivers. Others, it seems to be a more relaxed, supportive atmosphere. And, and it, that might work for some drivers and not for others. You've got to, we've seen drivers thrive at one team and not at another, and then swap and get the results at, at somewhere else. Steintolt, Janssen, Tornholt and Oskarsson. Kasper Janssen with that new livery. It's a reflective red colour. It does look really cool. But Steintolt is alongside contact from the outside line oh. there. Oskarsson coming across between Oskarsson gets up the inside of Kasper Janssen. But ends up turned the wrong way round. Either Tornholt does a good job of avoiding the rear end. Oskarsson's uh, going to manage to spin that round and get back out onto the track. How on earth did they all manage to remain pointing forwards as long as they did there? Because uh, Oskarsson was at 90 degrees dire to the direction of travel long before he actually had that spin. He was on the podium here a couple of years ago, wasn't he, Oskarsson? So uh, has good pace around here. Kasper Janssen driving a different light chassis. That's number 18 for those people sad enough to like me to be ticking them off. Um, there's, a, there's a book about that, by the way. <laughs> But he was saying this morning he doesn't feel much difference. Now, I've spoken to other lights drivers who, OK, the, the cars are identical, so, you know, there won't be much difference. But, you, the, you know, your seating position, how you hold the wheel, there's always slight idiosyncrasies in, in any car. And it's impressive that he's able to get in a completely different chassis and feel at home in it straight away. Yeah, he said it felt exactly the same. Now, that's a, that's a good indicator that it's been prepped very well. You know, getting two cars which are prepped really well, and, yeah, they should feel the same. But, as you say, my own experience with that, I used to work at Brown Town Rally's about 12 rally cars and they were identical they were not identical to drive not at all but it's little things like has it had new pads has it had a new clutch are the you know are the suspension bushings worn out each of those things has an indicator doesn't it physically to the way you drive the car you can just tell is it a fresh engine all of those things would make it are the tires fresh so yeah if the car feels the same i'd say the team had done a great job of prepping two cars identically either side of the atlantic and he has one of the masters of the supercar lights concept working with him doesn't he in, in ollie erickson yeah Oli uh, working within OMSE this weekend to uh, help the drivers, Steinsol being one of them, and Janssen, and uh, Ida Tonholt, Kasman as well. So uh, those three really learning off the best of the best. Oli was almost unbeatable, wasn't he, in his, his latter stages? 
of being in supercar lights and uh, yeah like there's no better person to be running a supercar you know depending on which team you go for you definitely back ollie erickson as one of the people you'd have yeah to uh yeah to run your supercar lights absolutely a couple of shout outs coming in fraser mcconnell <laughs> he says big up for the shout out this, this is like a circle isn't it basically <laughs> but that, that's fine uh, and then, uh, yeah, Peter McConnell says, big up you and how we're watching as well. So it's good to know Jamaica's, uh, yeah, major rally cross uh, fan base is watching the McConnells. Uh, but it, it's going to be a big sport out there, big things to come from rally cross in Jamaica. Me and Hal, we, you know, that track, we're getting out there soon. We're coming. We are coming. Uh, from uh, our Rally X team saying, please like and subscribe. So please do. If you're enjoying this and you haven't liked and subscribed, that's terrible. You should do. But it honestly makes such a difference as well, isn't it? The, the, view, the viewership on, uh, on YouTube especially makes a big difference to the continuation of, uh, of any series. series that's yeah. broadcast. So, uh, yeah, do. you're you're doing the series a massive favour by doing that as well. Yeah, give us the numbers. That helps the sponsors. And at the minute, it's pretty tough for everybody. I can tell you in motorsport with the, the sort of global financial situation, if you want to support the series, go like and subscribe, please. That was a right old uh, rally cross start. to Oscarson here? Because it was all sorted out at this stage. I don't know if we're going to see it from this angle. No, we're not. But uh, must have had further contact to get that sideways in turn one and a half. If that's, <laughs> yeah, if that's it, two it, through there. It is, hard to, uh, it is hard to name the various different corners, isn't it? This one's tricky. This one's tight. That's what, the, the corners, joke. yeah. <laughs> Look at the drop-off on the Joker, it's great. We, we oh, first saw the Joker on Google Maps, didn't we, uh, the other day, a picture on Google Maps, which has to be relatively recent, I guess, um, to show the new Joker. I looked at it, it doesn't look very good. And then you get in, the, like I say, just the elevation. But that's the biggest thing. If ever you visit a track that you've not visited, you might have watched, I know, Hollius 50 times on the telly, and then you go there and you're like, oh, wow, yeah, OK, it's, it's more than I thought it was. And, and uh, the same's true in all the different series. Yeah, the hill at Spa, the size of the jumps at Nitro, you look at it all and it, it just all is magnified when you go. So I, I'm glad you guys are all watching at home. If you get the chance to go to an event, doesn't matter which series you want to pick, go. Yeah, do and come I tell you what as well, come to one of these. They're really they're very cheap to get into, aren't they, in terms of entry at the gate. And you're gonna see some of the best drivers in the world, cross cars, all the rest of it. And uh, as we mentioned earlier, there's a bar in the last corner here. So I mean what what's not to like? What is not to like? Here's a loaded question, Andrew. Go on. Have you ever been to a bad rally cross track? Ooh, yes. One. We, can can you, you say that on air? Was? No. It'll be unprofessional. You? No. Really? Yeah. Okay. We'll save it for the book. <laughs> the inside line. Martin Exmouth gets the best start. It's Nils Christian Haug and Lars Eric Haug in this one. Look at that. Look when you hear that, you can hear the throttle there and you can just see the old gravel machine gun chucking it out the back. On the limiter through there. Maybe. Oh, too bit too deep. You get out of that loose and you can't get it turned in. You're waiting forever for that grip to come back. Especially in a lights car, because you haven't got the rotation done on the way in. You know, the line on the front axle, aren't you? And you've got oodles of uh, understeer. The only solution to that is to slow down enough. Oh, someone's got a misfire. Can you hear that? I can. I tell you, I'm going to say it. San Luis Argentina was the one. That oh, was really? The most That's one of my best rally cross memories in no, you uh, ever. No, because it was the best rally cross after party. I think. No, no, no. It was. It was. I still yes, think no. it might be the no, best no, one. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. You know what I mean? The after party was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not denying that. But the, I stood in the <laughs> infield and Petter Solberg did his outlap, having I don't think he even walked the track, and he was backwards off the circuit in the DS3 everywhere, and it was epic. No, but that's, that, yeah, that, that's true. I mean, our oh, spin up in turn one and a half, as we've been calling it. Yeah, that's fair. You know what I mean, though, Dave? It was it was a bit basic. But you know what? We finished the championship there. We had a good time. It was a, my God, it was we a could, uh, There's a shovel well. behind the tent over there. We could dig ourselves a massive hole. No, I'm not too worried be... about it. Yeah, that wasn't the worst run across track ever. Well, we've got it. Maybe always got it. Well, they're usually at that side of the Atlantic, aren't they? But <laughs> I enjoyed. Um, oh, where did we finish it? Rosario. Rosario with. Uh, do you remember Larson versus Hanson? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, all yeah. the contact. Robin won there, didn't they? That's where Timmy and Kevin fired each other off by mistake. Yes, <laughs> and it's also where we used to see the say the uh, not lights RX2 champion get the step up to yeah, try yeah, and yeah. try a supercar. Oh. oh. Expert trying to hold on to it uh, massively on the limiters in the lock stop there, but not necessarily in a good way. Another lap to go, won't make that mistake again on the next lap. Yeah, I enjoyed the South American visits, they were good fun. We've been incredibly lucky, I know we, have, we always mate. say that, but uh, it's when you, in hindsight, when and you look like back, some, yeah, I, I never take any of this. It's Expert that's got the 
I think it's Exmouth that's got the misfire. misfire. It's quite hard because we're hearing different microphones around the circuit, aren't we? And uh, both of the hogs are some way back. Maybe it's not. That time's OK. I don't know. It's fine, mate. You've got a lot of air to fill. You, you know, have an opinion about it. It's all good. As long as you don't sit on that fence in the bottom of the Joker lap, we're all good. Hal. That'd be a great view, though, wouldn't it? It would. Expert. Yeah, you don't. You might have to dip your legs over the back of the fence, might you? Kevin Erickson would have taken them off in uh, FP2. Yeah. Well, yes. We thought Erickson was going to hit the barrier on the outside. So did he. he. Well, yeah, because I said, didn't I? I said to Hal, "Oh, goodness me!" Or words to that effect. Kevin Erickson nearly hit the uh, hit the barrier. We were stood up with Vigo in his little uh, launch area. I had to look to my left, and Vigo's landing the drone right now, which is just epic. Another battery change. There's, there's no one that works yeah. harder in this paddock than uh, than Vigo because. It, a great start by Exmouth. Relentless battery changes for the well, drone footage. We spoke, he said this track's so fast that it's difficult for him to, to keep up with the changes because it, the basic the duration of the drone at, at these speeds is only about two laps. So he's got to pick at what points he he goes. Obviously, he can shortcut the track and join later and to, to make the, the battery last a race. But all the stuff that goes into this in the background that you maybe don't think about at home is, is fascinating. XPF's just lost out there, starting in the uh, first race of Q3, sixth overall. That time loss, he was two temps behind Martin Enland. What happened to Enland? Had, uh, he had a bit of a fight, didn't he, Yeah, Enland? he did in the first couple of corners. Yeah, so XPF did had well. not made that mistake, would have been in the, uh, the fastest race of the uh, next session. So overall, a, a solid run. Yeah, just one mistake. And you know what? That's one of the things I learned the other weekend is just it reminded me how clean everything has to be for a whole weekend for it to just go marginally well. Um, you know, not not you know what I, you know what I mean? A rally cross weekend, you've got to piece it together, haven't you, the whole way through. You do, and that's where the the masters like the Johan Christophsons and the Timmy Hansons, the Andreas Backwards, they uh, they build a weekend, don't they? It's not all about just fighting from the front all the time. It's about building your entire weekend, regardless of where you are at any point. And it can be about recovering a weekend, can't it? You know, when it's that's all the gone, biggest skill for yeah, me is so it's if it goes getting it wrong back. You want how do you do it? But to to win at, at most levels of rallycross, you got a bang, you got to nail it on in, in three or four sessions, and again in a seven. Championship Nitro Rallycross Series. Ericsson going for the round the outside. Oh my goodness me, still got it. Pitches the Honda in. Christopherson manages to slip up the inside line. Goes P2, goes straight to the Joe Clap. So he's confident everybody in this has got similar pace. Belevsky has got Linneman all over the back of him, and I reckon backwards got a problem. No, he hasn't. He's dipped into the Joker behind Christopherson. Oh. Kevin Ericsson is running the car right out to the barriers. He's on an absolute mission. Now watch Kevin Ericsson down into this long right-hander. He's got a little bit of a problem in this car in that the throttle travel is a lot longer than it is in the FC1X. As Eric Linneman runs wide in the background, loses all of the momentum. This is going to hurt Johan Christophsson, who's right onto the back of the Fiat to now. Will Kevin Erickson joker this time around and try and cover off the five-time world champion? So Erickson might go in straight away. Does he respond? No. He doesn't. So Erickson's going to stay out with Belevsky. We need to see the battle for P3. So where is Christofferson versus Linneman? He's passed him. Linneman so shows him. Yeah, he's, Christofferson's gone through. Is Linneman going to get out with Baccarat? No, behind Baccarat, I think. I just think he was too close with that uh, lack of momentum. So Kevin Erickson, we're looking back at this corner of the second again. We saw that in free practice this morning when we were watching above this corner. Oh, oh the left corner. Oh, that's puncture city, that, isn't it, when you run sideways into the kerb like that? It's also four wheels off, Hal, which can be penalised by the uh, by the stewards. You can have three wheels off in rally cross, <laughs> but not four. Kevin Erickson, late on the brakes. Christofferson will have his eyes on Belevsky, but look at the dust in the braking zone as well. Erickson goes joker. Watch for this merge. How tight will this be? Christofferson coming up over the crest. Erickson runs wide in the joker, but it's a great joker. Erickson comes out in front of the five times world champion. The Nitro rally cross regular holding them off after a brilliant round the outside move in the first corner but he's got a whole other lap to go and Christofferson is not going to make this easy for him. Oh, I love it, under the tunnel, there's a big crest dip through there which me and Hal have been here many times for and we saw it last night for the first time properly. In the higher car and he makes a mistake, Christofferson on the inside, Ericsson runs up to the dirt, the five-time world champion buys the traction, Ericsson can't, he jumps the Civic up, now he comes down the clean line on the outside, sideways from Christofferson on the brakes but shows his absolute class. Takes the lead from a mistake.
He's got two corners to go now. We're going to get our benchmark time in the previous session. Linneman's time was a 228.7. This time it's a 229.1. But that, of course, is after the problems in the first corner. Linneman all over the back of Yuri Bilevsky as they come to the finish line. That was frenetic, wasn't it? And I wonder if Kevin Eriksson had less information about the lack of grip down there than uh, Johan Christofferson did, because Johan had got the car stopped on the nose and well turned in. We look back at the replays. Kevin Eriksson round the outside, as you called it, Andrew, in 2016 at the Estering. Yeah. He is the master of that, isn't he? And just relying on that grip all the way to the next corner. You think that move was, what, seven years ago, Hal, and it's going viral again on Instagram at the minute. I've seen it about six times in the last week. It was just a brilliant piece of driving. And it's one of those moves you can pull off. We've seen Linneman do it earlier on today. We've seen... Oh, oh he did hit the wall. Hit. He did hit the wall. Um, Chris Dobson, we've seen do it here as well, haven't we? But you can you can make it work. This was the mistake by Bolevsky. This is also what lost Kevin Erickson the race, because look at all the dirt. So so Christopherson's he already knew. been over it. Yes, and that's where he's so switched on. He's seen it once and he, he knows it's there the next time round. As you say, Kevin hasn't seen it. Yeah, and that's taken nothing away from Kevin. It, it, it happened behind him. So unless you're watching the feed as well as spotting, which is very, very hard to do, but that's what a lot of the World Championship teams and spotters are doing all the time, is watching every bit of information they can. Let's watch the next corner if we get to see it. I think Kevin was a tiny bit wide in the Joker, how they're no, looking look, at... He's just got massive understeer because yeah, yeah. he didn't... And, and then Johan's already got the car rotated. Up the inside, look, and that's what we we're Great talking about car positioning. Yeah, barely any contact between them. And then again, he's in the loose on the outside here. Look at this over the crest. Watch the Civic jump on the dip down. But this is also Kevin's experience here. He could easily have sunk it up the inside of Johan there, but there's no point at this stage. No. The time's already okay to good. Make it to the end of the race in qualifying. Get in. Welcome back to Rally X. Yes. No lifting. Johan Christofferson takes it with a 229.1 from Kevin Eriksson, Andreas Backer, Belevsky and Linneman. Linneman, the winner of the first session, gets P5, but there are two more heats of Supercar to come. This one is up already. Hedstrom, Stefan Christensen, Michael Tam, Cal Ward and Dennis Romer in this one. So the Hedstrom's motorsport teammates are both in the same race. That's Ward in slot four, Hedstrom on the inside line. Oh, Hedstrom with a brilliant start. Hell of a reaction time, gets the traction as well. Might be his teammate Ward trying to come around the outside, get a dip to the inside line, but look at the dust if you lose the start, and that's the big advantage. Moves going on in the background, contact into turn two into that tyre bale as well. It was Ward, his teammate now slots off to the left-hand side and drops into the Joker, but Hedstrom, who was very quick in free practice this morning, but only managed, where was he in, uh, in the previous session, was sixth. So he was P6 in the previous session, just outside the top five. He was P3 this morning, Hal. And wonderfully honest, wasn't he, Peter, when we were chatting to him yeah. this morning in his uh, battleship grey Hyundai. The, all that dust is still there. Christensen's going to oh, go, oh! Everyone's gone off, look. Two cars going round. This is where you need a supercar to drive. Oh, he's not going to get out of there. He's going to have to, he's in the ditch, literally in the ditch, ditched it in a rallycross race. But Hedstrom was brutally honest and uh, fair play to him. He was saying the car is so good. That he's poor in the corners because he's out of practice. He's done 15 laps around Arvika in the warm up to this weekend. He's committed to a full season of Rally X this year. Don't know if it'll all be in this car, but he was praising the Hyundai so much. I remember Oliver Solberg won the European Championship round in Julius last year before he got disqualified. So, yeah, he was saying, was he, I will eat them on the straights, he says, but the corners are a problem well, at the minute. I basically, he's got some big teeth on his yes. door as well. I felt like he was actually saying, how that he was struggling almost to keep up with the car a little bit, you know, and that's just that. Like, yeah, he was just car. like, it, like it was so, so hard to convey that by, with words, isn't it? But the wide-eyed, it's so fast in a straight line was uh, a real indication as to how good this line eye is. Of course, from the GRX set squad in the past, this is a car that... Team uh, won in uh, Spa in 2019, so uh, it's got good pedigree and uh, Peter driving it really nicely here. Still one of the most popular wins, I think. That was so funny. What did he say when he crossed the line? Uh, a lot of things which were caught on the broadcast, which... Uh, which <laughs> he said, jolly good. I'm so jolly pleased. Good. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased. Was that what he said, Hal? Peter driving really cleverly there. Got the car stopped on the nose. Just He was almost let it roll around the loose. Doesn't use the curb on the inside or the bonnets in danger of coming up here. Front right corner is off. He won't want that to come up. He's on the final lap now. He'll want that to, if the bonnet comes up, he'll spill a seat underneath him. It'll be a bit messy. Through the right target time is 229.1. You fancy you might be somewhere near it because the other race featured a bit more battling. He's got a puncture. Hand, remember, through that left, I think he's got a puncture, make front right. Yeah, the front right's gone down and it's a 228.8 though, Hal. So with a puncture, a 228.8 sees him go, I think, fastest, was it? 
Yeah, it is. It was 229.1. And that's only a tenth of a second slower than Linneman went to win Q1. So the track's so much cleaner now. Than it but where did he get the deflation, mate? That's still impressive. It must have been very late in the lap. It was, yeah. Wow. He was so careful around the, what the quad race. Go on, lads. He was so careful around the dusty corner at the bottom of the lap. I thought that was him being, being careful. Maybe he already had it there. So here's the start. Look on the outside. Ward here has got a good start and he's then backs off and looks like he's going to dip to the inside. But look at the dust. Gets a nose clip. Ends up out on the outside line. Then can we see what's going on in the background? It's Roma who has a look inside. Contact there. That's more than a look, isn't it? Yeah. And then was it Roma that dipped off into the Joker straight away then rather than Cal Ward? I'm not sure. So. And this is, this is everyone going wide. This is Christensen going rallying. Has... Oh yeah, there you go. Just no grip at all. Just opened up the throttle, didn't he? And, and, and Tam needed to realised that he's got no... It was almost, almost a reactive spin there. Jumped on the brakes. So that front it's right doesn't look down. great. It's already gone down. Yeah, but when that? is this? This is the last corner. He's got wipers on as well. Arms flapping all over the place inside the car, I'm sure. Yeah, this is the last corner. P1, though. P1, and I think... I'd like to see the last lap again, if we have time after the session. No, we do. So we've got... I was just looking to see. So Hedstrom, 228.8. That's the benchmark so far. He goes three tenths quicker than Christofferson, who had to fight his way through, remember? Oh, well, Johan lost time. Linneman. Yeah, he lost time. We didn't see the pass on Linneman, but we think he lost time on he the also, He also lost time in the first corner, because he didn't take the start. Exactly. Joke it early. Yeah. So, so, there's, so there's definitely... There's a quicker time out there. That's a good recovery, isn't it? Well, it's out. It'll do. Good positioning from the red quad on the far left. You Taking like track. Well, yeah, he's pushed his mate off into oh, the dirt, so he's gonna, definitely going to get track the best position, on. You mean track position? I get it, Hal. I like that. I like that. The old Joker lap in the background. If you've not seen this track before or been to this track before, the Joker used to be up there, but after a, a fair few heavy contacts and some big shunts at the merge, the decision was made to move it. And I have to say. I think it was a good decision. We are going to take a look back at what happened to Hedstrom. Hopefully figure out where the puncture was. So front right looks okay here. Or yeah, I not? think it's still up there. Yeah, it's definitely still up there. Look, 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 look. So what does he do? Does he do it on this? Is that an impact with a cut? Uh, it seems just... If it's gone down there and he's done a lap, I reckon it's gone down the last corner. He's hit the kerb there, and the tyre's yeah. deflated. Yeah. But he hasn't de-beaded it, has he? Because he hit it head on. Yeah, but to me, I mean, it looks like it's off the right side of the rim. It was, it was, you see the way the kerb had almost one extra bump in it? There yeah, was yeah, one yeah. A... But he's lucky there. If you're ever going to get a puncture, you want it in the last corner, oh, don't mate, you? absolutely. But Vaby's in the next session, isn't he? Yeah, so I was just looking. At, I think Vaby or Franks could potentially go quickest here. But this also could potentially be hectic in the first corner. Hectic's polite, Al. Magnus Dahl missed uh, Q1, gearbox problem. Went and saw them, the uh, fourth and fifth gear from the gearbox were looking not even second hand. You can make an ornament out of them on your desk, but that was about it. Bring <laughs> your yeah, paperweights. So uh, Victor Franks inside, Morton Schnack, Ola Christian Baby, and Magnus Dahl. Baby will want to get a brilliant start here and try and get the jump on everyone to the first corner. He does get a good start now. He's got to pull the gears perfectly because Schnack is quick on the inside. Baby's going to have to go around the outside, gets pushed wide. That's an absolute disaster, but not for Victor Franks, who in the RX2E car goes sliding up the inside line. And Victor Franks, I watched win a semi final in the British Rallycross Championship just a couple of weeks ago against a field full of class supercars. He can get this done. They run the car out with a little bit more power than they do in the, the regulated RX2E series, so that he's got a bit more of a chance of matching up to the supercars. Yeah, it's wound up, it's wound up isn't it, compared to, uh, compared to the RX2E class, like you say, but Victor is so experienced now for his age. He did all of this series last year, didn't he, as a 16-year-old, as a did all of RX2E, won that championship, and learnt a lot through the course of the year in some massive fights with some very, very good drivers in the RH2E series. And I think he's come back this year all the stronger. Raced the supercars, as you say, at Lytton Hill a couple of weeks ago. And was remarkably impressive. And we didn't see him in this position last year, did we? You can see the number one on the roof. That's for winning RH2E last season. Finished on the podium at Lytton a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? Against a stacked supercar entry. And you wouldn't have seen this last, last year, as I was saying. You, know, you wouldn't have seen him fighting with supercars in a qualifying race. 
fair play. He's definitely one of the stars of the future. Vaby's lost out to Schnackhal after the Joker lap, so Vaby. Well, Vaby had a problem, didn't he? Yeah. In turn two after going yeah. off. But like, so yeah, shocker. Not going to get it. So I'm interested in Franks' lap times to see whether or not he can challenge 41-2. I, I got so excited in the previous two sessions. I didn't write any lap times. No, down. I don't think it'll be enough because uh, Linneman was doing 39-5s, and, and with, it's with the puncture as well. He, it must be, and I think this is so probably, fast here. I was going to say it's more of a power track. I was just about to say that. Could he go top five and stick himself into that top heat? I prefer this livery as well. Whatever they've done, I can't really... I'm very simple, I can't remember what it looked like last week. But it looks much nicer <laughs> now than it did. So, they well, well done, done for the stickers, says Hal Ridge. I love green. We have a few good quotes out of you already for the week. I like stickers. <laughs> this is rally cars, I like stickers. Two, open two wheel drive is rally cars. What was the other one? I don't know. All the classics. And we're only at round one of how many rounds are there? Eight? Eight rounds. Seven. Eight. That was five weekends. Three double headers, two single headers. Oh, yeah. What do you think about that? I've much GCS in there. Somebody who is not failing is Victor Franks. Coming through that left hander. Look at the inputs on the stick as well. Keeps it tidy ish and then gets sideways just as I say it. 235.9 is uh, unfortunately not going to put him into that top heat. I think it will put him into the second one. Sick, yeah. Bobby. It'll put him into the second just one. Just behind Linneman. It's a good drive. Very Linneman, the, uh, who was in a fight with world championship winning drivers yeah. through that whole race. So, uh, well, he won Q1, didn't he, as well? Can't ask for much more than that. I kind of don't want them separated. Like pro Am and Am. Well, the pro drivers and the Am drivers. They're talking about separating them for finals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have Linneman. You, you know what I mean, don't you? Linneman's going to be thinking, damn it, I wish I'd gone in with you the You can still drive the in the pros. Can he? You can choose to, yeah. Okay. Well, he? Okay. Oof. Schnack running it up the, bar, uh, the, the bank on the outside. Look at the, the visibility a, in the background. Took a bite out of the bank. Yeah, like that, Hal. Bit of a pun there. Joker lap's cleaning up massively, isn't it? Look the whole the track has, hasn't it? It's yeah. so much faster than it was earlier on. Is there tarmac under the Joker, or is it just getting like a blue groove? And I'm looking over it now. I think it's more of a blue groove. Yeah. But the way you, you know, the most logical way to build a rallycross circuit is there's Guillaume de Ridder flying along down the hill, Magnus Dahl having a spin during the race. Guillaume, of course, coaching uh, this man, Victor Franks, and spotting for him. They'll be having words about this moment because, uh, yep, lost a few temps there, Victor. Naughty, naughty, but uh, overall, I think they'll be pretty happy. Peter Hedstrom at the minute at the top of the table, equal on points with Ulrich Linneman, so 88 points for each of them. Johan Christofsson just one point back, but Levski looked just four points back. Kevin Eriksson, seven seconds back, as well, sorry, seven points back. Backward look is in sixth place. To be honest with you, anybody in the top six could take the TQ, but if you had to put your money on, I'd say probably top four is more likely. So it's wide open with one qualifying session left to go. Awesome. So that's it for Q2. Day one of uh, Rally X 2023. I had fun. It was great. It was, it was absolutely was, great. Yeah, it was. It, we, did you have fun? Let us know on social media. Only if you had fun. If you didn't have fun, we don't <laughs> want to hear from you. Um, I say, be nice, be kind. That's that's what we're saying. Look, we're having a great time. I'm Andrew Coley, Hal Ridge. We don't have a reporter with us this weekend, so we might get down there with a the camera. We might even see if we can get a driver to go around with a, with the camera at some point and and get us some interviews. But the sun's shining. It's a beautiful day. We've got another qualifying session coming up. Then the semi-finals and the finals for all five of our classes here at Round One of Rally X Nordic. So. Don't go anywhere, or maybe do it for 20 minutes and then get yourselves back here. We'll do it all again. So we'll see you very shortly.
Well, this is a quick look back at what happened in Q2 in Supercar. That incredible move by Kevin Erickson around the outside and then a barrier tap. The Civics obviously made a strong stuff. Unfortunately, he made one little mistake later on in the race after a bunch of dirt had been pulled on by Bolevski. He ran deep in the hairpin at the far end and Johan Christophsen snuck up the inside and got away. So, uh, yeah, Kevin couldn't win the session. Several people, that's that gravelly corner up at the top again here. Here is Hedstrom. Hedstrom with the bonnet flapping around, but he went quick. He's despite this, look at the front right. Well, you don't see it, but as he came through that last corner, the uh, the tyre dropped off the rim. And Hedstrom Five, losing a, a few tenths. I prefer this livery as well. Victor Franks in the RX2E car. Not quite enough grunt here while he was winning super, sorry, winning semi-finals at Lydon Hill a couple of weeks ago with the British Championship. He uh, has struggled uh, with the power, I think, here. This is such a quick circuit. My name's Andrew Coley. Joining me on commentary is Hal Ridge, the legend himself. Uh, we're about to see Junior cross car for the first time today. We've got uh, Pauli Terpinen, Hampus Hagstrom, Lowry Hallinan, Axel Schnack, Unitin Yulalami, and Oliver Solly on this side. Six car heats for these guys. It is a packed entry. Yulalami with a great start, going to try and close the door on Hallinan, who's inside. Lowry Hallinan, though, backs the 57 car in. Track is looking damp. They've been out there trying to kill the dust. Yulalami ended up down in P3. It is Hallinan who leads. We saw Lowry's dad this morning. And he was just saying that although the chassis is exactly the same, it's a brand new car. So he ran this car last year. It's an Edge cross car. But he said, although it's uh, exactly the same car and they put exactly the same settings on it, it doesn't feel quite the same. And this is what me and Hal were saying in the previous session. Sometimes stuff just, you know, wears out a bit. Things like pushing start to move around, stuff changes just a bit as we see contact at the end of the straight. And so they're just going to spend a bit of time dialing it in. But he had a big smile on his face. And as he said, you know what? It doesn't matter. We'll get it dialed in as the season goes on. We'll just manage to get things fixed. Third fastest in both of the previous sessions, uh, Hallinan. So he sits top of the order. And that good start there could well help his cause. Tied on points with Yulalami in the intermediate classification. But Michael Uito was fastest in Q1 and only a few points further behind. Uita was then 13th in Q2, so the, the, the rough and tumble of Crosscar and Crosscar Junior making the times really mixed up, so it's all to play for in the overall positions, and, and the track being wet here with the fastest first won't help the course of these drivers. Now, Yulalami's just got Joker, and he's leading this pack of four cars. It's just come out in front of Hagstrom, uh, to Solly and Terpainen. So, Yulalami, 4.3 seconds back from your leader, Lowry Hallinan. Is Hallinan going to go this lap or on the last lap? Here he comes down now. So watch, but if Hallinan goes Joker, it's absolutely crucial whether him or Yulalami comes out. It could be for the top qualifier spot. And he goes Joker now. So Lowry Hallinan goes into the Joker. We need to see where him and Yulalami come out. Sliding the car through the long right hander. Where is Yulalami coming? Yulalami going to nick it, is he? No, Hallinan's on the inside. Yulalami backs up, goes back on the inside of the left hander. Hallinan just holds on. Brilliant driving by Yulalami. The awareness there, how to back out of it and try and get up the inside. Didn't quite come off. Just lost that little bit of moment momentum. And these uh, these cross cars are so limited on their revs. I think they're limited to 9,500 RPM from memory. So, oh, a bit wide there from uh, Schnack. Hallinan also not taking uh, all of the apex, but carrying good momentum round that right hander up the hill for the final time of asking. Yulalami gets into Hallinan's mirrors, moves the car across to the left hand side. You can see it smooth down the outside line. Yulalami trying to look up the inside. Really, with these two being a little bit further away, where's Uitu? Hal, you said he had a bad run. So Uitu. He was 13th in Q2, so he will be coming up in uh, the third race of this session. But the track will be drier then as well. Yeah. So, oh, Hallinan runs right to the wall on the outside and the run to the line. Hallinan gets it from Yulalami. So at the minute, it would be Hallinan with the TQ. But as Hal has very cleverly pointed out, Uito, who is P3 in the standings, isn't out until the final, uh, sorry, until the third of four races. So could it be that the track conditions will be sufficiently clear there? I still think the points gap might be too much. No, it won't be, will it? Because it's 50 for the session win and 45 for P2. So yeah, if Uito can go quicker, he can steal the TQ from Hallinan, but I think he's probably the only person who can.
Hallinan, very, very capable, isn't he? This is the merge with Yulalami. Brilliant positioning from both of them. Hampus Hagstrom, Hagstrom sorry, who uh, is behind there as well, doing very well not to get stuck in to the pair of them. Such a great it, learning experience for all of these drivers. It's the awareness, isn't it, How like to know that if you back off and try to slot out behind, and, and go up the inside line. I mean, that we see that kind of stuff at the very highest level of the sport, and we've got kids doing it. I mean, we're in trouble, mate. We're in trouble. They're coming for us. We know damn well they'd beat us already. I mean, that much is clear. Weight advantage. We'll, we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to have the reactions and fearlessness of somebody who's 12 again. Uh, I think I could do the reactions bit, but not the fearless. Bit. You reckon? Yeah. You still think those reactions are there? Yeah. Right, Penton and... No, that's a proper cross car, not cross car junior. Inside line on this one, sorry, was Soderholm, Atterblad, Jensen, Darback, Ericsson and Scheel. A lovely cut back to the inside again. This is what we mean. I love this turn one, Hal. I have to say, I think turn one and two here in Denmark are right up there with my favourite first corners anywhere because it, you, you feel like... A, anything can happen with the new joker positioning as well being at the start of the first lap but at the end of the last lap I mean is this almost a, a blueprint for how you want rally cross track to be because I think it is in terms of how you want it to play out certainly from our point of view on, on the TV side you want entertainment and this is delivering it in space it is I'd like an I'd like a good overtaking opportunity somewhere else like a heavy braking on tar perhaps because, Clean tie, because uh, but then again, we've seen some brilliant overtaking yeah. maneuvers into this. Yeah, I'm not dissing the track at all, but we're trying to make the world's best rallycross track here in our very tiny brains. Yeah, but down tough. here, you know, maybe that tarmac would be a little bit better further up. Where I, oh, oh and as he says that, sinks it up the inside. How rich gets his own contest curves and back again between them. Yeah, there's no racing in that corner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely epic stuff between, I think it's Darback and Shield. Yeah who are putting on a hell of a show and that's what that's what we want okay so we've got the big overtaking opportunity we've got the mad turn one turn two we've got a joker early in the lap you just need to be incredibly wrong. brave there to, to pull that move off don't you and uh, darback and shield both of that local knowledge of uh, being danish makes such a difference because you're just so aware of how the grip changes through yeah. the course of a day whereas if you come here for the first time that's always uh, a lot more difficult to learn. Shout out as well for Christian Shield for having the name Shield on the window. So the uh, cross cars are never easy to identify. Thank you. Yes, so Christian, so, and he has another look up the inside in the background. Christian Shield trying to make that pass. Gets inside again. This time, Darbeck can't come back. That was mega. He exactly the same again, but it didn't go back the other way. This look at the pressure now getting piled on from behind. This is like rental karting with your mates, isn't it? Because it doesn't really matter where you finish. You're just grinning from here to here when you get out afterwards. And these two will be absolutely loving this fight. Oh, it's brilliant, and it's such a good place to learn. It's uh, 9,300. I looked it up. I couldn't remember, but it's, it used to be 9,000. Didn't they say? I think they were bogging at the start. They need an extra 300 RPM to stop them from bogging at the start. But that's why these cars you hear on the limiter and the cross cars, you know, let me tell you, if you're sitting in a cross car, it would be like a missile at the end of that straight. You go over a big crest dip underneath the bridge, which we just don't see on the telly. Soderholm goes Joker on the final lap. Shiel and Darbak, according to our screens, have to do the same. So I think the gap will be suitable. Look at that through on the lock stops. Wet tires coming out because it's so damp in there from where they've dried it out. Is that Jensen who's jumped the two of them? It is. So Jensen jumps both Shiel and Darbak, who had that brilliant fight. Soderholm takes it from Jensen. 2.0 seconds between it. Soderholm is where? 2.55.5. We don't have the times yet from the previous session up on our screen, so they'll come in a minute, I'm sure. Can't remember how quick Larry Hallen and went. Another look at the start. Very varied starts here. Shield running out wide. Darback is on the inside. So actually, look, these two had, had a, a race in that corner on, I think, two out of the well, of course, it's three and a half laps. This is the first one, look. Slots up the inside, lovely. Gets a little nudge back, only a tiny one. And Darback sneaks back through his second time round. Sorry, that was the first time again. Look at it. Darback was just that little bit more on the curb. And then if we see them, the final move next time around, we're going to do here. Just gets it stopped that little bit oh. better to cover the inside. Great great positioning to stop the undercut. Fantastic. So, the track was so dirty, though, Hal, as well, when you saw 
he, he got a little nudge, didn't he? Darback moved across to try and close the door on the brake. Shill went, oh, don't worry about it. I'll go even further up the inside. There's nothing better than braking so late you think you've dropped it and then picking oh, it up. Mate. No, 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 no. Ah. You do say that, though, don't you? Inside, you're crashing. You're like, no, 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 no. Especially if there's a car in front of you. I've done that before. You oh, please don't take him out. I don't want to have to do the walk of shame. And Depends who it is. If it was you, I wouldn't break anyway. Well, <laughs> use me as a break, would you? Was that what you were doing, Patrick O'Donovan, last time you lot went karting together? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. They how nearly got thrown out of a karting centre, basically, for, uh, what would we call it? Um, pushing and passing, I think we'd call it, wouldn't we, in rallycross technical terms? <laughs> 2.55.5 is the time to beat. Uh, we have got a refresh on our timing screens. We're not sure who uh, was, whether it was the previous one, but it's Uito in this one, remember, who can steal the TQ. So Uito at the minute, Michael Uito sits third in qualifying behind uh, Lowry Hallen and, and Uniton Yulalami. Don't forget as well that Uito is our current cross car junior champion with three wins, two seconds and a third last year. He was only off the podium once at round one when uh, Uito retired from the final. So leading at the minute in the blue speed car machine, the number 30, Mike Luito, the reigning champion, trying to take the TQ from Lowry Hallinan, who at the minute holds onto it by the slimmest of margins just by beating Uniton Yulalami in the previous one. To say he's looking tidy, how he's got it done at the start. Now it's just a case of trying to get those laps in on, a, on what should be a slightly cleaner, slightly drier track. Yeah, unfortunately, I didn't write down Hallinan's uh, fastest lap because I've been printing grids yeah. and stuff for the yes. rest of the session. It's pretty frantic here on a, a Rally X day, but it is. Yuito has got the hammer down 45 7 last time around, quickest in all of the sectors so far. Carl Svenland running third is uh, also setting some good lap times, but the top three still yet to joker. Pontus Oskarsson, he's coming on, isn't he, Pontus Oskarsson? Of course, son of uh, Mats, the supercar lights driver. Been racing for a couple of years now. Oh, oh. backing it in, Nuito. A little bit more rotation. To you can hear the rev shot. Sorry, yeah. you can hear the rev shot there, and a bit of a kick of the clutch, because when you lose that momentum, oh, a lovely send and long drift through the Joker. That's going, going a lap early, didn't wait for the final lap, Hal. Got another lap to go. Got a good margin, though. Yeah, sure, but interesting, a lot of people do wait, don't they? And sometimes you just take the pressure off yourself doing a lap early and not going, it must be perfect, it must be perfect. You still want it to be perfect, but with a lap to go, you think, OK, I can make some time up. There's the braking zone at the end of the straight. Say so not quite so fast, but believe me, they are still hauling. 9,300 RPM is, is a lot. It's a lot. Well, you wouldn't get your normal car to rev that high to start with. It might rev that high once, but that'd be it. Yeah, the one time before it has a very long visit to the garage and you get a big <laughs> invoice. <laughs> Uito then. Target time, 2.55.5. So, unfortunately, our screen hasn't updated to tell us whether that's Hallinan's time, whether Hallinan was beaten in the previous session. Either way, Uito needs to go top and he's going to absolutely destroy the timesheets. Mike Luita, the reigning junior cross car champion, knocks some six seconds off the time, and that's where the track conditions have just changed a little bit. So the bad run in Q2 has played into his hands in Q3, and Luito, as far as we can see, will take the top qualifier, thanks to a brilliant performance here in Q2. Q3, sorry, final session. So maybe, if, you're, if you know you're running first after lunch, you need to have a shocker in Q2 to be in the last race and know you can nail the fastest time Trouble is, you're, you're betting massively on track conditions, aren't you? If I did that, it would rain just before my run. <laughs> I'd, I'd have finished a... on the podium last week, what are you talking about? Well, there is that, yeah, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Thanks, though, mate. <laughs> did he mention it? Did I mention it? I didn't, know. No, but I barely mentioned it. Uito, 249.6. The little purple uh, designation there means that it's the fastest time overall. Those of you who are familiar with timing screens, of course, will know that green is a personal best and purple is the best overall. Fastest person ever with a timing screen? Andrew Jordan, I reckon. He who? loves it, doesn't he? What do you mean? Yeah, who? That's true, actually. AJ has deserted Rallycross, hasn't he? Really? Yeah. Gone. Disgusted. We are with you, AJ. He won't be watching because we're running historic rally cars somewhere. Sorry, racing cars. I mean, the very fact it's race, not rally, is enough, isn't it? And now you can see, as, remember it's fastest first, so I think, you, you know, remember this is the, the very most junior category, really, of Rallycross. 
we're getting to into Andrew Jordan territory now, aren't we? The sort of races <laughs> that he beat. I'll tell you what, he started at a similar race, didn't he? Um, What's, what's the youngest? Is it 11 or 12? I can't remember. It's to do with your license. You can do it, can't you, in the in the year of your ex-birthday? Fr frighteningly young. Yeah. And frighteningly good. But they'd say, this, so this is what we're saying here, is as you come down, you go, well, the starts are a bit different here. Yes, they are, because they're learning. They're all learning. It's a steep old learning curve. But we've seen, my goodness me, how quickly they learn. And we're looking at some drivers now jumping the straight from cross car up into supercar lights. We're yet to see the the results of these junior cross car, these really competitive junior cross car series. Okay, junior cross car as it was, or cross cart as it was then, has been producing brilliant drivers for a very, very long time. Look at Oliver Solberg, who is right up there with the best drivers in the world racing uh, in rallycross, and obviously with his WRC and WRC2 program. But it take, it'll take a while for these drivers, and some of these could be future world champions, couldn't they? And I'm sure they will be. But it'll take a while for us to see the fruits of their labour. But probably not as long as we expect if you look at uh, the, the young drivers coming through, especially someone like Victor Franks, who started in a similar version of, uh, of junior racing in Belgium. He's 16. Yeah, he could easily, with the right opportunity, step up to a world championship now and uh, would probably do very well. well. It's, it's mad, isn't it? Like, I just, when I think about it, and it scares me a bit, it makes me feel old, I can remember Oliver Solberg riding a bike around the paddock, kicking a ball, not racing. Then I can remember him being in a junior cross car and thinking, blimey, that car looks small. My God, it's fast. He's doing big jumps for someone so young. And then suddenly he's in a supercar, and he's like, it's a bit young for a supercar, isn't it? And he's winning Rally X Nordic, and he's like, hold on a minute, he's in an R5 car in Latvia, and it just went on and on and on. And now here he is, you know, competing at the highest level of in, in WRC, WRC2, um, second highest level, you know what I mean. Oh, into four. the wall there for uh, Victor Christensen. Has it knocked the rear tracking? I don't think it has, but lucky to get away with that. Kevin Erickson style, just knocking it into the wall out of the final corner. You never feel as old as when you compare yourself to someone else, do you? Like if you can, I can remember Nicholas Grone being a little boy. Yes, yeah, crazy, isn't it? Been around the sport a long time. Very lucky. Ten years. It, it, this is my eleventh year, I think. Longer for you, Hal. That's when Rallycross began, isn't it? Twenty thirteen. Well, obviously when, when I joined. I mean, no, of course not. Clearly. <laughs> uh, what was it? Fourth of February, nineteen sixty-seven. Was it? Sorry. Was it fourth of February, nineteen sixty-seven? You'll have to look it up, Henry. Oh, well, yeah, I can't remember these things. You know I can't. I need pieces of paper in front of me. This wind in this country works an absolute nightmare. <laughs> oh, well, I've had to put all my notes in a You are full of hot air. So yeah, it's only true, fitting. that's true. Yeah, no, we are talking wind from uh, ambient wind, people. It's getting overcast. Tell me, Hal, just a quick thought. No, they're not near enough. I was, ah, or are they? We haven't, we haven't got our list of times. We've got a problem with our timing screen, unfortunately. Just trying to think if anybody can beat the times of Uito, then Uito would drop down and potentially that could affect who takes the TQ. No, because he's still... Uh, yeah, it depends how much he outscores the other drivers But it depends who gets in the gap, d yeah, doesn't it, between it. Uito and Hallinan. Yeah. This, um, is, this, basically, this is a, a window into mine and Hal's brains actually... We're speaking without thinking and just telling you what, what our brains are doing, trying to frantically figure out rallycross points when the timing screen is missing the very thing we need. So my problem at school was I couldn't show the working. I could get to the answer, but I couldn't show the working, and that's like working out convoluted rallycross formats. I understand how they work, I can talk about it, but how I get to that point, total mystery. I know, we just got there live on air, basically. <laughs> we're like, let's not hide the fact we're not quite sure, let's just talk. I mean... I'm so stupid, I can't find the right bit of paper at the moment. I, so I'm doing the same thing. So, but if you, yeah, if you're wondering, me and Hal, we, you know, we don't have what in TV terms we call a runner. Somebody would get the grids for you. So we, we, we ran, how far was it, Hal? Let's make, let's, um, let's make ourselves sound better than we were. It, it was, was downhill, a, the it run. It was two kilometres. It wasn't. It's about three, four hundred metres to uh, max. Get, get a drink and then come back and print um, whilst commentating. Ah. You didn't print. You've got someone to do that for well, you. Well, yeah. I, 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 if, yeah. Have you printed anything? Out of no, I only got no. here a minute ago. Well, that was a, yeah, basically how. Yes. Yes. Correct. Right. What's this? You do it. Proper cross car. Okay. So, as in uh, grown-up cross cross car. Right. Cross car junior can go. Is it, again, we're we're telling you exactly what we're doing live. Uh, ditching pieces of paper. This is going to be some race, this, isn't it? Yeah. Fastest person. I don't. Uh, yeah. Let's go. Hukar, Hammerquist, Eek, Merstad, Enholm, him and Osterberg this side. Hukar the other side. Oh, it's a brilliant start by Sebastian Enholm in the red buggy, trying to close the door, but on the inside line, Hukar's got it done, shuts it inside, where he's going to run out wide. 
anybody going to be able to get up the inside line? The first out is there, but not quite close enough. Who's going to go? Joe from his first lap up and over the curb. So it's Riku Huka who leads after a good start, managing to shut the door in the back. And look at that from the drone, just the, the changing direction from 45 degrees one way to 45 degrees the other. Huka popped a little bit of a wheelie off the line and then absolutely sent it around the first corner. Would have torn all of the paint off the front of Sebastian Ehrenholm's cross car because uh, that is a lot of gravel on the outside of that corner. Hukar lovely, sets the car up so sideways on the way into the bottom of the hill that the front wheel was over the curb but didn't actually touch it just because it lifted up with the travel of the suspension. And this is a great fight at the front of the corner. Yimmy Osterberg having uh, switched cars for this year all oh, right onto the back of Hammerfest. Osterberg's going to joke it this time around. Can't really see the elevation change there with the drone, but look at those inputs. Lots of fighting going on there, and he's just going to get out behind Enhelm. Fantastic. Look at the smooth inputs there. Look how close it is behind, and now you get you get completely rashed as you come onto the gravel. You just get blasted in the face or in the screen. Over that dirt section. You can't have too much rotation. If you've got too much rotation, if you come onto the dust, it gets magnified, doesn't it? If you haven't got enough, that'll get magnified too. Joker this time, so watch out for Thomas Eek Merstad. Hammerquist stays out. So I reckon Hukar's gone to cover off, comes through on the lock stops and does get out in front. So that's a clever move. Have they clocked lap times? Trying to see what, yes, Hukar. So Hukar's gone to cover Merstad and Merstad have just done the quickest lap of the race. So Merstad has done a 41.8. That's Osterberg now, sorry, it was a 41.9 prior for Thomas Eek Merstad. So he'd done the quickest lap, and Hukar responded by going Joker straight away. Clever move. So now Hammerquist out front in clear air, coming down in the 189 into the braking zone. Keeps it smooth and straight. This would want to be as late as possible. It's not going to be enough because Hukar's there already on that back bumper, sweeping through the right hand. And there's a great shot of the Joker and how it merges in. And in fact, Hammerquist is going to come out just in P3. Riku Hukar comes through to cross the line, take the checkered flag. Hukar was P7 after Q2. It's Passy Penton, and who was right at the top of the standings. Penton and in the next one. Look at the wheel. The wheelie was after the, the initial takeoff. It's almost like he's pulled second and yeah. then and then wheelied. A couple of little bits of contact Look at the as gravel well. in the front of Enholm. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's crazy, isn't it? And it's just it's just yummy. It's quite a shock though, isn't it? And the thing is, it gets in your teeth and everything when it's dust like that. I mean, oh. Tiny bit of contact, look in the background. I think that was Eek Merstad, was it? Merstad went joker early. Hukar just lifting a wheel down in turn two. Brilliant stuff. side of this grid. Then Yugar, Baldins, Elias and Jorgensen, Ilias Svensson on this side. Penton with a wheelie exactly the same way as Hukar off the line and then contact right up on two wheels in the background. Oh, sideways across the dirt. Who's lost out? Penton has lost out in that start. We saw what was going on in the background. Almost carnage, but not quite for Noel Eliasson. That's played massively into Elias Fenton's hands, hasn't it? Got away with that. No problem at all. Penton as well. Oh, trying to find a way through, isn't he? Noel Eliasson having gone straight to the Joker, which sometimes you not get forced into, but you go because you've had a bit of a shocking start. It's Elias Fenton, where's Fenton in the overall standings? Yeah, can't read the names fast enough to figure that out for you. Not inside the top 16. Where's Svensson? Elias Svensson's down in 22nd place, Hal. So Elias Svensson is down in 22nd place, leads this race, 
absolutely needs to smash this session because only the top 18 are going to go through to the semi-finals. I was wondering why someone who we know is so quick was so far down the standings. But it looks like Q1 was a shocker. Q2 went a little bit better. And Q3 now with the lead. But this does just need to be the lead. And he hooks a wheel over the inside of the curb. This needs to be an absolutely fantastic time as well. Got to top the sheets and go ahead of Uito. Oh, sorry, that's the juniors at the bottom of our screen, isn't it? It's just got to go quickest. 236.099. A little bit of a lock up there on the way into that very difficult corner. It's so easy to lock the front wheels on these cross cars because there's just no weight over the front axle. Right in the brake all the way through that corner. See the brake lights flicking on and oh, lovely bubble yes. of flame. <laughs> that's incredible from the drone. Absolutely brilliant work. Big Kosh flying the drone look through that long left hand just above. Going to come up to the bridge. Is, is he going to go over it or under it? Bigger goes over it. Luckily for us, Spenson goes under it. Penton and right there. So Spenson has joked at the cover off Penton and behind. But this is all about that time at the bottom left hand side of your screen. 2.36.0. If Penton wants to make it to the semi finals, there are three of them. The top 18 needs to beat that time really hard for me. Got to get right up there. The, the advantage when you win the session, you get 50 points. P2 is 45, P3 is 42. You get big advantages by taking the, those big points. They've got to be right at the sharp end. The lap time is just not there. They're almost a second slower on pure lap pace really? than Huka was. Right, so it's not going to do it. How far up will it be or how far off will it be? 2.37.8, so 1.8 seconds off. Spenson's going to have to hope the track's getting slower, Hal, because if it isn't... OK, his last lap was a 41.9, which was four tenths off uh, Huka, but still not enough. Look at the inside line here. Look at that. Pop in the wheelie, passy Penton. And then there was the contact in the back. There's Noel Eliasson who ends up on the back wheels. Was it Halberg who had a similar livery last year? To which one, sorry? To uh, Noel Elias, Oli Eliasson. No. The black and, black and yellow and blue. No, Eric Anderson. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you can tell we can't remember the liveries. How long ago? It's nine months, isn't it? I can't remember nine minutes. <laughs> Bowdens. I mean, nine months when you're as old as you are. It's oh, like a mate, day, isn't it? It's, it's terrible. It just flies by. So that's interesting. Look, with the guard across the bottom of the grill of the window. So just taking out a little bit more of the, the gravel hits that you get. Svensson, 237.8. But not enough to lead the session. Okay, help. <laughs> Obviously, Person, Herskainen, Brunkvist, Gotherson, and Granna in this one. Only six cars in those top two heats. Wheelie again from P2 on the grid. That was uh, Jake Herskainen. Is that our track oh! Hooked up, look. No, not Completely hooked up. That's hooked up in the, totally the wrong way. Yeah, that's her kind and again, yeah, not dialed. Huka was really. hooked up massively, but that was uh, that was not. But it was. Well, yeah. Where was it? We saw that. That was Ulu as well, wasn't it? Where they were completely hooked up and went round. Do you remember when they all got disqualified? Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's three or four, wasn't they? All down the old Christopherson was lit. All down there making their own excuses, weren't they, to the stewards? Because it's basically who causes the red flag getting the DQ. He's like, yeah. you've all caused it. Now go away. Oh, what's the bodywork rubbing there for the back of person? I think that's just the wheel arch. There's, they're only like a, mump, a thick mud flap, but oh, oh! My goodness me, that was a massive moment. For, yeah, Robin Granner, that is not where you want to drop it, is it, mate? Oh, and, it, and then drops it in the next corner. That's cost him and Rasmus Persson time. Broken something on the front. Maybe that's why he had that massive moment over the jump. It's not handling Look at the as nose dip on that. So Grana holding that inside line, needs to get off the line and does so through the long left-hander, gives up the position. Person leads Brunkvist and Grana coming over the line. I wonder if it's broken a shaft or something. It doesn't look like there's a drive shaft, that is. It doesn't look like there's any broken suspension from where we're watching. So much dust and dirt down on that corner. I, I, I would wish they'd clean that corner to make the grip a little bit more consistent. But the hairpin at mm. the end of the straight, the first straight. Uh, yes, the first straight after the bridge. So Rasmus Persson flames the back leading, but Brunkvist behind us, Joker already. Persson goes into the Joker now, and that won't be enough. So Brunkvist is going to come through. Got a Rasmus Persson and a Rasmus Brunkvist. 
Edge competition machine of Brunchqvist leads with a lap to go. Top three of all joking, and Granner's DNF look. So DNF comes up on the screen, meaning Granner's withdrawn. So whatever that issue was, I suspect Polly needs some new overalls as well because that was the Mate. biggest moment we've seen all weekend. Yeah, it's, and I saw we wow. saw a few in practice, didn't we, coming over the crest there? Actually, saw a couple of people in supercars like Mate keep it lit. You do not want to lift now. It was too sideways. But you're in the lap of the gods there, aren't you? And your skill yeah. goes out the window. You've just got to keep it buried and hope it comes back to you. Love the cars moving around, under braking there. You really see the edge car move around a lot more. There's so little grip at the end of these, uh, in the end of these straights in the two tight corners that this car's absolutely everywhere. And of course, we see that as we get through these sessions with the getting to the less experienced drivers or the drivers that haven't got the pace of the uh, the ultimate top drivers. 43-1 there. Which for suggests the track's getting slower, Vest. Hal. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's so know dirty, the, Andrew. The, that, you know, the, the, these drivers are really struggling with the dirt in the corners. And, and it's. Yeah. I mean, it is fastest first, so you'd expect it. But also, when you look down the list of drivers in this heat, there are people that are capable of doing the lap times. Of course, yeah. I mean, so it's a bit of both. And it's, isn't it? Oh, I'm so lucky not to hit that uh, tyre stack on the inside. You know, and that's rallycross, isn't it? The track's always evolving, but you always feel a bit hard done by when the grip oh. changes so much. So something went, I think, literally on the brakes into that corner, wasn't it? And then goes to get on the no, power I think the it's exit. Already, maybe, maybe it's already gone before. I'd really like to see that moment over the jump. Maybe we can see that at some point. Def be, definitely one for social media. They might have it on the drone. We, the camera angle we've got is just behind the bank, isn't it? And you see enough to imagine what's going on there, Yeah, he's, he's right. He basically, he's, what is it? Uh, catching a wasp, isn't it? In, in the cockpit, trying desperately to... to <laughs> ...long those lines, yeah. <laughs> Brunkvist, 244.5, Person and Gotherson. DNS for Graner and Hurst his uh, His, uh, his uh, five piece underwear probably looks a bit like yours from Lyndon. Yeah, it does, yeah. Mine's a right off, afraid, <laughs> along with the one I, I brought from Peter Frank. Sorry about that, mate. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, I actually sent the uh, the five piece underwear to my mum because my wife said, uh, that's not going in, the, in our washing machine. <laughs> Which is fair enough, it was Phil. How old are you? I oh, know. Zerna Hoffman, Anderson, Turpin, and Tudo on the outside. Poor Hal, look at the uh, identicalness of three of these cars, look. Uh, but, well, okay, the, the front end looks slightly different, but you see what I mean? They're literally identical liveries. They'll be the three that we're running out to the end. There they are, the back of the pack. That's just what we need as commentators. Thanks, lads. Got to call it how it is sometimes. Um, oh, right up on two wheels, just holds it. That was uh, Uniton Hoffman, almost put it on its roof. Oh, oh, the rear right, the rear. broken rear suspension link, pull it over, mate, does he know? Please don't get down the end of this straight in sixth gear, that is not where you want to find out about that, and he's still got it lit on the run down the straight. Whereabouts is he in the background? Broken car, there he is, oh, okay, good, I'm glad. You know what I mean, Hal, I was just thinking, please don't discover that at the end of the straight in sixth. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. That was quite a moment as well, wasn't it? <laughs> He's had quite a half lap there, hasn't he? Nearly rolls it, thinks Mega, I've got away with it. Pulls six gears and then goes, hang on a minute. <laughs> this isn't what I thought it was. Someone sold me a, sold me a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> Not what I wanted. Look what? at him hooking the wheel on the inside of the kerbs. That's brave, isn't it? Because uh, very easy to... Not only easy to pick up damage, break the suspension, get a puncture, but also... What was that? that? Oh, that it's a stock shock, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's bits falling off everywhere. By the way, so these are all live live TN5s. It's Tamo Tudu, Tanel Terraping, and uh, Romet Sena. Uh, Estonian, I think, Al? The yeah. Black? Yeah, yeah, all yeah. Estonian, and, three drivers. And, and, and Life Live have done such a great job. Remember a couple of years ago, Timmy Hansen and Thierry Neuville, was that in the lockdown Hullius that they drove the I cars? Think it was, was, yeah. So Timmy and Thierry drove the cars. And were miles and off. They were 25th, 26th. And we're talking with what, the best, one of the best rally cross and one of the best rally drivers in the, the world. On the planet, yeah. World champions. Well, can, I, can I also point out, we had then we had a sled race, didn't we, with the likes of Kenneth Hansen and Graham Roadmark, who were also absolutely Passengers. pony. <laughs> didn't he? They were absolutely terrible at cross car, which fills me with joy because you think, okay, good. They are, they are quite hard then if the 14-time European champion didn't get on too well with it. And uh, Graham Roadmark, who's won a couple of titles himself, aside from definitely one title, uh, aside from uh, being a, a legendary spotter and engineer at the highest level of rallycross. Uh, both sides of the Atlantic as well, Graham Roadmark, but yeah, he didn't like cross cars, did he?
<laughs> who didn't know. But the, the point, <laughs> point is that the TM5's come a long, a long way since then, hasn't yeah. it? You know, they've done so much work, and there's, there's, there's such a massive field of different chassis here, and that's absolutely fantastic. And that's part of why cross cars so strong. Yeah, I think I actually think how we're seeing more different cross cars winning races than we were a couple of years ago. 100%, meaning, yeah. meaning the speed car was the car to have on the Yes, it, and definitely. now... And the edge has been good. Oh, no, it wasn't the sock shock. It was the spring with the sock shock as well, so... That's never... That's suboptimal. Or... Is has that, he just run it over yes, from what from, it's come off Hoffman's? Yeah, I think it is. I think it must be. Because it's... Hoffman with the best start, look. Paul's second gear. The three Estonians end up at the back of the pack here, and I'm looking at them going, I don't know who's who. Because the, the liveries are identical as well, so if they get right at the pace, we'll have to go and have a word with them. Um, <laughs> so at this point, look, then it goes up on two. Is he, it's almost like he's has he had a rear right puncture, Hal, because the tire's almost off the rim. Holds no, up he's to broken it. it when he slapped the wall. As he, no, I think it's broken already. You don't no, think it's it not. is? No. There you go. Bosch, that's broken it. Oh, mate. It must, the spring must be off his cross car. Well, it's already gone, because otherwise it's witchcraft to get the spring off the damper without the damper coming off. Exactly. That's so a speed, speed car, car as well, right? yes, yes, it is. <laughs> it does. Remote diagnostics. Yeah. yeah. That's a speed car as well, though, but... So was no. it? Is it off the... It can't... We're looking at the back. Okay, let's have a look at the back. Is it anything missing? Springs and socks? No. Ooh, it's a mystery. It'll have to remain a mystery, mate. It's like, um... What's that program with Skulder and Mulder and Scully? What was that? X-Files? <laughs> Where did the mystery spring and uh, damper stock come from? Anderson wins 242.7 before we take ourselves far too down, far down some crazy rabbit hole. Right. I just looked down at my phone and it's just full of messages, people going, this track is epic. Is it really? Brilliant. But it is. Sam Clennell, I think you probably need to get back to work, mate. Stop being. Uh, What's he doing? Is he supposed to be working on one of your cars or something? No, not my cars. No. But no. There's uh, it's rallycross events are coming thick and fast now, aren't they? European Championship starts next weekend in Hungary. Then we're back to. Got two of these inside two. four weeks. Yeah. Three weeks. Uh, no, we've got and there's an extreme in between. No, no, but we come. Do we go to Sweden in two weeks? Yeah, we're two weeks. Denmark, Denmark, Hungary, then another Sweden. three weeks to Finland. You're in Hungary next week. If anyone would like to see the rest of my calendar, we can put it on. I know. Yeah. And then World and Nitro both start in June. Weird the way the calendars are moved since COVID. You know, everything. we were talking about this earlier and calendars bleeding over through the winter and, and you sort of say to yourself, this year, I think you will know what we mean at home. I'm sure someone will text and go, well, it wasn't this year, it was this season. It's okay, whatever, mate. <laughs> um, you, you have a crack at it. Not as easy as it looks. Actually, I don't even think we make it look easy, Hal, to be honest, do we? Let's be honest. I think we've made the last session look quite hard work. <laughs> Q Q2 was great. Q3, and I think I might be broken. And uh... We just need a tiny bit more time to print things out. Yes, but exactly. Right. There's so much racing, and it's such a strong entry. You know, so many people want to be doing Rally X that uh, you've got to squeeze it into the schedule available. Exactly. And hence, two six-car races at the, at the start of Cross Car Hell to make sure that the last couple of people got in instead of having a reserve list. Faldins was on the reserve list originally, and he's in. So what I'm guessing they've done is gone, right, we'll squeeze in, because we've got six five-car races, which was the 30, and then they've done two six-car races to give us 32. So basically, they've taken the whole list, which is brilliant. Nobody misses out. If you miss the first round, you're not coming to the rest, are you, basically? I would, I would suggest. Look at that livery, though. Second car from the left. Anything that's got anything Martini-related. Remember, boy, Gurlain Shishra drove the GCK Lancia Delta, the same type of car that Sebastian Loeb's going to drive this year in the World Championship in the Nürburgring last year with a, a slight take on the uh, Martini livery. That was orange and, and black in the GCK colours, but that looked epic as well, as does uh, Rasmus Roos's car there. What was, the, what was the first of that? Was it the Group B cars? Or did it appear in a, in a different formula? It's been across so many different forms now. Yeah, Mark Lowe, I didn't see sports cars. Sports cars, that's what I'm thinking was where they Or the Brabham, the early Brabham's had that. For me, it's Group B is the first thing I think of when I see it. Group E. Group B lances. It, it, isn't it? Yeah. But to me, that, and, and then, yeah, don't forget, ended up on McRae's focus. Well, not just McRae, oh. ended up on the back focus. Oh, dear. Well, there, there it is. A good look at the livery as it disappears backwards into the dust. Um, not, not what they were wanting. 
and that's for out front. See, this is the funny thing, he's out front. Oh, and in the barrier in the background, got car off in turn two, don't park it there. Oh, front suspension broken, is that going to get a flag out? Car park from the outside of turn two. No, I think there's plenty of space there, to be honest. I kind of hope they carry on with it, it's pretty blind as you come over the crest. Kim uh, Lorentzen leading. Norwegian driver in the Kazmat. We've then got the Semog Attack in P2. These are chassis, three speed car wonders. You know, just like the TM5 has come on a lot, the speed car wonder has really developed, hasn't it? It was already quick out of the box, but to... But it wasn't, it wasn't as quick as its predecessor, the speed car, was yeah. it? And that's the thing, is I think at first everyone was like, oh, I thought the new car is not as quick, but that's where it was a little more towards the newer FIA regs. And, um, and you being an, a, a radio control car, Anorak, yes, such it, instrumental... Uh, such incremental, sorry, changes make massive differences to chassis setup. So, yeah, all of these teams are, are getting data all the time, and they're not just big go karts that you, you drive without touching. They're constantly no. adjusting everything. Well, there's people doing testing. You know, there's professional drivers in these categories doing testing, and then yeah, making yeah. little changes, and then going right. This is the upgrade for 2023. This is the package. There might be a couple of wishbones and a different mounting position for a damper. Yeah. And a, Quid into the bank account of the, yeah, the people who make the cars, but that's how it is. But still, very, very cost effective. They haven't flagged it, which is good. Car park on the side of the track. That's uh, Orav. Lucas Orav is out. How are the lap times? Who car leads the session? And I don't think looking at it. Yeah, I don't, we're not getting anywhere near those lap times now. No, but who car was P7? So where's, where's Penton and how on that list? P6. Penton is sixth at the moment. Where's Enholm? Enholm seventh. Hammerquist was in P4. Hammerquist could get it. Hammerquist has had a fifth and a second, and then in this one looks like getting a fourth. So it's not clear cut. You know what I love about it is at the minute, okay, Hukar's actually going to have won two sessions, but Hukar's first session was P22, mm. which sucks. So not really. Uh, uh, Spencer was the other one, right? Elias Spencer is where P3. Yeah, but he was really, he was really again. low. In That's Q1. but that, I think that will pull him up enough. So he's had a 30th, a 12th, and now a P3. So Elias Spencer. No, but it's not going to make him 2Q, is it? No, no, but it's going to put him into the semis. I was thinking. Of more course, than, yeah, yeah. But I think yeah, 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 going to make you, it. You need one really good time to make the semis, don't you? Because yeah. the semis are so. But no, normally you can pick a TQ. You'll see someone who's gone a cut of first and a fourth or whatever, and you know they've got it. But you know the only person to have two firsts is Hukar, who's got a 22nd. Um, and they say Penton and a first and a seventh, Enholm a second and a fourth, Hammerquist a fifth and a second. That's prior to this session. So you'll have to wait basically until That's they knock us up a graphic. Yeah, but this is none of these drivers have gone into the top ten. No. No, sorry. Kim Lawrenson has just picked uh, Eric Anderson for tenth. So we can probably work it out. If we weren't so Go on, go on in, mate. <laughs> knock yourself out. <laughs> Let me know when you do, yeah? <laughs> Go on, what is it? Have you worked it out yet? <laughs> if only you could see how Ridge now, his brain's ticking as just as hard as it possibly can. But no numbers are coming out of the other side just yet. He's, oh, he's frowning at the screen. He thinks he's made it. He thinks he's got it. He's going to go for something now just to be cocky. He's going to have a crack at it. Meanwhile, I'm reordering my uh, grids on the desk. And you guys are watching Crosscast. <laughs> Kim Lorentzen takes this one, 2.42.0, but the top time at the minute is a 2.36.0 from Riku Hukar. So Pentonen. Hukar is likely to... You think Pentonen's got it? How thinks Pentonen's got it? With I can't the, remember the points differences, but I'm th I think Pentonen's done it. I've got those points somewhere in this folder. Do you want me to find them? No. Oh, I'm going to have a look now. Go on, you do this bit. Good effort from these boys. I love seeing... I love seeing... Uh, the supercar lights and the cross cars in the in the paddock because you jack up one end, the back, the heavy end with the engine, and then you just pick the front up because it pivots nicely. You used to be able to do that. My Super 600 clear, to be honest, on the rear. What do you need to know about points, Hal? Hit me. Nothing. P P one. Penson and P one. Yeah, but what's he? What first round on you? P six. He's P six in the session. Yeah. He gets thirty eight. Okay. And we've got the point. We're actually this is live maths. Okay. Well, and home. You're gonna have a look in the commentary box. And home is seven. We do live maths. What seven? Uh, 37. Mm -hmm. Hammerquist is fourth. This is assuming no one goes quicker in the next 40, one. 40, 4 zero for Hammerquist. So, 40 minus 38 is 2. I 
quite like this replay music. It, I find it calming. Where's Eek Merstad? Oh no, Eek Merstad's second. Should we do some sort of meditation? Second's um, 45, isn't it? We know. Do some sort of meditation app that you and me do where we just, there's this music and then we come in shouting You've with a cross. You've got it wrong, Andrew. 15,000 RPM. What? Oh no, I've got it wrong. Okay. 45. <laughs> Three accusatory, Mr. Bridge. Pentonen. First round's on you. Jesus, well expensive here. Well, can I get you one at home? <laughs> <laughs> what, well, three years' time when we meet up with Andrew Jordan? That's a good point, yeah. If we, how many Christmas dudes have we missed? Four, isn't it? Mm. Since Covid. Circuit right. softy now, anyway. Huh? Circuit softy. Yeah, true. true. I don't like gravel. Hello. Doesn't like ending up in it, anyway. Right, that's all uh, useless information in my folder. I should have gone through this, really. I'm trying to think where I want this. Eric Nielsen has the potential to uh, mix things up a bit here because plenty of experience could easily mess my points calculations up. Oh, really? What? So you'd have to do all the live maths again? Mark up in there. Six cars in the first race across car. We're down to the final heat race now, I think. Is that final or second to final? Yep, yeah, this is, is the last the one. one yeah. Nelson takes the start. Runs just wide enough, but not too wide into that loose gravel on the outside. Look at the front of the car just dipping up and down as uh, Nelson rides the brake with the left foot. I'm surprised none of these drivers have jokered. Patrick Kong, who... Retired from the previous race. I want to see Vigo go under the bridge. I reckon he does, Hal. Oh, that's a lunge. Oh. That's Jensen just trying to help me out on the uh, on my predetermined maps by slowing Eric Nelson down. But great car positioning there from Nelson. Wonder if he saw Jensen coming and just opened up the corner that little bit. Oh, Jensen's oh. hard on the brakes now at the bottom of the straight. Much joker this time around to get out of this traffic. Not going to though. Would you have gone then? Yeah, definitely. There you go. Because they're gapping the, the cars behind significantly. Oh, Kong's jokered anyway. I definitely would have jokered because you, you've... Yeah. You've got no option. We have. You've got two more laps, but I think you're only going to lose time by fighting that fight, aren't you? 43-5, if that's my round. It is tricky. Oh, look at the flames. Wow. So, Nilsson, with the lift off back on the throttle, Hal, just belching fire from that car on a double lift on the way into that corner. The Kazmat does produce quite a lot of flames, doesn't it, generally? 750cc engines, by the way, where the genius oh, and the oh, that's a oh, Jensen just gets it stopped. Now goes Joker. OK, now goes Joker. He's great on the brakes down there. Yeah. Local knowledge. And look, look how close to the barrier on that right-hand side, and I think that's key for traction on the exit. You can see through here where all the rubber's been laid down. Lap to go between Jensen and Nilsson. What is the gap as they come over? 3.0, and he was right on... How? What, so what do we reckon in Delta? I think you well, you win the bet, definitely. But it was 3.0. I mean, I owe you two rounds. Um, 3.0 is the Delta there, and he was absolutely on the back bumper, wasn't he, on the way in? Yes. So we're saying about three. Yeah, in cross car at least. There's so little time to work it out in supercar, but I'll try this time around. Yeah, but no. Yeah, no. Am I saying I'm stupid? No, I'm just saying it's a lot. Side by side, Nielsen and Jensen, Jensen trying to go round and ends up in the wall. Oh, that's such a shame, loses a ton of time. Eric Nielsen takes it, 240.9 is still four seconds off the back of Hukar's pace. 10th, 10th overall, so uh, that doesn't upset the live maths. So what are you saying, Penton and TQ? I reckon. How Ridge reckons Penton and TQ? Everyone, let's just say that live on air. I think he's right, to be fair. Great reactions there from Nielsen. Easily the best off the line. Naomi had a clean run there, didn't she? Yeah. That line around the outside, Hal, just where you just try to make it work. You just I want to run it. too wide, do you? Especially when you've only got rear-wheel drive. It works in a supercar because you can keep it pinned and... Yeah, just have pull all the it back in again. Yeah. In a, in a rear-wheel drive machine. Oh. No, I don't think Nelson... I think Nelson was aware that Jensen was there and then just turned it anyway, but you've got to commit at some point, haven't you?
Look at this. Look, at the, the thing is, it's so hard to describe to you what it's like if you haven't had a crack at driving on, on tarmac with dirt on the top of it. But the fact that it changes every lap. If it was the same every lap, you go, yeah, all right, I'll learn the braking point. But when it changes every lap, and then it's different across the width of the track as well, it's a lottery, the, the braking. It's a little pond there, Hal. It's up on the inside of... Uh, Should we go for a swim? It's not appealing massively to me, I have to say. You like swimming there? Oh, yes! he's right. He, he was right, but only by a point. Passy Benton and takes the TQ in cross car from Thomas Eekmerstad and Al Gott Hammerquist, your top three. They've moved on a bit quickly there, but uh, so we'll, we'll just have to leave you with the top three, I'm afraid. But in terms of how, who's made it, I think Svensson must have made it, looking at it. I think... But that was a bit fast. So if you're listening, graphics, we need that slower. Want to get down the list. On to open two-wheel drive. Oh, Simon Tiger in the middle of the grid. Contact there around the outside. Victor Johansson, I thought I got away with it, but gets piled and turned around. Biggest, absolute disastrous start there. Damage to the front, damage to the steering. That could yeah, be a red flag. Red flags. Got no, it. Well, it's not on the line, is it? No, I don't think got they red will. flag written all over it. It's far too fast down there, surely. Come on, it's the end of the straight. You're going to come over the crest and not know where the cars are. It's got to be a red flag. Massively played into the hands of uh, Simon Tiger, though, either way. Look at it picking the front wheel up through that uh, traction area. The cars to move. Well, they're going well, to carry on. So, race directors are looking at it and saying it's safe enough. Simon Tiger from Marcus Norman. Disaster for the champion, Victor Johansson. Is he still parked at the side of the straight or has he got the Merc going again? Oh, Engsvig is up the bank, but Johansson's got out of the way, and that's why they've decided they can let it go because Engsvig's car is uh, suitably beached. Maybe with broken steering. We'll have to have another look at that start after the race. Yeah. Look at that, Hal. Norman ran a tiny bit wide, got a little bit too hot on the throttle and drops five car lengths. That, that's a good demo of, of how you've got to get it right in these things. Yeah, it's got to be so neat and tidy as well as dealing with the... Uh, oh, I think Norman might be in the wall there on the outside. Ran right to the barrier. Looking out of the commentary box window or through the back of the tent that we're in, ensvig has got wheels hanging up all over the place as the car's buried up the bank. He's clambered up the bank on the outside. And looking at it from here, the car's well offline, isn't it? So uh, I think the right position not to stop the race. We've, oh, we've such a tight time. Well, now we'll see the car from Vigo's drone. There it is. What a shame for Ensvig as well, because he had a great run in Q1. It was the the Q2, he, sorry. He was a TQ hound. You know, he, he was sitting as top qualifier. He was at the top of the list ahead of Simon Tiger. And now he just needs to hope that they can recover the car quickly, get it back to the paddock. So, of course, all these cars are going to make the semi-finals, yeah. so they just need to get it repaired as quickly as they possibly can to uh, get back in the fight. A tiger, I'm trying to look at the... So, basically, the top five in qualifying are, are eight points apart. From Victor Johansson with 81 up to Simon Ensvig with 89. Obviously, Ensvig is going to drop down. But I don't think that uh, Spearson, Jorgen Spearson, Severson, sorry, might. No, Simon Tiger's got a, a P2 and a P3. How much was Tiger held up at the start? Not much, was he? No, he had the no. inside, didn't he? There was all the contact coming together. He's not through on the inside as Johansson and Nensby got together. So, yeah, with, with the consistency, Tiger's got to say P2, P3 from the previous session. This will be in the top three, and that should give him enough, I think, for top qualifier, because Kenneth Kong's had a P1 and a P7. Big was man with a fifth and a first. Tiger takes it. What's the time like? It's a 2.43.4, and that's quicker than uh, the previous session's top time was. Engsvig was a 2.43.6 in the previous session, so Tiger's going to cut the tents up on that. 2.43.7. Mike, how? So the winning times for the, well, assuming Tiger was quickest, yeah? 2.43.4 in this one. It was a 2.43.7 in Q1 and a 2.43.6 in Q2. And that's by three different drivers. Look at the carnage. So I, th I have to say, that that's on Johansson to a degree, isn't it? Because he's turned in. ensvig has been left with nowhere to go. Simon can't go anywhere. Simon's Simon just Tiger. In, in the south. I don't and that accident's continuing there. I don't think the steering's broken no, until, it's not he, broken hits until he hits the bank. But both rear wheels, I think, are off the ground anyway. So he can't reverse out of it, even if he wanted to. And meanwhile, Tiger look, goes up the inside of his rival from last year, Johansson. It's incredibly hard. Oh, does he? Does he? I was hoping we might see if he was uh, grumpy with anyone. I think it's just a rally cross bump. Yeah, start, it's so hard. And I, I was like, okay, I've laid the blame at um, Victor Johansson's door there, but it's so hard 
when you're three wide to know what's going on inside. Yes. You can only know what's directly next, next to, to you. you. You don't know what's next to them. No, so I think... It's a, it's a rally cross start. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's hard when you're three wide, but um, yeah, I, don't, I definitely don't think it was Enzig's fault because he was on the inside and uh, got squeezed into the wall. Yeah. The wall can't go away. When, well, so Tiger takes it. Sieverson, Norman, Johansson, Engsvig. Sieverson just took the best lap of Q2 or Q3 then on a 42 dead. Mega. Kenneth Kong did a 42-8 in the previous run. And we've got Kenneth Kong coming in the next race. He should be the man to beat, barring any uh, mitigating circumstances. We're going to take another look back at those starts, and uh, as you see, Severson. Oh, sorry, Engsvig's car broken the windscreen as well. That was a big impact. Well, maybe well, it was, the windscreen it was, was already broken. The but. bank's 45 degrees, isn't it? Is you, you know, you, you you clout into that. There's it's not going to be terminal damage to the chassis, but it, it could be a fair bit. Mm. Yeah, we're going to have another look back at a second at the, at the replays, so we should be able to. We might even be able to slow them down a little bit more. So here you go. Look, Tiger in the middle's got a great start. Then Johansson moves across on Tiger. Tiger can't go anywhere. He's got Engsvig mm. inside him. Okay, so I'm going to retract what I said before. It's not wholly Johansson's fault because he's a good way ahead of Tiger. Now, it's not Tiger's fault either because Tiger hasn't moved. But Johansson's come across the nose of Tiger. That's a classic scenario where the cars on either side have made a better start. So Engsvig and Johansson have made better starts. Tiger's in the middle. They've both had contact and they've both got rotated the opposite ways around the front of the car in the middle. And then this action just continues. Ensvig stayed in the throttle. One of the steering's already broken there. Johansson was lucky not to end up in the bank as well. Yeah, and really. You are in a tonne and a half of, of car and thousands yeah. of tonnes of bank. It's not going to move anywhere. Shout out to Vigo there again. I know we talk about him a lot, but that's epic. Flying around in a circle like that around the incident is just a brilliant bit of flying. Well done, mate. Also, shout out to those guys, because I tell you what, the recoveries here are absolutely rapid, aren't Fantastic, they? Fantastic, aren't they? Scooping yeah. it up. We were down at the start line earlier, and we saw them every time anyone needs rescue, and literally the quad bikes are flat out, out there. Matey Mush with the big scoop. Off he goes. So his name? Yeah. That's a generic name, Hal, for anyone you don't know. Matey Mush. What do you think about that? I don't think anything. I'm capable of thoughts. Are you pleased you bought the suntan lotion this morning? I'm actually, yeah. Are you? Yeah. I'd, I'd have been in trouble otherwise. You're in trouble now. Right, Morton Bertelson on the inside, Kenneth Kong, Derek Tohill, Michael Person. We were up at Tohill. I think he was looking at changing the gear ratios when we were in there, having a chat with the team. They were trying to figure out the difference between uh, miles an hour and kilometres an hour. In turn, I'm guessing looking at you know dashboard data and gear ratios and so on. So do you think he's gone for taller gears how to try and calm it down? No, I think the car looks so nervous to me. I don't think the that... Got a problem there, yeah, drive out yes. of the of turn tools, it's just spinning the wheels. He's got so much power, so he's got over 500 brake horsepower, it's a supercar engine and turbo setup. Of course, it's been remapped. Mount have done a lot of work on the mapping of this car. It, as you said earlier, they, they had it in the wet map setting. Do you remember what he, remember what he said this morning? He said, I was back, he goes, I was looking for two more drive shafts out there. <laughs> <laughs> Which is definitely definitely up there for quote of the day, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and there's a man who knows well how to drive a supercar very quickly. He texts me actually the moment I uh, announced my, when I made my supercar debut. Within seconds, Derek texts me saying, I can't say what he said, but the basic, the, the gist of it was, you're in trouble now because once you've driven a supercar, it's very difficult to go and have as much fun driving something else. But he really, really wanted to come and do this series in his touring car with a supercar engine, so it's sort of, sort of the same. Not like losing, you said, two, uh, two drive shafts down. Not losing tons of time, Hal. What's the lap times? At 44.1. He's only, he's only actually a tenth of the fastest lap here in person. Did you, what, did you have a lap time with the Briggs? Yeah. 42 dead. 42? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's two, that's two seconds quicker. Sorry, no. <laughs> we can also do some uh, live drive analysis on Derek as well, because the waistcoat is so loud on that thing that you can hear every single time he comes off the throttle. Let's listen. Of course, we can't hear it now that we're above the BMW because that's so loud as well. But you can hear that little chirping in the background, and that's yeah. Derek just every time he comes off the throttle. There you go. Amazing. 
there's a good look at this long right hand. The, the, look, the right hand here is longer than you think. Again, we, we went around yesterday. Always a race. You come to these races, we walk the track, we do loads of commentary, and then you sit in a high car and drive around in 25 mile an hour and you go, oh my totally God, different. it all looks totally different than the door. And the biggest thing, actually, Hal, for us was the crest dip, wasn't it, after the bridge, un under the yeah, bridge? Yeah, it's, it's a big compression there. Yeah. You just can't see it. Television cameras never do elevation justice, do they? You know, going into the Joker lap, where we're about to go now, riding above Kong. Where he is now is a full person's height difference yeah. to the entry. Yeah. And it's how long? 20 metres? Yeah, it's massive. It's a proper drop off. And the drivers were all saying this morning, was it backward? I think he was saying you, the rotation has to be done immediately. Kong takes it. 244.4. This is Derek's car. Yes, you win the wastegate of the day, Derek, definitely. <laughs> Epic. And into the semis. Yeah. Mind you, how many will we have semis? What's the car oh, count? Oh no, for final semis? only. Final only. Yeah, because what's the car count for semis? Because there's only we've had one yeah, retirement. My, my bad. Nine. I think we've only got a final for open two wheel drive. We'll check. We'll check. We'll have a look at our little schedule and see if we can figure that out. Yep, no semi for open two wheel drive. Okay, so they go. So it is only going to be the top six. Oh. No, sorry, we do have a semi-final. Sorry, sorry, yeah? sorry, sorry, it's on a different page. But yeah, we do have a semi-final. Ten. I suppose if there were ten. Yeah. Okay. Two five-car semis. Yeah. Okay. So it'd be a five and a four then. All right. So there is still. I was just about to say, as Engsvig really missed out here, who was in the top qualifier spot. If you missed the previous race, ended up parked up the bank on the outside of turn one. Kenneth Kong has uh, won that encounter. But it's Simon Tiger who wins the session, and uh, that'll be a P1, a P2, and a P3, and that will see Simon Tiger as the top qualifier. So he'll be in pole in semi-final number one for open two-wheel drive. Supercar lights, not even time to swap the paperwork over before they're ready to go. Olofsson, Steintolt, Hockfist, and Janssen. It's a hell of a lineup. And it's a great start by all four of them as well. Maybe a tiny lead for Olofsson on the inside line is where he wanted to be. Steins holds slots in behind. Look how clever they all are compared to just a massive bun fight. And now everybody defensive. Janssen comes up wide. Going to go inside. Surely going to go Joker. No, yes, no, decides not to. Was going to go Joker. And you never want to be the second person into the Joker on the first lap. So Janssen decides against it. It was Hockfist who went Joker, I believe. And it's uh, Olofsson leading from Steinsholt. Some of the most experienced the lights drivers in the uh, on the planet. <laughs> Give it, uh, yeah, not counting for, for previous drivers, but of the current lights drivers, whether that's in NRX Next or Supercar Lights or racing these cars in hill climbs or, or what have you elsewhere, this uh, quartet is right up the way of the most experienced. Isaac Chukfist, of course, doing RX2E last year as well. Kasper Janssen's been doing all of the nitro races. Steintold's driven all sorts of different cars, and Simon Olsen has been doing lights basically since their inception. I was going to say, has he got 100 races or something? There was something last year, yeah, wasn't there, a celebration yeah. of like, the, the, the crazy number of races he's done. An incredible achievement, given that they really don't have the budget, the uh, Olsen Hogren team compared to many of their rivals so uh, yeah massive massive uh, effort for them to be still involved but the level in this uh, category is just huge I think as well to be at the sharp end of it now is is is, is mega isn't it if to be at the sharp end of these you've got to be very very good indeed because of how accurate you have to be how much pace you have to carry through every corner momentum cars as we often talk about um, and, and also the other thing is although these are more expensive to run than a cross car they're nowhere near as expensive to run as a supercar and if this is the level you're at and you haven't got the money to move on, why not carry on racing at this level? They're great fun to drive. He's been a sw Swedish champion before, but won the, the Rally X title last year, didn't he? And I think we could... I, you could see him clean up this year, couldn't you? Got that monkey off his back. He's had uh, a turbulent career in terms of form. You know, I think he's uh, at times really struggled to find the consistency that he would like, and it, his form probably looked a bit more like a mountain range than a, than a football pitch. The last <laughs> another quote. Is it, you're, you're like Gronol, just churning him out. But last year, you know, he, he got it done. And uh, has he been fastest in both sessions so far? He has ahead of Steinsol in uh, Q2. It was second in Q1. Martin End was also incredibly capable. So maybe we're seeing Simon without that pressure of trying to get the title done. And maybe we'll just see him sneak ahead this season. Smoothness and the lack of inputs. It's the total opposite, isn't it, of, of you? All the other. Yeah, <laughs> I'd take that.
<laughs> I'll take that. Olufsen, 2.36.3, because he's absolutely banging the money. And that's actually the fastest time so far in this category today. So he, he won Q1 with a 2.37.5, won Q2 with a 2.36.8. This one is a 2.36.3, so he's gone half a second quicker again. And his best lap was his final lap. Look, Hal. No, the last, he joked on the last lap. Sorry, that's the best Sorry, lap, the best lap, lap on the right here. side. Yeah, but he did get the best lap. Yeah. By some, five, by some margin as well, by three temps over Casper Janssen, and we know he's absolutely no slouch. No. Casper must have learned so much by driving on the on the gravel tracks in the US, mustn't he? Yeah. Coming from a karting background. Well, do you remember when he first came in he and we were like, wild. we gave him one of our medals? Would well, you remember what were the medals? The, 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 was it full send? I can't remember. Was it full send? Mm, something along those lines. Yeah, it was. It was great fun. Thank you again for that. And uh, yeah, we were handing out left, right, and centre, but he got one for being absolutely sendy as and has just tidied it all up. When the, when the grip is lower, you learn so much more, don't you? Yeah. Olofsson, 236.3. Might be enough for him to win the session. He's definitely going to be TQ. He's got two wins. And uh, is some 16 points clear of Ola Henry Steinsholt and Martin Enland. Steinsholt, where's Steinsholt? P2, 238.8. That's actually important, so I'm going to write it down. 238.8, because Steinsholt is equal on points with Martin Enland, who's on the inside line in this one. And then the tied on 84 each, and it will mean one of them is going to get pole in the second semi-final. Expert, Tornholt and Anderson. Anderson, 15 years old, with a brilliant start, going to come from the outside, almost to the inside, then jump into the time to keep it lit going, won't be able to see anything there. Comes out from the dirt, covers off the inside line to keep uh, Eden Tornholt okay. behind. No, I was surprised, I thought uh, Lucas Anderson would joker there. Has Tornholt gone? Tornholt has gone. Right, that's perfect for Anderson now. So Anderson now has got space behind to joker on the very next lap, and I think we'll go, but I, I suspect Exbeth will anyway, don't you? Got to do something different, haven't you? Oh, but he's not all over Enland, is he? I think Exbeth will stay out, and uh, Luke Anderson, Anderson will joker. Anderson will. I, so this is one of those times, isn't it, how where your spotter might call you and say joker option, meaning, basically, if the car in front doesn't go, you do. Well, they've all got their own lingo for that scenario. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But that, the, the gist of it is absolutely correct. You, give the dri you have to put the onus on the driver at some point, because you, you just can't predict what the people around you are going to do. Yeah, perfect. See, so hasn't gone, so you do. So Anderson now has got to smash in the lap time and try and get back out in front of X, but they'll know that Enland is going to be slightly out of reach, I think. Because what you actually don't, what absolutely don't want to do at this stage is, is make a decision to joker or not and then change your mind. Yeah. You've, because... You lose time. For those that don't know, Rallycross qualifying is all based on, on ultimate time or on the total time of your race and where that puts you overall rather than the position. So you could finish third in this race, but that actually puts you third overall and quicker than all the other people in the other races in the session. So losing time by changing your mind is often... Uh, worse at this stage than it would be later on in the, in the yeah. knockout races of semi final Yeah, once one. you get to the knockout phase, anything goes, doesn't it, to get the job done. I was just thinking then and had a joker, but that's that thing of going past the entrance of the joker for the fourth time because, yeah. because of the fact it's three and a half laps. So does that mean you actually get four options to joker? Yes. Yeah. Now that's a bit of a mind blower for me, isn't it? Four options in three and a half laps. Mind so blown emoji. three and a half options to joker. No, I guess. Bring me out a little bit. You can take a quarter of a joker on one lap and then the other quarter later on. <laughs> Long, is it, you wait. Is it, we're not even halfway through day one yet. You wait till halfway through tomorrow. Um, so clean now on the line of circuit, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder what they've dropped there. So do I. I it must be dust, dust decks. Yeah, because I thought it was wet in the previous session. It's not. It's stained the tarmac. So dust decks. Um, if you watch the Joker piece we made earlier, Hal was talking about the stuff they put down in Scandinavia to keep the dirt off. Enland, 236.1 goes fastest. So that's going to put Enland ahead of Steinsold because Steinsold did a 238.8. 236.1, one. is it going to be? No, right, so Olofsson, gone quicker than Olofsson. So Olofsson doesn't get the clean sweep but will get P2 in this session, I think. Am I right? And then went a tenth quicker on, on best lap, so uh, very little to choose between them. Didn't lose out much at the start. Martin been doing a lot of rallying, hasn't he, over the winter, and rally sprints in, a, in an R5 Fiesta, and, you know, that rally seat time, that's what Jan Christofsson always talks about. Yeah. He's uh, 
the he seat did it, time. Didn't he? Get, well, he has done a lot yeah. of it, yeah. But the seat time you get in rallying and the amount you learn is uh, is invaluable. So it's, it's one corner a thousand times. Sorry, a thousand corners once rather than one corner a thousand times. And yeah. I just think that makes you more adaptable to changing conditions, definitely. And that was where Johan always felt Solberg had the advantage in the Joker lap. And so yeah, rally, go and do some, go and do some, definitely. Tornholt parked it, unfortunately. Enlund, though, took the checker flag, wins the session. So Olofsson has won two, Enlund wins one, and that will see uh, Olofsson with the top qualifier spot. 236.1. And those guys, uh, when I say those guys, I mean Olofsson and Enlund, they'll be on pole in each of the two semi-finals. You might see the standings now, actually. Are we going to see the standings? Oh, they're returning. There we go. That's Eda Tornholt coming back to the paddock. Ah, and breathe. Oh, dear. Two cars of the three on the grid. Oscarson's there. Lars Eric Haug is missing. Nils Christian Haug, Haug is on the inside. So these cars will spin less of an issue although uh, they've got plenty of power spinning them up off the line is, a, is an only just scenario so a slightly uphill grid in uh, in a lights car next car rx2 whatever you want to call them would mean a tiny bit potentially a clutch slip off the line but most of the while it's uh, get the rpm up high and, uh, and dump the clutch off the line you'll just about get a little bit of wheel spin Two thirty-six, one the time to be. Oliver Erickson was meant to come and join us, wasn't he, Hal? Yeah, he sent me some excuse by message. Did he? Yeah. What did he say? Call him out live on air, unless it says something really bad. Yeah, he's quite a polite chap. Oh, he's lovely, isn't he? But what does he say? It's a bit stressful down here. Can I come up later? <laughs> Is the gist of it. <laughs> Fair. I mean, it, you, not much you can say to that, no, really, is really. there? I mean, he's Slack responsible it. for running, uh, what, half this field, pretty much? Well, I certainly won't he, he'd be consulting running half the field, won't he? I had a quick chat to Matt Oscarson uh, on the way back up to commentary before this session, and uh, he said he had no brakes at all in the previous one, which round here is not good, because it's super quick, and wow, he's just done a 41.5. That has matched Simon Oliverson in the first run. This could be uh, troubling the top of the order here. So he obviously has got his brakes back, or he hasn't, and he's just hanging on for dear life. And there are, there, there'll be two semis for these guys. There's 11 cars in the category. Might only be 10, of course, if Lars Eric Howell doesn't make it back out later. The, the second of the Howells up on your timing screen. There's a misfire still somewhere, wasn't there? There was a misfire in this race last time around. There was a misfire in practice, do you remember, as well, for somebody? Yeah. Vegan nearly showed his chassis number on the dash of the uh, of Oscarson's car there, that was handy. Under the bridge, go on, Bingo, under it, under it. Nah, he's not listening. <laughs> we know he could. 41 for his last lap was a 41.8. I think he's just not quite consistent enough on ultimate lap time to trouble. Right, oh, does it clip the ball out there or not? I think he might have done. Yeah, in which case, is that an automatic penalty? It might well be. I think they'll look at it. It's an interesting bit of info. Boy Bigo was telling us he can't fly the lights he normally flies here because the loose because the loose is so loose and it is a proper traditional loose track. It's cleaning up, but he said it's just there's too much roost, isn't there? So he gets into a situation where effectively he gets shot down, mm. um, and that can get very expensive very quickly. You know, a lights car run over your drone, avoids the flag there at the finish line. Look, it's coming down the Ooh, straight. Just be just slower than an Olufsen. So a great run there from Matt Oskarsson. Enlund goes top of the order, Olofsson second, and Oskarsson's done a 36.8, which will put him just behind Olofsson in the standings. Fair play, and that's the advantage of running on your own in uh, in the last race. Must have been Haug with the with the misfire. Oh, torrid, uh, torrid day so far for the Haug squad. Lars Eric, of course, was a, a regular competitor last year. Missed this is this session. See if we can find out afterwards what uh, what's going on with those guys. Well, I guess Lars Eric won't be in the semi-finals.
Supercar light, Simon Olofsson takes the top qualifier from Martin Enland. Ola Henry Steinsholt is P3, Isaac Hockfist P4, Janssen, Anderson, Exbeth, Oskarsson, Kastman, Haug and Haug with a question mark over whether we will see the second Haug in the semi-finals later. Remember all these cars go through because 12 can make the semis and it'll be the top three from each of those semis when there's only the two. And then uh, when we get into the other categories, obviously, if there are three semi-finals, only two go through from each to the final. So it'll be six car finals. We're just doing a little bit of research ourselves on how the new Pro-Am category is going to work. and We're not quite there yet, so you'll have to bear with us on that. We do know we're not going to have a semi-final for open tour driving. Yes, because not uh, we're not. Definitely not. OK, we'll figure that out in a minute. Straight on to this. Headstrom, Christopherson, Eriksson, Backrud. And Belevsky, great start by Ericsson in the Civic in the middle. Belevsky, they're going to try and come on the outside. Kristofsson backs out of it. Belevsky sideways. Oh, super side race to Kevin Ericsson again. Sticks it right down the dirt. Kristofsson there this time. Shuts the door on Backer who emerges from that cloud of dust. Into the joke lap goes Kristofsson immediately. Lap one, going to try and overlap these guys. Didn't manage to get it done on Ericsson earlier. Can he get it done this time? I think he's lost less time this time round, Hal. That is a Johan and Tommy Kristofsson move every single time in the World Championship. He doesn't win the start, he jokers on that one. Or lap two, depending on where the fight is, but he always jokers early to get the hammer down to try and make that difference up immediately. The thing about Kristofsson, Hal, is he's nearly always in that top heat, isn't he? Whatever category he's in, and therefore he knows that when he goes joker, he's not going to end up in traffic. If you try and do that when you've got slower cars, you can't get done backward. Look into the inside. Ericsson goes on the defensive here. Andreas has got to go joker if Kevin doesn't. He goes in, but that will be too late. Christofsson's going to get him because they've lost time there with that defensive play, I reckon. Oh, Christofsson is in behind Hedstrom, but does indeed get backward. He needs Hedstrom out of the way now, doesn't he? Hedstrom's got so much traction in that hind eye, though. Comes out of all of the corners, especially the slow corners, very, very well. Look at the hind eye gap in the polo this time around. I wonder if Kevin Eric is going to go in this time. He'll either have his dad, uh, Andreas, or his brother Oliver on the radio to him, giving him the information he needs. He's got three seconds on Christofsson at the moment, who has got past Hedstrom. He hasn't got past Hedstrom yet. So Christofsson still sitting in behind Peter Hedstrom. Hedstrom, is he, he, he doesn't go Joker this time. Kevin hasn't, so does Hedstrom go? Want to see the Joker in the background? Want to see who's gone in the Joker? And he's passed, so is that backward up behind him? Waiting for Christofsson, there it is, it's Christofsson. Hedstrom. Hedstrom has Jokered, Andrew. Yes, so it is, it's cleared him. So it was, but the gap's gone up, Hal. The gap's gone up to 3.4. It was 3.0. It's gone up, and as we see that, Kevin Erickson comes in absolutely sideways, lays down a load of black Cooper marks across the track. Now trying to find a traction on the exit. We don't have any splits around the circuit here. So he's coming down now. He's got to nail that braking zone on. Get the car turned into the joke lap now. Watch for Erickson splitting off to the left-hand side. Drops into the joke lap now. Chris Thompson going to come around the top. He's a bit too sideways on the way and straightens the car up. Gets rotation again. Where's he going? And he's done oh. him! Chris Donaldson gets Ericsson at the Joker lap, rotates the polo round, takes the checker flag. Ericsson gets P2. Backer in his third, Belevsky fourth, and Hedstrom drops to fifth right at the end. Christofferson, fastest lap of the race on the last lap of the race, 38.2, and that was enough. And a stunning, stunning middle sector. So much quicker than anyone else in that race. Jan Christofferson yet again delivers exactly when he needs to. He's a weapon, isn't he? So look at this. He loses the start, backs out of it immediately. So backwards in behind him. He knows too. They've gone for that slight inside line. So clever from Christofferson to back out of that and cut to the inside. Look at him there on the left. Just look sneaks at on the inside of Hedstrom. Kevin's a little bit too far out in the loose, but he does pull it off, so he's got it. And now look at this, Johan knows already, he's loads of lock on the car. Off to the left-hand side, drops into the Joker straight away. With these fast cars, how it worked, but Hedstrom nearly cost him it. If Hedstrom had waited till the last lap, I don't think he'd have got him. I think Kevin also made a bit of a mistake in the Joker. It'd be nice to see that from the outside shot, not just above on the drone. But Kevin got really sideways there in the Joker, didn't he? Look, he got the, rota he got the rotation done perfectly that was amazing. at the bottom of the hill. That's you can see where the loose epic. gravel there actually helped the rear of the car to slide around. That was epic. This is going to be Kevin's Joker. Nice and tidy on the way in. So it, it was here that we thought, was it a bit See, look, yes, he's too dropped much. the rear wheels into the gravel again, and they've so talked about this Civic before having quite a long wheelbase, but Johan's a long way ahead there, I was going to say, I have to say, Hal, I think even if it had been perfect, yeah, agree, he'd have yeah. been closer, but I don't think he'd have got him. Christopherson, the five-time world champion, shows his class. Wins this encounter with a 227.5. Looking back, that's quicker than Hedstrom went to win Q2. And it's, yeah, it's the fastest time of the day. So 227.5 by Johan Christofferson. 
He is fastest so far in Q3, and at the minute sits in third, unbelievably, in the qualifying with a first, sorry, a second and a third, but with a first as well, I think that'll be enough. I think he'll take it. On to race two. Linneran on the inside, then Franks. Ward. Losi Baby gets a better start this time, but now he gets turned around in the Warriors. Oh, just runs the nose across, not too much damage. Linneran ends up on the opposite side. Victor Franks is gifted the lead. They'll get those cars out there and they won't red flag it for that because they're not going back across that piece of track. So Franks again has been given the lead here, but we know how that RX2E car, even with the wick turned up a little bit more, is probably not going to trouble the times of, of, of the top supercars. This weekend for OC Baby is so reminiscent. Oh, and Linneman from the commentary box window has dropped it again. No, sorry, it was Baby who's dropped it again in the background. This weekend for Baby is so reminiscent of uh, Enzo E. Do you remember he was here in the Audi a couple of years ago and got very frustrated with not making it through the first corner cleanly once? Yeah, uh, I, do, I do remember. <laughs> Ola Christian Wasn't just... Wasn't some pushing on the exit of turn two? Yeah. A degree of frustration, I think it was, uh, we were talking about at that stage. But yeah, OC Baby just locking out almost every time. Schnack's been a joker this time around. At his home circuit, Franks has got a substantial margin here. I would imagine Franks will joke at the next time just to maintain track position. A 40.5 was his best last time around. And as the car that replaced the Supercar Lights concept as uh, the support category to the World Championship, match, a second and a half quicker than uh, the Lights cars went. OK, it is turned up a little bit. 39.8 for Baby. What was Christophson's best lap last time? Done got it. Got way too excited and didn't write it down, but Franks does joke in this time around. Runs the rear of the car into the loose, but gets a nice rotation. Too much on the exit, a little, not, not gonna, terrible. They're going to catch Ward here. Ward needs to get out of the way. There's plenty of space up this gravel. Hopefully he goes to the right and he's got oh. to the left. Wow. He may as well pull off at this stage. Somebody's mud rack getting chunk of there. Look at that. A baby coming down the inside on the loose. How that's going to affect their braking zone massively. Is it being offline up there? Because it's just that one line that gets clean. The baby's on a massive charge here. I would expect a lunge into the next corner. A degree of frustration from not achieving what you want to in the first corner. So much quicker than Schnack on overall pace. Let's see the button. The... No, he's not. We know we're near close enough. A good recovery nonetheless. Victor ranks through the left hander. Christopherson was at 2.27.5, as you can see. About that five seconds again. What was he back last time? He had a good run last time. Uh, he was seventh with a 2.34.9. So, yeah, it's, it's around the five to six second mark, basically. So, it's, it's three and a half laps. We'll see losing 1.5, 1.7 a lap, probably. Loses the start, look. But then look at this. So, there's just a couple of... Noises. Did, did Baby turn in on Ward or did Ward turn out? I Here we go. Ward and Lineman have had a... No, I think Baby's turned in on him. I think ba Baby's car moves across, Hal. Hopefully we can see that again. Well, we'll just, we'll Poor old Linneman. Good recovery from Baby. Proper rally driver recovery, that, isn't it? Look, look, look. What? I no, think he's just yeah, but then Ward's, the Ward's pointing right, Hal, off the line as well. But is he pointing white right because he's getting pushed out by Linneman? It's hard to tell. It's just a rally across first corner, I think, isn't it? As we said... Uh, Didn't even make the first corner. Who got turned <laughs> around earlier and we... Oh, I can't remember. Someone else. <laughs> uh, Victor Hansen. Yes. He got turned around, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In open two-wheel drive. Matt Foskerson, I think, in uh, light. But anyway, that's so hard to apportion blame in those circumstances. Unless you've been right on the outside and shut the door and destroyed everyone on the inside, it's very difficult to uh, lay blame at anyone's door. I mean, we can, but I don't think it'd be fair. We've got one supercar race left to go in qualifying here from round one of Rally X 2023. Hope you're enjoying the coverage as much as we're enjoying bringing it to you. It is a beautiful day here at Nice and Barnum in Denmark. Final race of qualifying, then on to semi-finals and finals. We should have, what, ooh, about eight minutes to go and sort things out in between times. So we'll be getting off air very swiftly after this one, I can assure you of that. Roma, Tam, Dal and Christensen. Tell you what, that couldn't be more even if you tried. Slots up the inside line. Well, there's a lot going on, but no uh, no major carnage. Tam leading, takes the standard lap. 
Tam driving that M Sport uh, built Fiesta supercar. That was in America for a long time, formerly driven by Brian Deegan and Steve Arpin and the likes. Very capable car, arguably one of the best rallycross cars ever built, especially in its time. I think it was ahead, wasn't it? I think all that chassis experience coming from the WRC just, just made it quite an easy machine to drive. Yeah. And Maybe that, a bit less agricultural than some of the other top rallycross cars at the time, which haven't since stepped up, haven't they? But massively. And I think, uh, you know, that's what Jan Christoph was talking about, the rear of the polo he's driving this weekend. He's got double wishbone suspension. The technology in McPherson structure suspension, and that's where you've got a single wishbone at the, at the bottom of the suspension arrangement and then an upright and then the damper that goes all the way to the top of the upright. Friction in a McPherson damper previously is why people went to double wishbone, but now the the friction technology has made the uh, McPherson setup so much more efficient. And yeah, this was absolutely one of those cars to come into rallycross. Remember the late and great Ken Block yeah. the car for the World Championship in 2014 and was, uh, and was France, so on the pace. Was brilliant. It? I think that filled Ken full of confidence too, didn't it? And, and then of course we saw the full-time team. It was lovely to see oh. people. Oh, tiny bit of contact for the brakes. Oh, oh. um, Stefan Christensen did well to get that stop and not fire off time. Lovely to see some memories from the likes of uh, Ken Birch and Derek Dauncey in, in recent days. They've been posting up pictures of the anniversary basic when they brought the Focus into the World Championship. Spin in the background. Right. Wasn't it cool to see those pictures and just, yeah, it was, it was a big thing when they turned up, wasn't it? Hoonigan with the Focus, it Ford was, factory it was massive, back in, it was huge. Yeah, that wasn't the car they wanted in the end. Well, I do think that car with the suspension arrangement of this car might have been a different kettle of fish. They had the yeah. double wishbone on the Focus, yeah. didn't they? Oh, I'm no engineer, and I'm not, you know, I'm not no, the one that we, did was wrong. But I, this, yeah. this car is very, very good. Yeah. But, uh... Sometimes you've got to go with the marketing, isn't that? the thing with the manual. Yeah, and you've, also, want and you've also got to... Knocking it down a gear there over the crest. Yeah, it's inside it's the very, was quite enough. Very tidy through the, through the Joker Town. And just edges out, which has been quicker than it has been so far this weekend in this race. You also get cars like that designed a little bit by committee, don't you? You'd have had Derek Dauncey in his side with all their experience. You'd have had the M Sport side, the full performance side. Yeah. It's, it's very different to designing a car you know, in-house it would yeah, this is what we want. Arrangement. This yeah. is what we want. So Christopherson takes that final session from Kevin Erickson. See another look at these starts. These guys not troubling the, the top times. I'm trying to figure out whether it's going to be enough to get Johan. Yeah, it is. That'll give Johan the TQ. So Johan will take the TQ. Where will Linneman be? He had an absolute shocker there. So Linneman's going to drop down a bit. Only the top 12 are going through, so it'll be two of these, I think. Oh, D DNF for Callow Ward. What did Ward do before? Ward was in seventh, so there's a chance even with the DNF. What's the DNF? 14. He might still make it. Roma spun in this one, didn't he? So he'll be last of those that... Oh, he is now on the timing screen. Last of those that finished. Yeah, and Roma was P10, Hal. So that, that spin might actually have cost Roma a place in the semi-finals at home. It's a shame. But... Another opportunity tomorrow, and that's the good True. thing about these double-headers. Yeah. Double-headers, yeah, all double-headers. Track cleanup underway. Semi-finals will be coming up next. Here are the standings at the end of supercar qualifying. Johan Christofferson, Peter Hedstrom, Kevin Erickson, Belevsky, your top four. They're going to be the front rows in the two semi. Backwards on row two. So too is Linneman. Franks in the RX3 car. Mike Kotam. And the final four drivers making the cut. Christensen, Schnack, OC Baby look down in P11. Watch for him trying to fight his way back up and get into the top three in his semi. Cal Ward just makes the cut despite a DNF in Q3. So that's it from qualifying here in Q3. Uh, it won't be very long now before we are into semi-finals and finals. So we've got just those final races to go. Remember, if there's 18 cars making, it's three semis and two go through from each. If there's only 12, then it'll be the top three from each. How, how many minutes have we got before we're back on air? Not enough, but I can't wait because the semi-finals are going to be epic. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So join us. Well, join us. Stay with us for the knockout phase. You might have time to go and make a cup of tea. We'll be back in very shortly indeed. See you soon.
So look back at some of the action from qualifying Q3. And you can hear we were getting quite excited about things there. But on the inside then. Everybody got a bit crossed up. And this wasn't the only race in which we saw this kind of action. We'd seen it in uh, open two-wheel drive as well. We were getting all crossed up in cross cars. Another good run by Branks, although the car here just not able to match the pace of the supercars. Fair enough, it's a couple of hundred horsepower down on them. He's still doing a brilliant job. We're a very young driver and, uh, yeah, proving that the electric cars can be a match for the supercars. Bit of carnage further on down in the uh, running order. But we're done with qualifying. We're coming up to semi-finals and finals. So we've got a uh, couple in, in each of the different categories. So in, in, what do we got? So we've got Cross Car Junior, first of all, we'll have three semi-finals in that. So the top two will go through from each of those. 18 have made it. Then we've got Cross Car, which is two or three. Three, there we go, how Ridge knows. Uh, so three semi-finals in that, again, top two from each. No semi-finals in open two-wheel drive. We think it goes straight to the final. Yeah. It does, see? I can always rely, Hal knows everything. If you didn't know, he's like an encyclopedia. Hey, look, he wrote this. Oh, is that, was that a mouse pad? Is that what you got? <laughs> yeah, it, it was, yeah. Um, there you go, look, OSC engineering to win. All the chassis numbers of all the cars they've ever made and, and what they've done, it is good, actually. Um, so he, he knows stuff. Actually. And then on to Supercar Lights, which is two semi-finals, two. top three going through from each, and then Supercar, two semi-finals, top three going through from Hot each. Hot off the press, Supercar semi-finals. Sweet. Let's have a look. Jan Christophson and Kevin Erickson on the front row of semi-final one. Uh, yes, uh, that's going to be interesting. Two. Oh, we've got loads of grids. Yeah, well, we've got four copies of that there, I mate. I pressed eh? the wrong button. Oh, it's terrible. Shocking. Think of the trees. Uh, yeah, and then uh, Hedstrom and Belevsky. Oh, that could be punchy. Hedstrom, Belevsky, Linneman, Tam, Schnack, Ward. D that sounds if like a... If I a semi-final, the Christopher. Semi-final has... two is always drama. Well, semi-final two could be wild from <laughs> the looks of things. Uh, but yeah, semi-one semi, semi one is uh, Christoph and Ericsson backward, Franks, Christensen and Vaby. Vaby on the back row, backward on row two. Maybe not the results we were thinking of for them. But anyway, we start with Cross Car Junior. Uito, the reigning champion, on the front row with Soderholm. And Uito gets away beautifully. That is exactly the sort of start you want when you're the reigning Cross Car Junior champion. Look, well in the clear, take whatever line you want. Doesn't matter what's going on behind you. Track's been wetted down, you can see there how P2 car running super wide just in those slippery conditions. That Soderholm was held onto P2 despite being spanked at the start by Uito. Um, it, it's slippery out there whilst those track conditions continue to change. I do feel sorry for the juniors that they're uh, at the always. front of the session and then they yeah. always get the worst of the track conditions, but um, it sets you up well in your learning, doesn't it, for uh, later down the line. And now, for those that are new to watching, Rally Cross or, or Rally X this weekend. Now all of the times go out the window. All you need to do is try and beat the other drivers in your race because the top two, when it's uh, three semi-finals, will go through to the six-car final. So the top two finishers in this race will progress and the rest of them, well, they're not going home because they're coming back again tomorrow, but the rest of them will finish their day. Of course, you get points based on where you finish in the semi-finals. So while the difference between sixth and fourth doesn't make any odds wherever you step up, but it does make a difference to the amount of points you score and your tally overall. So we've got a guest joining us in the commentary box in just a few moments time. Uh, Oliver Erickson's made his way up. He promised us he'd come up in Q3, so he's actually fired. Um, no, he's not really. He's been a very, very busy boy. He's just getting his headset on now and he can join us and, and have a quick chat through these uh, semi-finals with us. Uh, and we should, uh, you should be able to hear us, Ollie. Can you hear us? Yeah, I hear you well, yeah. He can. Ollie, welcome to the Commentary Rocks, mate. Good to see you. Okay. Um, you better tell everyone at home, you, you've had a really busy day. Obviously, we're looking at uh, semi-final number one for Junior Cross Car. You've had a really busy day. What are you doing here this weekend? Because, of course, you're not racing. Yeah, uh, Kevin got to drive the Honda this weekend, so he's normally the uh, the team manager for what's Prex Z, so and kind of his, kind of his intern. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> you're his intern. I like it. I like it. So, yeah. Let me sort that out for you. There we go. Try that. Thank you. There we go. Perfect. Just adjusting microphones up here in commentary. Um, junior cross car. Let's talk about that first of all. Did you ever do it? Uh, no. Uh, never driven one, actually. It, uh, the class came up after yeah, I was too old, basically. So, uh, yeah, I'm just straight into lights from Falk Racing. And, uh, yeah, I missed the, ch the chance to do it. Supercar Lights, though, you are the master of uh, setting up a Supercar Lights car. Just talk to a little bit to the people at home, what you're up to this weekend and uh, how much you enjoy it. Yeah, it's so much fun, uh, you know, being here at DCM is... I, I tell everyone that's here, it's top three 
my favorite tracks in all of Europe. Uh, it's really fun to drive and obviously good racing as you've seen today. So uh, yeah, uh, would like to be in a car to be honest. And in the supercar lights paddock, you're running the three OMSE cars. What's involved from, uh, from your side with your three drivers? Yeah, I'm trying to, you know, set up strategies for what to do from everything to tire to, to spotter strategy. Uh, helping them with uh, setups and stuff. Uh, obviously, we at Oldsburg CMC run a bit different program for for our lights, uh, lights guys. You know, they bring their own car, their own mechanics and so on. We help them along the way, you know, uh, to be kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? To make it through themselves, you know. Yeah, so you're mentoring, mentoring yeah. them a little bit and helping yeah. them out, yeah. yeah. Obviously, we have, we, yeah, we do a lot of work uh, in cars and things and everywhere, so uh, we, yeah, we want them to be kind of independent, but without touch on it. Yeah, nice. And of course, OMC with all the parts support for it as well. How? What are you looking at? Well, just that so now the Jokers have all played out in this first semi-final for the Cross Car Juniors, and Soderholm, despite that not ideal start, has dropped some nearly six seconds behind Michael Uito, but... Uh, at this stage, we've just a few corners to go. Look at Uito's lead, it's absolutely enormous, but it's those two that are going to go through, borrowing any... Uh... Well, I was just about to say, Nielsen is putting a bit of pressure on Soderholm for P2 and P3, that fight behind Uito here. It needs to be a lunge down into this corner. If we can see the battle yeah. for second, it's going to be a move up the inside there. We can hear, we can hear squealing of, uh, of brakes and so on, but from the commentary position, we can see as Uito comes around to take the checker flag and go through to the front row and to the pole. Soderholm does hold off Nielsen through the long left hander. Check and flag falls. Uito wins from Soderholm. So both the front row drivers are going through from semi final number one. We've got semi two and semi three still to come. And seeing, you know, Rito, uh, was his second year? Uh, yeah. You know, super impressive. You know, he really got the grips of this uh, cross cut junior card. So, uh, yeah, from light to flag, brilliant race. We're seeing Lucas Anderson step up this weekend, aren't we, with, uh, with your Christophson's JC team. And I actually think stepping from junior cross car to lights, although it's a big step, is actually very good because you need to be so neat and tidy and maintain the momentum in these cars. That's not so dis dissimilar to how you drive a lights car because you need to be so smooth with a lights car because they've got a lot of grip for the amount of power they've got. Is that fair? Yeah, for sure. I'd say so. Obviously, you have a thousand more kilos to, to rip around. And uh, yeah, the front wheel steer is a bit better than this, uh, I think. so. Uh, but yeah, see Lucas, you know, we, he uh, he came to our open test day to test out the Super Collide, see the strengthness uh, last fall. Super impressive, you know, see how he handled, you know, straight into a car and uh, yeah, obviously seeing him do well in lights. So Michael Uito and Anton Soderholm are the first two drivers through to the final from Cross Car Junior. Semi-final one done, two more semi-finals to come. Here's the lineup for the next one. On the front row, Lowry Hallinan and Yoni Terpinen. We've then got Hampus Hagstrom and Pauli Terpinen. And at the back, Gustav Atterblad and Axel Schnack. Thumbs up from the marshal at the front of the grid and will be away immediately. Hallinan could have had the top qualifier spot. Just got picked by Uito in that last session. Uito running later in the day. Terpinen level with Hallinan on the run to the first corner. Hallinan with that slightly drier line on the inside though. Gets good grip. So Pine and drops into P2 behind. They've brushed the circuit, haven't they, in the track prep between uh, Q3 and the semi-finals because it's so much cleaner now out to the outside of the, the circuit on the exit of the first corner. And what we'll see as this session develops is that all that loose, not so much by the junior cross cars, but certainly by the, the bigger cars, the lights and the supercars, that loose from the jumps will get dragged down into that corner. And that's where you see someone like Kevin Erickson, uh, Oliver's brother, going super sideways around the outside because all of that gravel has been dragged into that area. And this is a really crucial corner on this track as well. Uh, you see all the sand on the inside of, that, of the curb there. Uh, one guy puts the wheel in there. You have no idea there's sand there and you blow the whole corner. Yeah, that's what happened to uh, Kevin, To Kevin, obviously, yeah, when Joanne got by him. So, uh, yeah, yeah, crucial, crucial part of the track. Backroom was saying this morning he was following Belevsky in, uh, I think it was in, was it in time? No, it was in Q1, wasn't it? And Belevsky kept chucking a wheel over the inside and pulling the dirt out. I think the cross cars seem to do it a bit more than the supercars, but yeah, once the track's dirty, there's no time to sweep it between the races. And, and if, it, if it happens in between laps, you've got no idea. Yeah, for sure. And, and obviously, yeah, the cross car don't have front wheel drive, so when they put their wheel in, they kind of take up a bit. But when the four wheel drive cars come, they put the thing in and it's like a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just ripping it out. It's just ripping it out. So, uh, yeah, going in there, you know, and you have zero grip. Like, it's like, 
ice with no studs. You kind of want to <laughs> drive that, you know, it's, yeah, it's strange. We were talking uh, earlier on about how much we're loving the new joke lap here. So the fact that on lap one, it's immediately after turn two, and then on the final lap, it's before the last corner. And I can't think of another rallycross track in the world because of the way the start comes across the track here, that it's like that. It's incredible. It's, it's a great addition. Yeah, it's a great addition. I mean, uh, the, the last one, you know, the, the first uh, joke lap we had there was a bit of a sketchy one, but obviously, yeah, it's a big step up for the track, you know, and. Uh, you know, everything that can happen through turn one on this track, it's, it's not the best thing to be on pole, uh, which is also strange for, for a track, you know, on a Radka track. So having that addition, you know, you can do an outside, but if you miss out on your P3 and P3 out of turn two, you can still take Joker and have a big advantage as well. So uh, it's all to play for, for sure. Interestingly, of course, with more cars in the semi-finals, how we've spoken about this before, the six car semis do mean that the front drivers can't Joker as early because the, the distance in terms of lap time between P1 and P6 can be quite a lot when you've got three semi-finals. You've also got more laps to do in, haven't you? So, True. so that it sort of offsets itself a bit. What you don't, what you wouldn't want is is a six-car race and then only three laps because then that really makes. Well, I would like that because it stops <laughs> someone like Jan Christophsen joking on lap one and then immediately behind to catch back up. But uh, yeah, it, it does change the dynamics, and uh, you know we're privileged that Ollie's up here, one of the most successful and experienced spotters in the business, and. Uh, the number of laps makes a big difference. The three car races, I always think, are, 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 the three lap races, sorry, are always really difficult for a spotter because you're not, you haven't got as many options as you would do in a, in a four lap or a six lap race. No, for sure, you're really restricted. Uh, I mean, in terms of what strategy you need to use, but, uh, you know, it, it's kind of hard sometimes, you know, being five, six laps to keep count on all the laps <laughs> and what, every, what all the cars do. We were saying on this one, mate, it's pretty weird here because you're doing three and a half laps. You yeah. actually get four opportunities to take the Joker in three laps. Is that like, as a spot, oh. you're like, okay, you're freaking me out. It's, it's freaking you out. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm so focused, you know, because I told Kevin first, like on FP1, make sure you know where the, where the lap sign is yeah. uh, that counts the laps for you because I don't want to make a F up out of this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's your responsibility as well. Oh, there's a brilliant fight here for second between Schnack and uh, oh, Turpenine. And that's round. Schnack, I think, is it? Who is that out of the dirt? Uh, three, 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 that is Schnack, yeah. So the local oh. driver not going to make it through to the final on this occasion. Hamlin's checked out of that battle. So Turpine and we've got two Turpinans on the timing screen, which is slightly odd. No, it's Parley and, uh, and Yoni said so that there's two of them in the race. Oh, my bad, yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at my grids and I still can't see them. Yes, there. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, there's. So which one of them is going through? How? Pauli. So Pauli makes it with Hallen, and so it is. Uh, so Pauli's the first person to make it from row oh, two. Go on, you got Oli? Yo ah, Yoni. It's been updated to Yoni. Oh. Go, go, go. You're not welcome anymore, Oliver. Go away. <laughs> well, whatever. <laughs> so it's the front two drivers. It's the front two drivers. It is Yoni, from, yeah. from row one. So so far, nobody has made it through except for the front row. But that really bit of contact there on the start, not 20, a lot though. 23. That race was four, so, oh, four and a half seconds slower from Hallinan. Okay, he wasn't under pressure, but he oh. went four and a half seconds slower than Uito did, and Uito wasn't under pressure either. So that, I think Uito has laid down a massive marker there for the final. But at the same time, you know, being Lowry there, no risk, you know, he's been in CrossCourt Junior for, for a while now, you know. You see, being that young and having experience, you know, taking no risk, driving smooth, you know he doesn't raise the clock, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fair enough. Big, yeah. Uh, but big it's a psychological game. game as well, isn't it? You know, if you if you know you've won your semi-final by that massive margin against the other guys, it's, it, psychologically, when you're on the grid for the final, you've got that little bit of extra confidence. Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, psychologically in the in the in the paddock as well. You know, they're good friends. They all play around together to and go to the to your friend telling you, oh, I beat you by this much. You know, it's probably a big game. Yeah. Schnack could have upset things there on that final lap if it wasn't for the little spin down at the, the hairpin right at the far end. Ended up getting pitched down to the back of the pack, so that's a bit of a shame, but I say it does mean that it's the top two. The front two rows have gone through. We've got one more semi-final to come. They're on the grid now. Uniton Yulalami with Oliver Solly. Then you've got uh, Victor Christensen, Nico Kindernan, Alfred Eriksson, and Carl Svedland at the back. So watch that front row, Yulalami and Solly. Great start, I'd say Solly almost got the better start, but Yulalami's alongside as they come up towards that left-hander. Solly drops him behind 
Oh, out into the dirt on the outside, skirting there up the bank as well. Then trying to shut the door, just finding the car inside. That wasn't ideal for Victor Christensen. Just didn't quite, could have worked out brilliantly and just didn't out quite play into his hands. It's funny, isn't it, how the uh, qualifying is all over the place with uh, different drivers ending up in different situations. But when the semi-finals come in there and it really matters, you get the, the, the experienced drivers like Uito, like Hallinan, like Yulalami here, the, the ones that... Uh, it's not fair to say the cream comes to the, t the top, but they certainly use all of their experience in the first couple of corners. You've got to be there in qualifying. You've got to be near the top in qualifying to make the front rows of the grid, haven't you? And this is when it counts. Talking about front rows of the grid, Ollie, you took your, your first win in Nitro Rallycross this year up at um, Three Rivers, Trois Rivières. How did that feel? Yeah, it was a long time coming. Uh, yeah, for sure, it was a brilliant weekend. You know, being a Swede, uh, doing the first, you know, Nitro Rallycross on ice. Uh, been beaten by Jamaican in the battle. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think many people were expecting that, were they? No, not, not, not we either. You know, me, Robin and Kevin, we had like a Swedish group uh, meeting after that. Like, what <laughs> are we going to do? How are we, we going to finish the Jamaican yeah. off? Raz was watching it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and then bring, bringing it back to Denmark, of course, Fraser took his first supercar win here and you took the title here back yep. in 2020, was it, I think? Yep. yep. Yeah, again, good memories. Yeah, yeah, I love this track, you know. I, I've been here uh, three times. Uh, first year, I yeah, crossed the finish line first, but I got penalised, so I got second. The second year, I won, and the third year, I won. Oh, look at this pass down the straight, sorry to interrupt, coming down there. Oh, and then locking it up on the brakes down at the end. So close between diving off into the joke lap. That's Ericsson up the inside of uh, Kinnan, isn't it? Or the other way around. Yeah, it was the other way around indeed. So what's Yulalami's lead? What's the gap? A 3.7. 3. 3. So, so it, it is enough, yeah. Do you think he'll stay? What would you do? Okay, what would you do, Ollie? Would you leave him out or bring him in, stick him in the joker now? He's got 3.7. 3.0 is roughly the delta in these. Yeah, I'd say uh, take a joker, you know. Um, the curve can be really rough, you know, you take the joke kick, get it out of the way, uh, you can completely control the race from there, uh, you can drive with no risk and so on, so we see what he does. Obviously they have no spotters, so yes, I don't think he knows he has that lead. So. No, and that's the trouble, isn't it? You're looking in the mirrors, they're not very easy to see, and like, it, it's tough oh. trying to call your own, your, own, your own joke lap. Yeah, for sure, and, you know, being new, it, you probably focus a lot on what line you're taking more than what the cars are doing behind you, so uh, he's sticking it out there one more lap and uh, try to build a gap. But from, for, for the class that do have spotters, it always surprises me when people are left out to the end when they've got a massive lead. Because if you get a puncture, if something happens, you're, just, you're hanging yourself out to dry, you're much better to have track position with two seconds and be able to defend if something happens. For sure, yeah. Uh, obviously, it all depends on if you're challenging like Johan, you take Joker lap one of course, uh, yeah. or first half lap. Uh, I left Kevin out, you know, uh, have the clean air into the intercooler, you know, you have a car that you get in his dust, uh, whatever, obviously you want clean vision, you want... Obviously we had to work on our pace to beat Joe at the end of the day, so... Uh, yeah, that's, that's been our strategy, you know, being late and obviously being in the Joker, uh, the last guy to be in the Joker, obviously has the inside line for the, for the last corner, so you kind of have an advantage there to, to block the guy coming out of there, but... Uh, yeah, but somehow you... At the end of the day you have to trust your own speed as well. Um, try to build that throughout the heats, and now in the semi final now, when the elbows are up. Well, impressed his stuff from Yulalami, obviously trusting his own speed. The gap's actually gone up according to time. 4.4, yeah, so another second. 3.0 should be enough. Going to come down now. Let's watch and see can get it done. Smoothly, and listen to that, just completely off the throttle. Nice rotation on the way in. These kids are just so good. It is mind-blowing to think how good they might be as they move up through the categories. Not Come as big down. a gap as I expected. No, I'll do it a bit more, but they may be chilled a little bit through it. But either way, going to take the flag and take the win. Your Lalami goes through, and it's Christensen that goes through with. So Christensen, the only driver to come from row two and make it through to... This, uh, the final later on today, junior cross car final still will come. Oliver, just before you go, what is the delta roughly in in lights? Do we think? What are, you, what are you guys looking at? And supercar for, from your point of view? Lights around three to three and a half seconds. Yeah. Supercar three and a half to four. Sort of really? Yeah. Right. Okay. Quite a big one. Why? Why the difference between supercar and lights? Is it, is it just Good question? Okay. <laughs> at least um, he's honest. <laughs> yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, supercar has the acceleration uh, out of that hairpin, uh, yeah. going straight over the crest. Yeah. You can use the speed more. I like to use the momentum, and it kind of, uh, kind of 
uh, equals it out between the two lines. Uh, I think the Super Guy is more of a gain, you know, go normal. There you go. There's your answer. What do you think about that? It's, it's funny how often the lights are, are quicker than a supercar through the Joker for that reason, isn't it? It's because the, it's the supercar gains so much on the, on the normal track, where yeah. it, it's not about how you get through the Joker, it's about the main The, 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 the main difference lines. between the two. The because difference. you would expect the supercar just to be faster everywhere, wouldn't you? But that's not always the case. Yeah, no. And obviously, the, the it's newly put gravel in the Joker, so it's really loose. So for the supercar guys, you know, they can't put the power down. Yeah. yeah. Just spin the wheels and the supercar can use it more for a super light. Right, we're going to move on to uh, cross car. I'm guessing you're going to need to head back, aren't you, and have a look at your... How many lights cars are you running? Three, did you say? Three, yeah. Okay, cool. And, and Torwell this weekend. Oh, of course, yeah. yeah, Derek. How's he getting on? Yeah, he's figuring it out, you know. He has a supercar in engine in a rear wheel drive, so... It is yeah. pretty hard work. It's pretty hard work. <laughs> <laughs> but it's awesome. We love it. So Pentonum versus Hukar on the front row. Hukar gets a little bit of a wheelie off the line, going to try and shut the door on Pentonum up in turn one. Gives him a full car width, doesn't actually need it. And it is Hukar who leads from Penton and down into the first corner. Brilliant stuff from those two. Oliver, thank you so much, mate. And uh, go on, what, you got something to say before you go? Ah, I just saw a bit of a contact there, but they all got through fine, so... Yeah, there you go, see. We'll make a commentator out of him, yeah. mate. Thank you so much. Good luck for the rest of the day. Thank Cheers you. for joining us. So thank you very much indeed uh, for Oliver Erickson coming up. And... Uh, joining us here. Nice to get a bit of insight from us. So he's super busy and literally he's come the whole way out the paddock rest to spend a bit of time with me and Hal in commentary, which is, uh, which is great of him. Hukar leading. Pentonen coming under pressure from behind. A lot of pressure, in fact. So Pentonen really feeling it, and that's giving Hukar just a little bit of room. Hal, you're right about that braking zone at the end of the straight. I think it's the cleanest we've seen it all day. Oh, just touched the uh, barrier there on the inside, Baldins, and it just dragged the uh, cross car in. Oh, Hukar's got a problem, broken front right suspension. Oh, no, Zarika Hukar with the front right broken. Baldins has gone in the joke of two. How long can he hold on to it? Penton has been... Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, it's been how both holding our breath. Riku Hukar from the lead. The, oh, that is just an absolute shocker. He was fourth in qualifying. He was leading this semi-final, looking to make it through to the final. But with that broken steer now, he, he's going to need a miracle, Hal. He's not out of it just yet, but he's going to need a miracle to hold on, I think. The massive gainer there is uh, Hoom, who managed to get past Pentonen while they were both passing the stricken Hukar. Penton and Jokers this time around, what's the gap back on? Oh, they've got five seconds back to uh, Rasmus Personal. They did last time around. Yes. There is Person yeah. in the background. Great strategy there from Penton and Spotter to get him in and out. Don't give Rasmus Person, who we know is rapid as well, the time to catch back up. Bowdins has popped up as a DNF. We know who cars dropping down the order. It's hemorrhaging time. Oh, gutted for him. But yeah, whom? So the 163 coming through that last oh, look at the amount barrier of tough. track. Oh, really nuts on the bollards. Yeah, by one, we haven't seen any penalties for no. that so far. True. Well, are we going to see one this time? And what would the. Well, we'll see. Through the dust, staying out. So staying out. What's the gap back? It was 3.7. We know about 3.0 was enough. How was it in these cars earlier? Yeah, but it was close, it was, wasn't it, it was last, close last time around? So. Uh, of course, these cars do. Have, these drivers do have spotters, unlike the cross car juniors. There is Person who isn't really closing any more on Pentonen than uh, the gap was after Pentonen jokered. And the gap's gone up to the lead. So Hume, Alexander Hume from Norway has managed to extend a lead by another half second over the thin passy Pentonen. The Casmat leading from the speed car Wanda. I like the look of the catch, man, I have to say. Difficult call for the spotter now, isn't it? I think Send stay out again. <laughs> Don't be doing it, you were right. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> oh, it's a white joker. Has he got enough time? Four and a half should be enough. This is a brilliant drive by Hume. So from row two, Alexander Hume leading. And remember, he was third on the all bit of blue smoke out the back. I hope yeah, that's saw a bit that. of oil. But uh, yeah, third out of the. Uh, First lap when Hukar was leading. Hukar has now stopped as well, so a shame for him. Look at the dust, that's exactly what Oliver was talking about, the shoveling of the sand out in that corner. Supercar is like a shovel. So Pentonen is not in the clear here because Person is right behind. He's got enough. Uh, yeah, he's only a couple of corners to go, I suppose. He'd have to have been closer to have a little dive. That sand there is going to be interesting, though, for the next semi-final, isn't it? All around turn two. I don't imagine they're going to have time to sweep that off. Him going to take the chequer flag here. Norwegian goes through. 
to the final. Pentonen through as well. So Pentonen from the pole. The top qualifier has made it. But with P2 in this one, I can't remember how the rows work, how when there's three cars. I know it comes back to your qualifying position, doesn't what, it? What do you mean? Where well, you get three winners of semi-finals, there's only two cars in the front row, and I can't remember where they, how it works. I think it, it counts back to your qualifying position. Yeah, yeah. so the home will need to hope that people lower than, than third in the intermediate will uh, win the next semi-finals. Yes. Otherwise, it's, let's assume that Eek Merstad and Hamrickfist both win their semis. Then, then Hume would go back to row two, yeah, wouldn't he? On row two, yeah, yeah, which would potentially with that, no, that leave Penton, Penton on row two as well, wouldn't it? Because he was the top qualifier. So even with a P2, in theory, he'd stay row two. Yes, he would be, yeah. he'd be, he would be fourth on the grid, yeah. He, he can't be on the front row. Penton can't be on the front row. No, but he, yeah, but he could drop back another. Oh, it's a disappointment. He could end up dropping back another or potentially staying on row two. Oof. Alexander Hume, 401.4, and Passy Penton and go through person that misses out by 1.5 seconds. Jorgensen, a couple of seconds further back. It is so close. Riku Hukar was leading, don't forget, when that front suspension broke, and Ronald's bowed into P6. DNF for those last two cars. Okay, excuse us, laying back just for a few moments. Thomas E. Merstad, Sebastian Enholm, Elias Sun, Anderson, Ugar and Cerner at the back. We want to be watching the front row for Merstad and Enholm. Enholm's got a rocket of a start, and he knows it because he's going to put the squeeze on. Surely he doesn't. E. Merstad comes in and taps the barrier on the inside, runs wide out front. What's going on? Enholm, I think, is going to get on the inside. We've got two cars hooked up. It is indeed, uh, it's Enholm who's managed to get through. Eek Merstad, looked like he got the whole shot, Howard, just clattered the barrier on the inside and it ran him wide. Bit of chaos, uh, but the cars dropping back in the background has really opened up the Joker strategy, hasn't it? So Eek Merstad can get the hammer down behind Enholm. Joker really have some clear air and try and close the gap. Look at the cars bouncing coming down now. The loose is really cutting up in that first part of the loose. You can almost see the crest there under the bridge. It's not quite as exaggerated as it is in real life, but uh, these cars moving around a lot as the track evolves through the course of the day. So what's the call here for Eek Merstad? With a gap like this, back to you say, could go. Joker. Do you think go straight yeah, in? I would Joker. Well, obviously, that's what's happening. <laughs> yes. I would Joker because... You have Do you sometimes wonder if we're controlling the race from commentary? You know what I mean? No, surely he can't not win now. Boom, off comes a wheel. You know, you have to wonder, that is it some sort of either godlike power? No, no, to be fair, you've got uh, the third-place driver there. Turner. 
Turner's come from the back of the grid. Yeah, and doesn't really have the ultimate pace, so I was wrong. Don't joke her. We didn't have the splits at that stage. So uh, Turner's dropping off the back of this leading pair, and they've got another few laps in this race. So go with Enholm, because you know that Sebastian's a very safe pair of hands. And see, Turner's enough off the back, and now Mercer's going to joke her. And should lose this position, shouldn't he? Should lose yeah, it. Yeah, but you does. know, you've jokered now when Turner's dropped more off the back of the leading pair. You joke her first, so you had more of a gap to catch. Do you see what I mean? Well, you think you should the slow driver's behind you, right? Yeah. You qualified lower. Yeah, qualified at the back of that. So you've left it longer to let them get further behind and then joke it into them. In my opinion, you better just joke it early. Well, who am I to say? I'd know it. No, no, no you idea what you're talking about. Across. That's the job, isn't it? We have to have a crack at it. We're not always right. But, but yeah. I think you joke earlier to be further behind them to get more clear air, because now you risk catching up quicker. And then he probably won't. And he is going to cover off. So they're both theoretically going to lose track position, but that ultimately won't matter. I think Enholm might have enough. Oh, just look. That was a risk. Just, that was as risky as hell, wasn't see it? Now, see, now Mercer has lost it badly. So I, I think, Hal, I might potentially have waited another lap, to be honest. You either go, you either go, go early, early or early. go late. Yeah, early or late. They, it was kind of medium, yeah. wasn't it? Either go straight away, and as you say, then you've got two, three laps, and you hope. The other thing is, if you go, they may oh, respond. Oh, what a move oh. from Mercer. Got the rotation done nice and early, sunk it up the inside. That's exactly what he needed to do, but I think it's too late. Yeah, it probably is. Still going to see him through, you know. You'd of course, but he was going to get track yeah. position anyway. You are going to have a look up the inside and Cerner on the end of the straight. Cerner might go joking now and doesn't, which will be frustrating for Yuga, but not close enough anyway. Another lap to go. That was, that was, that that was the, brave. The Sorry, Andrew. That, no, that, right. that was brave of Yuga because you go up the inside there. Anyone who's played uh, low air on dirt, you know, if you go up the inside of someone who's still to Joker, they're just going to slap into the side of you and take them into the Joker as well. So, at the end, yeah. so there, you know, he's, the, the driver he's passing had two laps left to take a Joker. Of course, you don't necessarily know whether they've taken their Joker or not, and you want to overtake it every opportunity, but it's still always a risk there. So Merstead's closing the gap, Hal. It was yeah, the fastest lap of the race on a 48. A 41.884. That's only 2,000 quicker. Look. Oh, no, that's than the best lap last lap. Yeah, it was 0.2, wasn't it? Well, and then the got a again. problem here because he's closed massively. A couple of corners to go. So, Ike Merstad, can he get anywhere in this last couple of corners? Is Enholm just managing it? Either way, they're both going to go through. So, Sebastian Enholm, the speed car wonder, and Thomas Ike Merstad in the speed car wonder going through to the final. So, that actually helps out Passy Pentonen because, again, it's Enholm as the lower of the qualifiers in that race that took the race win, just like with Pentonen. Well, take oh, Moustad was lucky not to rip the front left corner off there. That was a big impact in the wall, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, just and look at that. That, that hook-up so frustrating because your whole day, you know, that you're sitting there going, no, 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 Bit no. David Attenborough going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Very good, mate. Thought that maybe there was an issue at the end of the race when uh, Ike Merstad was closing down on... He might have just chilled Enholm. out a bit. Yeah, exactly. Enholm could have been managing it. Certainly wasn't managing it at this point. Enholm was <laughs> risking it all that to get out of front. It? Yeah, it was. Turner, not as quick as those other guys, but could have caused them problems all the same. That was a great move for Merstad at the bottom of the hill there to get up the inside and not lose out too much. Okay. And Holman eat Merstad book their spots in the final. Look how aggressive those curbs are in the background behind the graphic. Great, isn't it? We've seen one puncture on those already today. Hedgecombe earlier on today got a puncture mm. on the second to last corner. Might even have been on that curb actually. I think it was. There's one piece of the curb that just looks a bit bigger. Somebody got a bit more enthusiastic with the uh, with the concrete. I think if Hammerquist wins this, he'll take he'll start on pole for the final because he qualified we'll be the third. highest of the qualifiers to win. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Bit, bit out of practice. It's all good, mate. OK, grid for this last semi-final. Algot Hammerqvist, Jimmy Osterberg on row one. Row two is Rasmus Brunkvist and Elias Svensson. Row three is Eric Nilsson and Kim Lorentzen. Now, Osterberg and Hammerqvist, obviously Hammerqvist has been super quick all day. Uh, was uh, fifth, second and fourth in the sessions. Osterberg fourth, sixth and fifth. Watch out for Elias Svensson, definitely, because uh, Svensson, on the outside of row two, oh, he's got a problem. He's got a problem. He's waved at the marshal. So is Svensson out?
OK, re maybe restarting the engine. So he's still looking across at them. I'm not sure if he just knows that he's not going to go anywhere. Watch Spencer on row two. And I think, has he just had a little restart on the engine or has he got a problem and he's out? He hasn't got a problem. Gets away brilliantly. Spencer from row two trying to come around the outside of the row one drivers. Not going to get there. Gets a little touch. Now going to try and touch to the inside line. Hammerquist has got the whole shot. Spencer caught in between three cars in the back. Looks to the inside line. Bit of contact there from the P4 and the P2. Spencer going to go joker straight away, but it's Hammerquist leading. Hammerquist made such a good start there that he was able to come out and take the ideal line, not be tucked on the inside. Oliver Erickson told us, didn't he, during the junior cross car semis that you don't really want to be on pole here because you get squeezed to the inside and you can't carry the momentum. But that's exactly what you want to do, isn't it? Make the best start and move out to the middle of the circuit to take the ideal line. I'm loving the livery, Hal. I, I, I was wearing my sunners earlier, looked at the cars, of course, that's bright. Wearing my, wear my sunglasses, looked at the cars, and that's bright. Is it as bright? You see, you know, sometimes it looks different. I took my sunglasses off. No, it's really bright. It's great. It's like a fluoro orange colour, the whole car. Hammerquist, to say, has been right up there and amongst it. Swedish driver, speed car extreme again. Listen to that noise. It's just brilliant. Which one would you have? I don't know. I don't know, there was a year where I thought it was the edge, definitely, because I didn't think the speed car was quite there. Oh, is this a move? Brunqvist coming under pressure from Osterberg. Osterberg in the background, there's a fight going on with P2. There it is. Osterberg puts a wheel on the dirt, trying to find a way through. Might have compromised his exit. But remember, the top two go through. Lorenzen has got Joker, but he's out of touch, so... It's and definitely about these these front three for me, but Osterberg versus... Uh, this is the fight, isn't it? Because Fenton's yeah. dropped off the back of them a little bit as well. Osterberg's so good on the brakes. Good joker this time around. So Osterberg goes in, listen to that. Three gears as he drops over the crest. Going to come out though a bit higher. Oh, Svensson's got two jokers, Hal, so that's why he was... So he must have he must have rolled forward then. They didn't show him the double joker board, did they? Yeah, I didn't see him move, but... Well, must have done. Yeah, so they're showing two jokers for Spencer, so that's going to knock him out of contention, unfortunately. That's the graphic top left. You can see a little X2 in the bottom corner. So how far back is Osberg? 5.8 to 2.3. What's that? Two point. It's enough, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be tight, though, isn't it? Osterberg absolutely flying. You're looking at him now in fourth. He's the fourth place car here. Watch, does the P2 car go Joker? It does. So this merge here is for, I think, for, yeah, it is for P2. So watch it for Osterberg coming on the standard lap. And he's nicked it. So Osterberg's got through. He did have enough in hand, didn't he? There was a great push there to uh, get track position. Oh, something doesn't sound right to me there. We're just picking yeah. up some sound on the uh, trackside microphone. Misfire somewhere, isn't there? But Oli Eriksson was absolutely right, wasn't he? That you want a joker late because it gives you track position for the left-hander. It'd be very difficult to... Uh, OK, the, the, the theory in a rallycross track is that the joker has to give way to the standard lap. But when the joker brings you out on the racing line, it's very, oh, yeah, very difficult to do that. Yeah, you'd never give it up, would you? you, know, you yes. So, uh, yeah, you could argue that one all night long, couldn't you? Look, looking out the side window, lost track position now to Elias Svensson, who... Same two jokers, but hasn't jokered once. Yeah, something, I'm still something like, awry there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there's something strange, because if Svensson hadn't jokered, you would joker, wouldn't you? You're, you're going to have a go at it, so... And now we've the got the chicken flag graphic. Oh, that's showing it's lap five. Yeah, is there, but what I'm thinking, Hal, is has, has our graphic been triggered accidentally? You know, has the jump start lever fallen down? Is that why he called the marshal over to make him stand it up? We didn't see the right. double joker yeah, board. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, see what you mean. Could, could Spenson be going through here? If that's the case, then we're sorry. You know, these things happen in terms of... No, he hasn't gone again. So Spenson not joking at all? No, I'm no, very, very confused. Has. And now it's saying he has the joker early. Right, we have no idea what's going on there, I'm afraid. Crosses the line. Has Svensson taken the win from row two? Or is it Hammerquist and Osterberg? Where is Osterberg? He did cross the line, yeah. Very confusing, I'm afraid. Uh, with Svensson stopping at the start and then looking at the restart. We've got no information on our timing screen, and that's... Well, uh, well I think Svensson must joker on the first lap. So he makes an well, epic start around the yeah. outside. So Svensson's the white car with the orange roof on the round going around the outside of the blue car, which is Jimmy Osterberg. Now he, he's going to come he back did. to the inside. Because I said he did, I'm sure. Because he goes from the inside line here straight to the Joker. Yeah, they all had a bit of a bun fight in turn two. Yeah, and he's left with no option to yeah, Right, to so he's inside. gone once. So in that Fair play to Osterberg. He lost so much time there on the exit of two on lap one. 
So we were just... Uh... Well, the fact they were t there was a two times joker, but also the fact he called the marshal over, that's what was so confusing, is he called the marshal over But also the, the joker start. indicator wasn't... No, it was saying two, so... Because he jokered on one. Yeah, but he... Okay, so he'd done one, but it was still saying he yeah, had two he jokered to go. on lap half. Yeah. So, so maybe that's why it w I don't know. Yeah, we haven't had a graphic problem like that all day, so... Well, apologies, everyone. Whatever. That's the way it goes sometimes. Svensson has taken it from row two. Shame for us to work, though. We have no idea who's going to be on pole, because none of the pole people from the semis have won. They've all come in in P2. Osterberg, that is a shame for... Enholm will be on pole. OK, so uh, we've got Svensson and Hammer have gone through. We're going straight to Supercar, so they've changed the order for... Uh, our semi-finals. So you've got Christopherson and Kevin Erickson on row number one. Backward and Franks, Christensen and Vaby. This for me is definitely the tougher of the semi-finals, but potentially the cleaner as well. Semi-final number one, changing order. That's just uh, a late call from race control. So Christopherson versus Erickson on the front row. Can Backward get there as well off the start? Good start by Baby. Can he get around the outside of the RX2 e machine? He can. Immediately, Franks gets dumped down, and Ericsson that just gives up, slots in into P2. Is this how just a call, just a play to make it to the final? They've all gone very sensible there straight away. I thought we, I mean, Baby's the one, isn't he, who's got something to try for, but he can't go Joker yet because those two cars behind him are slower. Incredible experience in this field, isn't there? Both from the drivers on track and the teams and spotters that are running them. Interesting there that Kevin Ericsson chose not to Joker on that one, like Christopherson has been all day, but. But look at the gap cars. they've already got yeah. through the two at the back, and you can't afford to fall into that traffic. That's what I'm saying off the start. You can't do it. And Baby, I thought, might go for P4, but he can't. He just can't end up being behind those guys. Now, they were about 1.5 up on Frank's Hal. Uh, Oliver what Ericsson was saying that the gap was 3 to 3.5. In theory, two laps time would be the opportunity to go if you managed to gap them by three seconds. Could Backward go now in, in, in front of Ericsson? No, he doesn't, because again, he doesn't want it. I think they'll all wait. Backward Where's Baby? So yeah, he stays out as well. They can't do it. No, that's what I mean. They can't go yet. Backward was all over Kevin Ericsson at the bottom of the circuit, and then it looked like he lost out somehow going over the first of the two jumps and then down to the bottom of the hill. I wonder if he just lifted out the throttle to give himself a better view of what was going on next time around. But he said to us earlier, didn't he, that he was on the limiter and couldn't work out where the pace was coming from the other cars over the top of the hill there. Yeah, he did. It's been a while since he's uh, been in an IC car competitively, isn't he? He's had a test in Hungary recently, hasn't he? Yeah, he was testing uh, in Hungary ahead of the European Championship round next weekend. A few weeks ago, now he's Backward gone. Backward's gone Joker, so he may lose a position to Baby here. Baby has decided not to go. That doesn't really matter. Remember the top three going through for this. Crucially, he comes out in front of Franks, and I wasn't sure he had enough of a gap there, but he does. So Backward had enough on Franks. We, I was just about to say how they've definitely got enough on Christensen, who I think was the, the bigger worry in terms of pace for these top guys. So the, one of the key battles here now is between Kevin Erickson, who we're looking at at the moment, and Backward. Last time around, of course, we can't look at Backroot's uh, last, last time around because he was in the Joker. Ewan will go again, I'm sure. He's going to stay out. Is Kevin, I think Kevin Erickson's going to... You know, he's quite tight on that curve, but then chose not to Joker. Everyone was going very wide into the Joker earlier on, and now they've really tightened up. I think you lose so much by the loose on the outside that you maybe get a little bit of over-rotation out there. Before as well, Hal, it was loose, wasn't it, across the whole of the road the whole time, and now we've got a clean line. So before yeah, you yeah, can yeah. chuck it in and rotate it where you want, now, there's, there's no, now there is one clean line. See uh, Christophson just reaching up for the handbrake, just at the, the apex of that corner. Is Vaby dropping back? I saw his backward dropping back from Vaby. What was the gap? 1.2 between Vaby and backward at the moment. So Chris Dobson stays out with two laps to go. In the background, who's going Joker? Ericsson stays out as Baby gone in. He hasn't, so Baby stays out as well. This is a classic supercar anti-climax race, isn't it? Where yeah. the pace is so good that they all, they're all just waiting, waiting, waiting. Look at Chris Dobson, he's class. But this is going to be... Three up the road. So backward, so Baby's the, the sitting duck here because Baby's going to catch him looking at those gaps there. It's going to be close between Baccarat and Ericsson. Especially if Ericsson runs wide into the gravel like that. OK, so it's all going to come down to the Joker lap merge, is what it's going to come down to. Christophson going to go into the Joker lap now. He drops in. Now, wait behind. What we want to see is Ericsson versus Backward at the merge. So here goes Christophson. Now we're waiting. Now we're waiting. Here comes Ericsson on the outside line. Watch for Backward in the background versus Ericsson. Ericsson holds on. Andreas Backward slots into P3. 
It's Christopherson who wins from Kevin Eriksson and Andreas Backer, and they all go through to the final, and Baby just misses out. And good job there from uh, Stefan Christensen to just better Victor Ranks right at the end of the race. So this was the start, and it was terribly sensible. And Ericsson, look, can't go that massive round the outside move. If he got a better start, Hal, I think he'd have gone for it again. But he didn't get a good enough start, so he just slots in line of turn. Backward does the same. They all cover off the braking zone, and at this point, they're like, right, none of us can go because the two cars at the back are too slow. It's kind of, as you say, it's like, come on, lads, <laughs> send it. It's very different being five wide to being in the staggered grid, isn't it? You can't afford to do that, Sen, because you've got a whole queue of people waiting to come up the inside of you. But when you're five wide, you've all got the same opportunity in the first corner. So that does affect you in uh, in turn one, although that didn't worry Kevin Erickson in <laughs> Estering 2016, did it? So what row was he on there? Row two was the outside, two, yeah, 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 P4, and still got out in P1. <laughs> different corner, different tactics, but I think the other thing is, Hal, you might go for it in the final. You know, you might just go sod well, it up. At this stage, you've still got to get there, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. This is, it, the semi-finals can be either an absolute bun fight, because you know you've got to make it, or they can be a bit like that one was. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit sensible, wasn't it? So I think Lars Eric Haug had a big problem. We don't know what that is. We've seen people rushing around with boxes with engines in. I wonder if Tornholt blew an engine in Q3 in lights. You're talking about lights here, aren't so you? So I yeah, just yeah. wonder if that's why we've lost the light semis. Ah, you mean not enough cars. Yeah, rather they... than them moving around, I think we might have lost the light semi-final. Hopefully Got you. someone can let us know that. Yeah, that'd be handy. <laughs> okay. In case you didn't notice, we get about six minutes in between sessions and we have no contact with the else. We're basically standing in an easy up tent on the side of a mountain. That's, that's a massive exaggeration. It's a small hill. Uh, but, you know, that's what we deal with, isn't it? Massive exaggerations. You're a massive exaggeration. Yeah. I noticed, uh, is that Victor Frank? Who, who's, who's put the uh, the huge tarpaulin over the back of the yeah, bus? Yeah, Franks, yeah. Yeah, so basically they've realised they're going to get all the windows smashed on the motorhome. Like Estering. Yeah. OK, semi-final two. Hedstrom versus Bolevsky. Fireworks up front. Linneman on row two. With Maiko Tam, Schnack and Ward at the back. It's a great start by Bolevsky, but Hedstrom's equal to it on the inside line. Hedstrom goes late on the brakes. Bolevsky slots in, and Linneman just like semi final number one. They all know what they've got to do to try and get through. Linneman pops out wide, going to try and come around the outside of Bolevsky. That could work into turn two. Linneman trying to make up a place here, and a problem for Hedstrom makes a mistake. Oh, Bolevsky manages to slot through the gap. Linneman rides up the side of Hedstrom. He goes across the gravel. Both cars into the gravel now. Hedstrom comes out in P3, maybe going to drop to P4. Schnack trying to come around the outside. He clips the wall. Hedstrom holds on the third. Third. Lineman is in P2, but he's got a problem now. Hedstrom up the right-hand side of the bridge. Can't get through too much loose stuff. But Levski out in front. That was absolute carnage after turn one was clear. What the hell happened there? Le uh, Hedstrom, sorry, was on an absolute roller coaster, wasn't he? Got all out of shape in the latter part of turn one and then uh, had another moment on the exit of two. Lineman got alongside him, and then they both ended up going through the gravel in four, really, isn't it? Going down the hill. Lineman, I Lineman's think, got a puncture. Right, puncture. Rear yeah, right. right, rear right. The rear right's on Lineman. He's got two, so he's got two punctures. So he drops out of contention by going into the joke lap. Schnack has gone with Hedstrom. Something's wrong with Hedstrom. Definitely something wrong with Hedstrom's high end eye here as well. That's Tam in the background, who hasn't jokered either. Ward has jokered, but it's too far off the back. So really, this is about... Broken cars hanging on to the end of the race. Yeah, Schnack could be... Schnack and Tam could be in the pansy here, but Hedstrom's gapping uh, Schnack a little bit now. I wonder if Hedstrom hasn't actually got an issue and has just got his head down a little bit. So Hedstrom then up into the hairpin. Bolevsky will check the gaps as they come over the start finish line this time round. The contact howl was pretty heavy as they came through this section on the previous lap. I wondered about both Linneman and Hedstrom in terms of damage on the car, alignment, punctures, etc. We've seen Linneman has fallen victim. Is Linneman still circulating? Yeah, he is. But Schnack was so was all over Hedstrom, wasn't he? So I was sure Hedstrom had a problem. Linneman's not that... Oh, he's showing us further back now. He's, dis, he's, he's sliding down the time screen now. He's showing us plus yeah, on lap. Yeah, I can see him out of the comic cross window. He's dragging the Fiesta around it's to the point where he may as well stop now. Yeah, especially with tomorrow still to go. It's a shame for Linneman. I wonder if, they, if uh, with the finals, will there be a separate final for Pro-Am or not? Yes, this there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he could potentially repair the car and get out for the, yeah, the final. Depending on how many Am and Pros there are, I can't remember off the top of my head, but as long as there's only six, he would still make it through. Yeah. Well, yeah, especially as, don't forget, it's um, is, tricky, isn't it? Tam's got a... Uh, 
Seven, oh, four seconds over Schnack. This could be Tam's uh, first Nordic final if he chooses to go into the pro final. Now, I'm pretty sure the pro and the am finals will be split. You can choose to go into the pro, -am pro final as an am, should you wish to. What happens with your points next to the well, I think they run next to each other in the running order, so I think you have to then make a decision. I think you have to choose which final you go into. Right, and then how do you score the points? We don't know, do we? Let's <laughs> You see what I mean? If you if you P5 in the AM final, well then uh, what happens to the AM guys who were P1, 2, 3? Tricky, isn't it? I know I'd be an AM. Yeah, I'd, would you go in the AM final there if you had the chance to race the top guy? I just know I'd be I'd, an AM, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I know I would be too, but if someone said to me, look, you know, you might score more points to go in the AM final, but I'd, I'd, I'd go up against Christophson just for the experience. And for these guys, the chance to race at that level in a final would be epic. Of you know course, you're yeah, yeah. to you, but... So we're on the final lap, Belevski going to go joking this time. His gap over Hedgeman Massive. was huge, so he should easily come out in front. Yuri Belevski has had a pretty much a free run here. Little nip on the handbrake, maybe to get it turned in, maybe not even needing that. On the gas, over the line, Belevski books a slot in the final. Through comes Hedstrom, that car's going to need a good look over, but who in the background has got it? Is it Schnack? No, it's Tam. So Tam comes through, Schnack, oh, Schnack almost in the wall. Ran the car all the way out to the barriers, but it is Tam who is in the top three. A little confusion as we say over who's in Pro-Am and uh, we in fact the only two cars in Pro are Belevsky and Hedstrom in this uh, in this race. Everybody else is in the Am category, so we'll figure that out. Well, when we see the grids, we'll know, won't we? Belevsky, Hedstrom ticking off my little list. This was the start. Okay, so look, everything here, I'm going, of course, pretty sensible. Then Linneman gets outside Belevsky. Uh, uh, so, gets so into Hedstrom and almost turns him around. Why Hedstrom did Hedstrom should have just kicked the foot in and gone into the Joker? Is he easy to save that? Oh, oh, woof. Does he get the puncture there? Yeah, one, two. Bosh, you think bosh. he's done both of them? Yeah. Look, look at this in the background. Here comes Linneman. So what does he do? He comes, it's the real, it's rear left on rear right, isn't it? Now he fires it in, look. There goes an inner wheel arch liner. Is that the first front right come off already? Yeah. No, it's still on at that point. The rear left, the rear right's come off already. Oh, snap with a little tap on the wall. They're both both off. There. Yeah, they're both off by the time he comes off. But I don't know that the front one was off in that first contact. And that's more like a semi was <laughs> The race wasn't great, was it? Because the gaps were too big. But that's kind of what we expect at the at the start. So, Belevsky, Hedstrom, and Tam are the top three. But as I say, with two categories of pro and pram, we'll figure out the grids when the drivers decide where they want to be. Unless we go down to just one final because of the car counts. You have to forgive us. We're not in race control. There you go. <laughs> That's right, Hal. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So we've had cross car, junior and cross car. We're on to... Okay, uh, so we do have a lights semi. I wonder if they've given the guys more time here, if they needed it or something. Absolutely no idea. Um, Supercar lights, Olofsson, Steinsholt, Janssen, Exmouth. Just the four cars in this one. Yeah, either Tornholt missing Hal, and so is Lars Eric Haug. So they never got Lars Eric Haug's car repaired anyway. Oh, Casper Janssen gets squeezed into the barriers on the inside. He properly clattered the armco there. So Janssen's at the back of this pack. Go Joker, go Joker. This there should be pretty competitive for the uh, final place in the final, shouldn't it? Because uh, well, they're, they're all quick. Expert and Janssen have both got Where's that potential. Janssen's got a problem. Oh, so it's not, the so I've just ruined it, haven't I? Because there's going to be no battle at all. Oh dear. Where is Casper Janssen? We're going to look out of the window, which we're not supposed to do. He oh, did, always oh, crashed in the Joker. Yeah, so Janssen's parked it in the wall in the Joker lap. We can see from where we are, he's offline. You can see the time marks there, actually, Andrew, looking out of yeah, the window. Yeah, it's weird the way he turned in. He was late on the turn in, almost like he was struggling. So Maybe I the wonder if broken. broken already. Yeah. He got slapped into the wall, didn't he? He's, he's, he's you've seen that in hard. lights a few times where... Uh, the wheels are still pointing straight, but there's been a, an issue there. In the background, on the left-hand side, you can see from the drone there, Casper Janssen's car is in the um, in the Joker lap. Oh dear. Well, who do you think is going to go through, Hal? My money's on Olufsen, Steinsholt and Exworth. You're not winning anything for that. <laughs> still your right. <laughs> it is my round, I know. I'm not going out tonight, actually, mate. I'm uh, having an early night. Coin rich. 
Uh, Olofsson's Dinesol Expert. OK, come on then. Can anyone get stuck in for a move here on anybody else? The gaps are small enough. Expert has actually gone joker according to our indicator on He screen. did last time around, but I yeah. think he also doesn't really have the ultimate pace of Olofsson. So whether it's between him and Ola Henry Steinsholt... Yeah, that's what I'm looking at in terms of gaps. Oli Eriksson told us it's three to three and a half. There is Steinsholt. Loads of room there. So now it's all about damage limitation. Sandra Holpin will probably send Simon Olofsson in next time around, just in case you get pick up a puncture, that sort of thing. Got a chance, haven't you, then, to hold it off? But he's 4.2 ahead, three and a half seconds for the joke. He's still going to have the best part of a second. And if 20, uh, 22 Simon's at the wheel this weekend, then I don't think there's going to be anything to stop him in the semi. So really hope you don't break down now, Simon, because I'll feel very responsible yeah. for that. But I'll tell you uh, what, Rich, you're doing well today as well, mate. <laughs> you, it's best you be quiet, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I feel like we've been on it today with the curses. Maybe we've run out. We might run out of curses. I can take um, brown envelopes if people want me to not make them at all over the <laughs> course of tomorrow. Back, just, just plain ignoring everyone because we know it's the okay, curse. Andreas Backwood with a briefcase. Okay, you're going to win tomorrow, mate. <laughs> Right, Olofsson's gap now is 5.0, so I would definitely go now, Hal, with, with two, well, one lap to go for him once he crosses the line. I think he'll go now, as you said. Yeah, and I think case. all of these guys will be sensible knowing that they just need to make it through. Don't forget, Sandra will have been on the radio and said, Jim, watch out the Joker. And Gasper's they, car is on the outside. Is he going to go? He's going to go. They have so yes, much radio does. traffic, Sandra and Oliver. Do they? She talks a lot, yeah. That's, but that's what, you know, his personal preference, and he likes that, so uh, when I've been lucky enough to have a spotter in uh, the supercar races I've done. I've been, I, I've been incredibly fortunate to be... Uh, you had David Mansfield, yeah, one so, of the best in the business, yeah, so absolutely. to be fair. You and know. loads of info is, uh, is good, but some people don't like that at all. You know, I really liked having all of the info all the time. He's on it, Mansfield. He really is. He came to me at Linen after we'd been out in one of our runs and said, what's turn one like? And I'm an, obviously a massive novice, but still I knew that the, the, the light-coloured mud on the way was horribly slippery. He said, brilliant, thanks, mate. Straight off and straight on the radio. All of those little bits of information... And that's you what just the great sponsors are doing. Yeah, they're going around the paddock, aren't they? Just, just get any info on anybody and everybody. But that's why you find Kenneth Hansen and Tommy Christophson just sneaking up to the spotter star a bit early or just watching what's going on because you see... Watch a light race and you'll see how the track's developing, where someone maybe has made a mistake, where they've dragged the loose out. Simon Olofsson under absolutely no pressure at all. Steins being caught a little bit at the end there by XP, but nothing to be worried about. But you learn something every single time you watch, don't you? Like, yeah. we see the track evolve and they want to be doing the same. Yeah. And that's where things like this live broadcast, you see so many people in the paddock watching on their phone, don't you? Because you learn yeah, so they're, much they're from every category. Exactly. You almost want, there it is, that to me, I reckon the steering's broken. Now, watch him how on the way into turn two, yeah? as we call it, turn 1.5, whatever. Watch this here. Watch Janssen on the exit. Hopefully we stay with it. To me, he's wide here. Look at him. Look, 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 look. You see what I mean? He's not turning in. Now he turns to the right, and I reckon I reckon the front... Well, there. Boom. Oh, it's a fair old stop. Here it is yeah, on the other side. Look, here it is. Look, look, look. Yeah, he's gone. Right. It's already yeah. broken. So, Weird that it's towing in on the right. Did he get that much of an impact on that side? Maybe he'd open the wheel up in the wheel yeah, arch who, and then he'd someone the hit contact. Him? Did he get put into the wall on the what, other side? But that's what I mean, is he's opened the wheel up so it's vulnerable, then it's been hit, then he's gone into the wall, so it's actually the wheel that got hit wheel to wheel yeah. rather than the wheel to the that barrier. Ended up in the barrier. Great drive by Olufsen. Yeah. Looking odds on for the win here. Right, is that semi-final? That's semi-finals done, isn't it? Yeah. So Olofsson wins it from Steinsholt and Exmouth. I know, we've got semi-final two still to come for the... That's it, Andrew. Wake up. Wake up. It's been a long day. I'd forgotten how, how many hours we're on for this. It's a lot, isn't it? No, you haven't. Well, actually, I may have mentioned it yesterday. What? <laughs> we, we do, yeah. How was the journey yesterday? Well, I shouldn't have let you navigate and drive. Well, well the <laughs> I was about to say, yeah. <laughs> Hal, Hal was sitting on. Uh, Hal was sitting on the. Basically, we had a, we had my phone, didn't we, for playlist. We played quite a lot of uh, house music on the way in yesterday. Uh, Jody Finney was asking about what the playlist was. Various house music, very loud. It's particularly in traffic jams, wasn't it? Um, I was fine until we stopped for lunch, and then uh, my energy levels really dropped. And Hal was a bit disappointed. He thought I'd used all my good fun energy, and then it kind of came back at the end of the journey. But the, it was the the problem was the first bit. We just went. Neeson Barnen. I said, like, that looks a bit shorter than last time. Mega, off we go. And then we got to a ferry port and there were no ferries. So that may have been why uh, we were 
bit longer than normal. Shouldn't have put my faith in you, should I? But two two drivers, no co-drivers. That's the problem. So if anybody wants to co-drive me and Hal to the next event so we can actually get there on time sensibly, <laughs> it, it, we're open to offers. Um, hope you guys are enjoying it at home. Look at this. Look at this. Just admiring the backdrop again. What a beautiful day. The sun actually comes down into the commentary box at the end of the day. So 18 could, degrees. It's Is it really? Yeah. According to my watch. Oh, look at that, eh? Summer. Got one of those fancy watches. I'm really enjoying having shorts on as well. Got a lovely breeze through yeah, here. Yeah, I've not got shorts with me. That was a bit of a schoolboy error, I'm afraid. There we go. That's how you get back if it's all gone wrong. Bit of a shame for Casper Janssen. Broken front right, and then an, I suspect now a broken front left as well. I wonder if we can see Vigo. Can you see Vigo on any of the track cameras, our drone guy? Can we see him? He's, uh, he's up, up, kind of up the top of the ramp. I don't know, we might be able to find him on one of the cameras. Oh, we're not going to have time because we're going to go racing instead. There's those quad bikes we mentioned earlier and the brilliant marshalling team here who've got everything done so quickly. Semi-final two for Supercar Lights. Front row, Martin Enland on the inside from Isaac Hockfist. Row two, Lucas Anderson and Mats Oskarsson. Row three is Nils Christian Haug. I wonder if this one will be uh, as much of a sure thing as the last one was. Yeah, our shelter's about to blow away. It's, uh, it's luckily it's tied down to the, our hire car. Hopefully that won't blow away as well. It's not a very good hire car though, is it? So well, it's not the best, is it? So it's okay. We won't name any names in case of future sponsorship deals for us, but uh, it wasn't, yeah. It's all right. You're terribly corporate. I know. One eye on it, how you know? You got me on it. What you got? What you got? You got a stat or something? Race control decision. Ooh. Looking on uh, Chronomoto. Yubelevsky, semi finals, document nine. Punish for overtaking at turn two. What is the punishment? Five second penalty. Does it drop him out? Mm, no, but I think Hedstrom will then. Let me find the results. Semi final results. Yeah, that puts him behind Hedstrom. So right. Hedstrom actually won semi final two. Oh, so Bolevsky still goes through. Yeah, but Hedgeson will be on the front row with Christofferson. OK, here we go then. Semi-final two for lights. Enland versus Hockfist on the front row. Anderson on the lights debut on row two. Looking for a good result. Gets an absolutely brilliant start. That's great by Anderson. No point going around the outside. Just stay tight. Keep it on that inside line. Does that. Oh, don't run too wide. You don't want to open the door up. Now goes super defense on the brakes. That's a great start by Anderson. Really good awareness as well to keep the door shut behind. They all go off to the standard lap. I think Mats Oskarsson, who's potentially gone jokey, has in the background. And I reckon... Uh, ah. I think Hope had a misfire, really. I wonder if they've managed to solve that. But that was ideal for Lucas Anderson, isn't it? That those two have uh, just dropped off the back a little bit. Gives him uh, and his spotter an option or two later on. Oh, and he's all over the back now of Isaac Schuchfist. At the bottom of the hill. Enland got very sideways on the exit of turn one, and uh, it's risky there, isn't it? When you get so sideways on the gravel and then it grips up on the tarmac, sometimes it straightens up on you way too quickly. Shukfist now closing on Enland, under braking. Anderson's going to joke her this time around. Has he got enough of a gap? Yeah, I think, I think so. he already has, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit sideways mid joker, but that's a good decision, I reckon. OK, so Anderson holding on to P3, having jokered. How we think, had an issue, don't we? Where's Hauk going to be? And uh, Oscar's gone through, and Hauk's already 7.1 back, having not jokered. So, at the minute, Anderson Hal is going to make the final on his lights debut at age 15. Amazing job. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? And, you know, take nothing away from Mats Oskarsson and... Uh, OK, Nils Christian Hauk's making a uh, debut this weekend as well, but Mats Oskarsson's been on the podium here, a, a capable lights driver, and... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Anderson um, doing a great job. Hopefully be very pleased. Of course, a few laps still to go. Well, a lot of laps still to go. P3 there for Anderson. So, Enler versus Hockfist out front. Shockfist, Hockfist, have we decided? No, we're just going to... We'll, we're going to ask. We will going to... I'll tell you, let us know. Send me a, if you, send me a voice note. Uh, if you're a genuine Swedish person, you can tell us how to correctly say... We don't want to hear from any, any non-genuine Swedish. Yeah, you've got to be... Yeah, I, and I'll get a couple, so don't make stuff up, because we'll know. We'll be able to compare it. Um, yeah, there we go. That braking zone, Hal, is getting really dusty again. Is there a track prep break in the... Uh, in the running order before the finals, or are we going straight through? I think we go straight through. Yeah, we go straight in. Straight into the finals, okay. Yeah. 
Right. And uh, yeah, we've got 25 minutes before the curfew, so time, now. time is of the essence. Now. Okay. Four lap finals then, anyone? Um, Supercar grids have come through. Yeah. As this isn't the most drama filled light race of all time. And it's neither of the them have been really. Pro and Ams together. Okay, fine. So that may be due so to car count. Christopherson Pro, Hedgeton Pro, Kevin Erickson Pro, Belevsky Pro, Backward Pro, Tam, Am. Is, okay, fine. Fair, fair go yeah. for Tam for making the final. Yeah, absolutely. And it's uh, into the Joker lap. Enland. Tidy, keeps it super smooth. Tidy a Joker that we saw just earlier on. Nicely done. From the lead, comes back out in front of Hulk Fist. Anderson, P3. On to the final lap. Look at that. There we are up at the top right, that little uh, black tent you saw just for a split second. Had some interesting conversations today. The uh, Ericsson's going, why didn't you want the trailer? We were like, what about the trailer? If you wanted us in the trailer, I thought you wanted us in a tent. Oh no, somebody else decided we'd go in a tent. Well, fine. So I mean, if, if it was rain and gale force wind, how I think I might want to be inside the trailer. What do you think? My legs are nice and warm, but not too warm, so the temperature... Did the you climate, some motion the legs? Yeah, of course I did. You did? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's such a pro. He's such a pro. I concerned myself with that yesterday. If I had jeans on now, it'd be way too hot. Enlund takes the win. Hockfist comes through in P2, and Anderson gets third. So they go through to Supercar Lights final. George McGinnis has sent me a voice note. George? I can't listen to that while I'm on air. He's not a genuine Swede. I know he's not a Swede. So I'm not having that, yeah. Whatever you sent, George, I'll listen to it later. Um, McGinnis, uh, an NRX Next driver. I'm sure you're familiar. Get yourself back out here, George. What are you doing? Come on. Uh, up into the turn one. It was all a bit sensible, wasn't it? Again, Anderson with good awareness just to keep the door shut on the, the first lap. Shadows are getting long now. It's also worth noting how low is... The sun's not quite low enough really to cause problems yet. Have we got the water tanker coming out into turn one? Just looking from the commentary box. Are you sticking the water on, mate? Me and Hal are watching, intrigued to see what prep they do. There's a lot of, is that the water? Yeah, it is. So they're, they're wetting turn one behind us now. So there is a little bit of trap prep going on, but I can see cars in the grid already, Hal. So I reckon we're going straight through to the final. There is a lot going on. Typical light like semi-final two, Enland, Hockfist, Anderson. Done. My grids have just blown away. Hal Ridge has run after them for me because he's a legend. And he's got it, there it is. Thanks, Hal. <laughs> you saw the work Hal was doing, just so you know, he's literally, He's commentating on live television whilst printing grids of a printer that's on the floor next to us because we're so far away from results we can't get there. Um, I'm going to stick a video on my Instagram story of a minute ago when we got a lift on a quad bike down to the paddock to grab a quick drink before we came back up for the finals in the, uh, I don't know, what was it, 13 minute break? Uh, G L A M O. Uh, the song, Glamorous, you know? Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not great at spelling. Glamorous! <laughs> Ay, ay, ay. Oh, there we go. Oy, 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 oy. So, that will keep turn one interesting. Just gathering up paperwork, folks. You have to excuse us. Uh, no, we're fine. Okay, here is the grid for round one of Cross Car Junior 2023. Michael Uito, the reigning champion, on row number one. Next to him is Lowry Hallinan, who's been on the pace all day long. Of course, uh, Hallinan was P3 in the standings last year. Row two, Uniton Yulalami and Anton Soderholm. And row three, Yoni Terpinen and Victor Christensen. So two out of our three championship front runners up there. Lucas Anderson, of course, is the driver you've just seen making it through into the final of uh, lights for the first time, having stepped straight up from this category, age 15. P1 and P3 from last year's championship on the front row. 
great start by Hallinan. But on the inside, Uito's got a good one as well. Hallinan not going to be able to shut the door here again. They get out in the wet conditions. Hallinan slides out from the outside to the inside line. Uito out and a roll in the background. One of the cross car juniors has gone, not end over end, but kind of spun around. Not sure what to do about that with the car sat there. It didn't go over, I don't think, but it was right up on its end. Hallinan through the left-hander, and uh, Yulalami's got through, so Yulalami's gone through into P2. Uito no, yeah, where's Uito? Not Sorry, in yeah, shot. No, so what's so, going on? I think Uito is one of those cars in the background, right at the back. We haven't seen who's jokered yet on this opening lap, but Hallinan yet again has made some great starts. Oh, Yulalami's up the inside of him to go up the hill tuck onto the curb and get the move done. The Finns fighting hard at the front of this race. So what have I missed at the start? What happened at the start? Was it, is it Uito at the side of the road? I didn't see in the dust, to be honest. No, there's Uito, no. Yeah, there's Uito. Number 30 is Uito. So Uito so is up to third, I think. Yeah, third for Uito. So he must have got caught up in that bundle. I'd really like to see who's jokered on the graphic, if we can. That would be useful. Yeah, it would be massively useful. And yeah, so Uito has right, jokered on that go. one. So the so gap back to Uito is 4.9. That's too much. But he's going to be on a massive charge, just as he was in the semi-final and Q3 earlier on. Do you know what, Hal? I, I might, if I was Hallen and I might go Joker now, but remember these guys haven't got spotters. They're having to make the choices for themselves. They won't necessarily no, know. You do have the advantage here of having a big, long straight. So to you'll have across. an idea yeah. how... And also, when you come through this left hand, you'll be able to have a little bit of a look back up the road. And at the far end, potentially, too. There's a couple of places. Hallen and doesn't go. So watch the gap then between Uito and Hallen. Uito's setting purples, 44-7 last time around. So that gap coming down, it's now down to 4.3, is it? We're waiting for them to, yeah, yeah, four point. He's going to cross the line now. Well, 5.0 to the leader, sorry, 3.8, yeah. right, to, to Hallinan. Hallinan, the reason I got confused there is Hallinan's dropped off significantly. He's lost another half a second off the back of Yudalami last time around. Hallinan needs to joker. Terpinen is with Uito as well, Hal. He's only 1.2 back. So if Hallen doesn't joke as soon, he's definitely going to get swallowed up by Uito. Uito, though, wants to be even closer. Uito won't have his eye on Hallen, and Uito's got his eye on the lead. Hallen going to go joker now. This is to try and cover off Uito from behind. We think he'll be close. Hallen coming through. Watch to your right hand side. Whereabouts is Uito, the reigning champion? Does he get there just? Oh, backs the car in. Absolutely beautiful positioning by Uito to just give Hallen enough room but not lose any time on the exit. How oh, that was a fantastic piece of car control. So much racing respect from Hallen as well. It would have been so easy to stay in the throttle that little bit longer and just give uh, Uito a bit of a nudge wide. If you're Yulalami, you've got to go now. If you wait until the final lap, you're going to get eaten up, but Yulalami won't know that, so 4.4. No, I, I don't see... So, so Yulalami did a 44.8, half a second. It's not going to be enough. He's not going to... Uito's not going to gain enough. Yulalami can afford to go again, although he's not going to. So Yulalami goes in now, watching for again the merge with Uito. There's still a lap to go. Look to your right-hand side. Yulalami, has he done enough to hold on? And Uito is there, but not close enough. How rich, bang on the money, mate. Look at those just little inputs. So Yulalami here, coming from row three, uh, sorry, P3 on the grid, row two. Uito, is Uito going to try and make some kind of a last gasp move? Look at this up the straight. Uito closing down right into the slipstream of Yulalami. Michael Uito, last year's champion. Oh, now trying to find a way around the outside. Look into the inside again. Uito, the P1 drive from last year, is literally into the back of Unit and Yulalami. Yulalami going to go defensive. Uito looks to the inside line. It's going to be slippery down here. Can he find a way through or not? Right up in, runs it over the curb. Yulalami's going to hold on, though. Two corners to go. Absolutely fantastic racing from these youngsters. Around the right and around the left. The checkered flag is going to come out. Yulalami's going to take the win from P3 on the grid. The reigning champion, Uito, takes P2. Fantastic, and Hallinan with third place. What a great race. Yulalami, deserving winner there. Obviously, a bit of carnage, which we need to take a look back at. We were looking at the car that was crashing in the background. We didn't see what happened in turn one and a half, but a great win for Yulalami from third on the grid. Here it is. Let's have a look back at the first corner then. So not a great start from the trio at the back of the grid. There's Hallinan sending it round the outside. What happens here behind Yulalami? Yulalami lost a bit of pace and there oh it wasn't a roll was it 
for Christensen, but it sort of it's... turned round on the rear of the car. So Oito, look, he's right out oh. in the dirt. Oito's on the outside, Hal. I reckon Hallinan must have been inside him in turn one and mugged him off, and then he's ducked into the joker. Hallinan had already got around the outside, hadn't he, from, yeah. uh, from the start. The best start was made by Hallinan. And then after this, Uita absolutely threw the kitchen sink at trying to get ahead of Yulalami on the final lap. Great merge, great respect from all of the top three in this final. This is the Joker merge with Yulalami. He still had a reasonable margin there, didn't he? But Uito ate it up. You were right, Andrew. He had to Joker because Uito was catching so quickly. Look coming down the hill now. He looks to the right. I thought he was going to faint then to the right to the left, cup, yeah. back to the left. Couldn't quite get it done, but just breaks early enough. These guys are so close. Cuts to the inside, can't quite get the traction in the car. Pitches sideways when he clips the kerb. What a race. Do you know what? If I was looking, I'm serious about this. I think if I was a driver manager, I might be looking at Junior Cross Car and signing some of these kids up on a long-term deal just for a little bit of cash here and there into their project. I reckon they'd take it. You get them on a long-term ticket. Look at the race craft from them. Who knows where they end up? Epic, you know, yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. They could end up in, in you know, extreme but nitro, at, world look rally at the cross. drivers that have They're... stepped up most recently. Yeah. The JC drivers, Lucas Anderson, yeah. Alex Gustafsson, Isaac Rearson now, you know, pulling up trees and rallying. Yeah. Go on, get in. <laughs> awesome, isn't it? What a great race. He's more chilled than you are. Finish. What do you expect? So, in fact, it's a... Uh, what are we... Sit oh, sorry, I just looked up at the screen and saw a different result, but it's a grid, not a result. That's good. So, it was... Uh, Cross-car grid. Was it Yulalami, Yuito and Hallen, and it's an all-finish. Um, one, two, three for the cross car juniors on to cross car wow if it delivers like that last one did final sebastian enholm is on the pole he was the nitro rallycross cross car champion alexander hume up on that front row in the kazmat then it's svensson penton and merstad and hammerquist this is a class lineup Elias Svensson got a little wheelie on the inside of row two, but keeps it on the inside there. And Hume all the way round the outside. Oh, and bins it. Big crash. That's a proper roll. That's Passy Pentonen. Got out in the dirt on the outside line. And pretty, is it? I think, or is it? Yeah, it is. Hume's there as well. It was Pentonen that sent it round the outside, but Hume, Alexander Hume is there too. I'm looking. Oh, there's Marshall's red flag. I'm sure this is going to be a red flag. There's people all over the track. There's still a car upside down. Yeah, yep. it is. There red is flag. the red flag. OK. We will um, wait and see. So, Sebastian Enholm there, driving slowly back round up the hill. He's coming next to our commentary position at the moment. The rescue crews are at the car now, we can see from the commentary position, and obviously our first and foremost concern is that the, the, the driver's OK. I think, Hal, I think it was Pentonen. It was... It was Pentonen sent it round the outside yeah, in turn one. Up, yeah, exactly, that's what I mean, I'm pretty sure. Super sideways from uh, outside of road two. Now people are heading back up to their high vantage points. We've got one of those as well. Cars will return to the grid area, waiting to uh, see what happens next. That's some of the spotters and uh, mechanics down there in the pre-grid area. Number of different places that people can spot from here. How they actually tend to come up towards us, don't they? Up there here is a the scaffolding the tower for spotting from, but not all of the spotters use it. There's a lot to be said for spotting on your own and not being surrounded by your rivals as well. OK, so we're hearing the drivers out of the car, and there you can see. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that, that is Pentonen. Yeah. Well, that's Pentonen's car, at least. We're going to see the replay, so we can take a look at this. So first of all, <laughs> huge respect to Pentonen for a big old send around the outside. Watch this. Pentonen, look, number 77, outside of row two. Svensson on the inside gets the better start, Hal, but look at Penton's come all the way outside, look, and no lifting at all. Pitches it in and is looking. Look, watch this, watch this. Big send. 
No contact There's on just the gas. No look, 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 just, and it's just a bit too dirty, and it goes in and hooks the front. Then does he get collected no, maybe from co behind? I think he got collected by whom? Who was parked at the side of the road? Whom is the one that... But he didn't really one, get six, collected three, by yes, whom. So, that, so I Whom's saw the... Just, there it is in the dust. The yeah, there it is. Oh, there is Passy. Yeah. Glad he's okay. That's as we always say. That is our number one concern. Race cars can be fixed, and that is a massive reason why so many drivers uh, get away with accidents like that. Is the uh, the hands and the hybrid systems are just amazing. I yeah. actually drove a car recently without a hands device on for a couple of laps. No, it makes you feel a bit uncomfortable. Your head feels it? like it's going to like, yeah. fall off. You know, it's. Uh, so, I, I, mate, I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm a person who wears a helmet when I go cycling, I wear a helmet when I go skiing, um, you know, and you see people who don't, and I don't have a problem with that, but if I don't wear it, I feel exposed. And I feel the same way about the, the head and neck safety things. You know, if I'm in a car that's got a four-point harness in it, I'll yeah. wear it. Why, why wouldn't of course, I? Of like, yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't you? There's not risk for... It's like wearing your fireproof overalls, isn't it? You... Yeah. You just, yeah, I've, yeah, totally. Okay, so these are the cars that are on the grid. That's Hume, who is... So Hume, who's on the front row, what's he doing? Taking a look, potentially, at the car, just to see... They're all getting out. ...that there's there. no damage. Are they all getting out? That's uh, Hammerfist, who's got out as well. So Hammerfist is rolling the car back. The thing is, Hume, Hal, if Hume collected Penton and when Penton was in the air, He's gone around the front end of the car to have a quick look at it. I mean, that can be a safety check again, and that's not a bad idea. You know, you want to know if something's... Particularly Especially if you, here. Yes. So there's big, fast, fast high-speed areas. jumps. So if you know... Go on, lads. Um, if you know you've got a, a bent front wishbone, or you know, you can then... Just not push as hard. Yeah, say I'm out, or just be a bit be a bit more cautious. It's, Pentagon's got a lot of work to do before oh, tomorrow. Yeah, that's if the car's OK, mate, if the cage is bent. There are other cars in the paddock, though. Well, yeah. you just rent another one and go for it, yeah, or borrow the parts from somebody. Possibly, yeah. Okay. I mean, these these are all. It's like a single seater circuit car. Yeah. In that they're, Hold on. They're, they're, you know, they you can repair corners if the basic chassis is okay. And unfortunately, that's robbed us of an amazing race, I think, because although it could still be great with the guys at the front, uh, any one of those six could have won that final. Drivers just uh, getting back in. Looks like we'll run this race next. What time is it? Nine minutes to six. Yeah, there there is a there is a slight danger that the local authorities they'll give them a bit of leeway apparently. Say from six p.m. there might be fifteen minutes leeway, but there is a slight danger that they would. How many Danes are in the finals? I don't know. Yeah, good point. On the other hand, of course, the local authorities might not be here today, in which case we might just push our luck. Might be, be the bar at the outside the phone. Yeah, well, that's what I would have, I'd have had them in there the second they arrived this morning <laughs> if they were Come coming. for a drink. And, and just FYI, we are a little bit middle of nowhere -y. You know, there's there are not that many houses <laughs> that we can, as, as I look around, I can see lots of houses. <laughs> it's all good. I'm going to keep my thoughts to myself. We're trying to figure out um, whether or not Hammerkvist is going to get in the car at the back of the grid. But uh, Alexander Hume isn't exactly in yet. No. Who have we got going up there? That's Passy Pentonen. So Pentonen, that's the, is that the medical room? I think it is. Yeah, that's the, med the middle so door there is the medical And of course, you always get checked out. Well, it's yeah, if you've got a big clatter like that, you definitely do. So much more awareness these days, isn't there, with uh, the repercussions of a, an accident like that? So, yeah, so, so much, stuff, so much yeah. better to be. If you look at the the checked. movement in things like rugby and NFL and stuff, in terms of contact on on how it works and, and what's allowed, what, not what's allowed, you know, what happens sometimes, and and then does that person get withdrawn or whatever? Right. Yeah. I wonder if we might roll these cars back. For me, Hal, if we're not sure about restarting them, I might take them back and then chuck it. I would, I would have chucked out lights or trouble is if they're not ready. Well, they are in pre-grid. Yeah, see op that open, open two-wheel drive. You know what I mean? Don't you just send them out straight well, the away? Track's, track's clear, so you just send out a different 
send out a different final now, and then we'll come back to cross car. They're, re, uh, they're racking them. So now they're re-racking. Will they invite reserves? Because Svensson's moved over. Svensson was on the outside. Oh, no, Pentonen was on the outside. Hang on, what was the group? Yeah, Svensson no, Svensson's was three. Through. Yeah, Svensson. So Svensson was in the wrong place? No. Svensson's in the right place. Oh, was in the wrong place, sorry, did you in, say, just now? Yeah, so now yeah. Svensson's been moved back to the correct location. Yeah. That's uh, Merstad now in the correct position. That's Andreas position. Eriksson at the back of the grid talking to Hammerqvist. Hammerqvist is out. And there we go, Andreas is, um, is closing the window and saying that's it. Oh, no, no, he's not. He's saying we need something to clean the window, but we, we don't have time to wait. Go on, Andreas, you clean it. Go on, he's going to clean it. Andreas Eriksson, who's basically in charge of running this series. There it is, bottle of water. From the local, ah, from commentator. The local commentator. Yeah, he's a lovely bloke who's commentating in both Danish and English. Very cool guy. Me and Hal went down there and said hello to him earlier. Go on. So Hammerquist getting in the car now. T-shirt next. He needs you a rag, watch. you wait. Go on. Here he goes. I need a rag. I need a rag. Go on, Andreas. Uh, can I just say as well, that car's nothing to do with Andreas Eriksson, who's just about the most Absol senior bloke in the paddock, if you want to say that. Nothing. It's he's he's going to use the flag. Go on, Andreas. The slippery surface flag at that. Fair go. <laughs> but, but, but that's another thing I love about this sport, Hal. You know, Andreas is down there, so he's pretty much responsible for getting this series running. And he's he down does there. He does not need to be doing that. But it's good, isn't it? No, absolutely. But what I mean is... He doesn't have to. It's nothing it, to do with There would be him. nothing no. against him not to be involved at all. He could just stand back and he's instead he said to uh, Hammerkus, get in the car, mate, get your belts on, I'll deal with this. He's got a bottle of water from race control, he's got a flag from the marshals and he's gone, there you go, send it. Ah, yeah. oh, brilliant. Yes, Andy, I'll tell you what, respect. <laughs> Yeah, you see the local commentator <laughs> showing him out as well. <laughs> Rightly so. Good on you, Andreas. Yeah, brilliant, mate. Fantastic. There you go. OK. Take two. Cross car final. Enholm on the front row with Alexander Hume alongside. Row two is Elias Svensson, Passy Penton, and he's now missing after shunting in turn one with an epic attempt to go around the outside. And then uh, Ike Merstad on the uh, inside of the back row. And Al got Hammerquist on the outside. Hammerquist looked with a lot of real estate in front in terms of you know having a missing car. I'd, I'd fancy Hammerquist for a round the outside attempt. Let's go, come on. That's the deal, isn't it? You get held out behind Ericsson, you've got to send it. But he has really, isn't he? You've got to give it to Kevin's. So the marshal at the front of the grid is looking up to race control and at some point, hopefully, someone's going to give her a thumbs up and we're going to get this show on the road. There, there it is. So the little sort of start your engines thing now, thumbs up to each person, wait for the revs to come up, they'll then look up to the lights. The ready to race light will come on, it'll go off, and then it's a gap to the green. Great start this time by Enholm on the front rows. Absolutely smashed it. Hammerquist look, trying for the outside. Doesn't go too nuts though. Hume trying to go around the outside of Enholm this time. Hume alongside Enholm, but Enholm's got that inside line. Going to get on the brakes nice and early. Oh, Hume's got out of the dirt. Gives up two positions immediately. And then straight into the joker goes Elias Svensson. So off the start, Jokers. Who's gone in with it? Was it Hume? I think Hume went into the joker. Yeah, he did. So after a bad start, Hal slotted out right and then drops in left and goes straight into the joker with it. And that's worked out well for uh, Hammerquist as well, hasn't it? Because clearly the windscreen wipe are not working on his cross cars. So to be in clear air, that's uh, a much better preference. Fantastic progression there from Ingmerstad from the back row of the grid to be in P2 and hassling the race leader. So now it comes down to joker taxes and when you want to go. And again, it need gaps, really. I mean, the sponsors will take a gap for themselves and we'll stop watching the far side of the circuit. Merstad not going. I didn't think he would because they need a bit of space, don't they, to figure out whether or not they've got a gap to go. Interesting that Sebastian's driving his sister uh, Frieda Enholm's car at the moment. I wonder if that's why she's not racing this weekend. Well, I noticed that, Hal, but I wasn't sure whether that was just the bodywork of her car. I actually noticed that in the semi-final. It was FN yeah. on, the, on, the, on the front of the screen, but was she, she didn't race earlier on today. Then No, no she, she hasn't, hasn't. She hasn't been racing. Oh, and Merstad's had a look up the inside. Oh, Enholm had just enough traction. Of course, these cars, both speed car wonders, they will be very, very similar in performance. It's all about the minor setup details. And of course, 
the different driver styles. I saw Frida earlier today watching during free practice, so just assume she was on the entry list. She was down up against the against the Arco. Big Merstad goes Joker. It's a wild one though. Oh, is it going to be enough to come out in front? Going to get out in front of Hammerquist. Hammerquist looks inside. Spenson has also been covered off, and that was the most important thing really. Elias Spenson has been covered off in P4, so Eek Merstad's gone. The gap's only 3.3. Brilliant position here. If you were end hold spotter, this is a tough call because 3.3 isn't enough. But Ink Merstad looked quicker, so I really don't know what I'd do here. No, you really want. You need to hope that Ink Merstad's going to be held up in a battle with Hammer Chris behind, but he's not. He's gapping her own now. The only thing I would say is I felt Ink Merstad. Oh, in the background, Spencer slots up the inside. Hammer Chris chopped on. Holm has stayed out, so what's the gap now back to Merstad? Hammer Chris goes Joker. Too late though. That's going to end up in P5. So. Everybody's joking except the leader Enholm. How's looking at the gaps now? We'll bring it to you as soon as we got it. Three point, uh, two point nine is oh. down by four tenths. So Merstad, in, they maybe should have just sent him. So he's had four tenths of him on that last lap from the back row of the grid as well. Mega, absolutely brilliant. How was this qualifying? I'm looking. Oh yeah, brilliant. Yeah, seventh, third, and second. So Merstad's had the pace, just didn't work out in Q1. And obviously didn't work out in the semis to end up on that back row. Enholm really can't go now. Obviously feels that was a really good lap. Maybe they've got a split from the middle of it. It's a tidier joker. Is he going to be there? No, Eek Merstad's got it. So Eek Merstad comes out in front of Sebastian Enholm, the NRX cross-car champion, ends up P2. And now he's under pressure from Svensson behind. And how after that move from Svensson a minute ago, he looks again, pulls out the roost in the background, trying to look and see is there a way through. This is a championship game as well, though, isn't it, Andrew? So you don't want to risk getting beaten by Svensson as well. So maybe they conceded defeat to Merstad, but knew that Joker then would get them out between the two. Don't risk dropping to third when you could salvage second. Yeah, I wasn't looking at Svensson's lap times. If they're in there as well, and Svensson now close enough to look up the inside. It's a big old send. Elias Svensson comes in deep, stops it, but he gets down the loose, and he loses the place back. Ink Merstad sweeps down the hill through the right and the left-hander, chucks it into the final corner, and Thomas Ink Merstad's going to take the first cross. 23 in Rally X, P2 goes to Enholm, and Svensson with two brilliant passes, one of which paid off, gets P3. Hammerquist comes through for P4, and Hume with P5. Brilliant racing from all of the top three there, just like in the junior cross car final. Fantastic attempt from Svensson to get up the inside, but also great composure from Enholm just to check up and tuck back up the inside. This is the first corner of that restarted final. Watch the red car on the inside at the back, it's still fourth. Going into turn two, Eek Merstad gets up the inside of Svensson. That's uh, Hume running super wide, and then Merstad really laid the pressure onto the back of Enholm. Up the hill, just stuck the nose in, couldn't quite get it done. Oh, had a good old look there as well. Then went into the Joker, carried so much momentum through the corner before the Joker lap. Hammerquist having a look at Merstad at the merge, but just couldn't quite find a way through. This is the first of Svensson's moves up the inside on Hammerquist. Didn't really need to do that because Hammerquist jokered immediately afterwards, and this will be the leader, Enholm, into the joker. Gets a lot of rotation down that bank into the joker section. Watch the brake lights flicking on and off. Just wasn't quite enough. Svensson was close and very close on the lap times as well. Went quicker and ultimate best than Enholm had done, so I think the correct decision to joker then. Absolutely fantastic final. Eek Merstad from the back row taking the win from Sebastian Enholm, who was on the pole, and Elias Svensson. Svensson on the podium after being P22, I think it was, after Q2, at an absolute shocker. Managed to drag himself into the back of the semis, I think it was, wasn't it? And Svensson from there getting up, showing the class, and making his way through to a podium in cross car. Open two-wheel drive up next. No rest for the wicked. Simon Tiger on the front row. Oh, too much wheel spin off the line. Going to lose a position to Kenneth Kong, potentially, but around the outside, last year's champion, Victor Johansson, trying to make it work. Oh, Tiger gets super, sorry, Tiger with a bit of understeer, and up the inside goes Simon Ensvig, who ended the last run up the bank, I think. Great move yeah. there from Simon Ensvig. Kenneth Kong got really sideways long before you would expect someone to on the exit of the first corner. That's Simon Tiger going with Ensvig up front. Norman's gained a couple of places. 
Svensson was right in the middle of that fight as well, but it's just not working out for Victor Hansen today, is it? Tricky start, wasn't it, there? You, you felt like everybody was trying to figure out what the grit levels were, and I have to say, I think uh, Hensvik got it done best of all. Tiger got too much wheel spin off the line. Still in the mix, though. We know how quick this car is. Look, look at this. Watch. See if we can close down on the straight here. It is a weapon. This car is 100 horsepower more than last year. But I tell you what, Hensvik's not slow. Built the braking zone now. Seen the opportunities there to pass out. Awesome job by Hensvik's team to get his car back out, having been uh, halfway out of that bank at the end of Q3. Of course, they've had a bit longer because there were no semi finals for April two wheel drives. They've had a bit longer than the other classes. Now he's under massive pressure from Simon Tiger. Oh, up the inside, onto the straight. What? Oh, he's been surely got a problem, Hal. He must have, or has he just got out in the loose? That was insane. Just poured a wheel up in the air and just stuck it up the inside. The traction from that BMW out of that corner, remarkable. I don't know if he's got a problem or not. He's lost a lot of ground there to Simon Tiger. Doesn't seem to be going super slowly down the straight, but Engsvig, yeah, I mean, he, I didn't, I didn't think there'd be any room there for Simon Tiger at all. Who's jokered? Johansson and Severson have jokered. Johansson's passed Severson on track somewhere because uh, Severson was ahead on the opening lap. I did, Al, I've just looked at the time screen. I love the fact it says Mercedes 190 Evo Hybrid as the, as the make of the car, which is insane, isn't it? DTM vibes. So Simon Tiger leads by 3.8 from Engsvig. Did Engsvig just make a mistake? Just run a bit too wide, give him too much room? Maybe so, yeah, but lost so much ground. Oh, there's Victor Hansen. He stopped, so he had gained a place on uh, Severson. Where was he parked? I was looking at the, the bottom screen. of the hill after the jump on right. the left-hand side. And well out of the way. I, but, uh, I hope so, yeah. That's his race done. Simon Tiger joker. So Tiger's joker from the lead and comes back easily in the lead. That was with a 3.8 gap over Engsvig. So was Engsvig... That it must be another problem, and he's dropped. Engsvig's joker as well. Uh, OK, he's gone in too. Right. And maintain track position from Norman. No, Norman hasn't jokered yet, sorry. So Norman's now second. The graphics are a bit a different time from the time it's going to be. Yeah, Norman's now second. Uh, ahead of Kongs. Ensfix dropped down to fourth. Okay, now it's all updated. Ensfix dropped to fourth. He definitely has got some sort of issue, hasn't he? Because he hasn't got the pace that he's had so far this weekend or on the opening lap of this race. Yeah, definitely something something gone wrong there. Simon Tiger missing uh, the rear three quarter off the right hand side of his car. You can see there as he comes around this next corner, you might see it's completely missing. That's the part of it on today, didn't it? In the yeah. first corner. Oh, yeah, the first corner. Was, uh, was interesting, was it, a couple of times for these guys? And of course, the Tiger team have uh, built Marcus Norman's car, built, built the chassis last year with that uh, Mercedes Benz CLK Wankel, so good for them. You can see that Engsvig yeah, Engsvig. slow in the background. Yeah, Engsvig almost stopping. The ice smoke pouring from the back of Engsvig's car from uh, the commentary position. We can see that. As he's come over the start finish line, he's still holding on to the position now. He's coming up to the end of the back straight. But Simon Tiger who was the champion, not last year, but the year before, 2021, with an utterly dominant season. I think was that the first year of open two-wheel drive? I think it was. And he came and he absolutely smashed it. He's found an extra 100 horsepower. It hasn't all gone his way today, but it's gone his way when it counted. Simon Tiger wins round one of open two-wheel drive for Nordic 2023. Who's going to get P2? Over the line for Kenneth Kong. And it's Marcus Norman who gets P3. Engsvig and Severson, not even sure where they are. They're coming around the last corner now. Around the last corner now from commentary. We can see they're still just hanging on. Engsvig does hold on from Severson. We can see that from here, guys. Simon Tiger opens up the door, look, takes off the wheel, pulls back the net. Kenneth Kong made a brilliant start, started to move over. Victor Hansen made a stunning start as well. Look at Victor Hansen go around the outside. Oh, there's another bit of Simon Tiger's bodywork coming adrift. Ensvig got up the inside, jumped on the throttle and ran a bit wide. Was lucky that there was no one there on the inside to cut back in. Bit of a nudge in the rear there from Simon Tiger. Kenneth Kong's getting forced out wide by Severson. Norman's also a bit of collateral damage in that as well. Johansson gets up the inside. It's all going on in the first couple of corners, wasn't it? And then this is the move. I think something's gone wrong. Yeah, has, he moves yeah, offline, doesn't he? And but look at it pick up the front wheel. It's like, I'm coming past, look out. Just incredible. Absolutely incredible. 
So problem, some sort of tech issue. Really. That was Simon Tiger. Look, just after he got out of the car, we saw him take a little stoked, didn't he? He's back. I am back. That'll mean a lot after I've the difficulties of last year. Definitely. Definitely. So the previous season, it was six wins out of seven events. And then last season, he won the last one at Strangnas. That's the one where uh, Johansson's engine died, wasn't it, in the closing stages? And yes. he drove to the end on the electric On motor. the electric, yeah, brilliant. Love it. So they're all down in Park Ferme, which is where the cars go at the end of the race. So this is our AM final for Supercar. So Linneman on the front row. Shown as ranks alongside, but Franks is at the back. Oh, it's the back row, sorry. Okay, so that's me looking weird the wrong way around. That's very strange, isn't it? Uh, Tam was on the front row from Schnapp. And uh, then row two is Christensen and Ward, and row three is Linneman and Franks. So I'd have my money on the back row here, but it obviously hasn't gone their way during qualifying. Linneman trying to find a way through from the back, but he's completely closed out. He's on the outside now. Look, he's in P4. Him and Franks looking inside now. He passes two cars. So does Victor Franks. We said to watch out for them. Now he's up the inside of Schnack. Oh, now he's in the tyre belt. Move out of the way. Come on, Aubrey, get it going. He's lost places. Franks, late decision to Joker. Maybe not what I would have done. Not aware in the background. Where's Linneman? Is he there? He's... Great decision. Great awareness there from Victor Franks to take the Joker. Wonder if that was a call from his spotter, Guillaume de Ridder, or if he made that decision himself. But he knew some way that Linneman was losing time, and now he's got track position. So can he keep him behind? And uh, can Maiko Tam out front and more to Schnack? Is Tam, am I right, Tam's the Estonian supercar champion? Yeah, he was yeah. driving a Mitsubishi Evo in the Estonian championship. Now he moved up to this Ford Fiesta, run by TT Motorsport. Gapping uh, local driver Schnack on this opening lap. Schnack getting sideways, and then he's going to dive into the Joker. I think that was the best decision from him. He's got that bit of over-rotation. How is this going to play at the Joker merge? Franks is still ahead. There it is. Schnack's going to come out next to him, slots in between Linneman and Franks. This is not working out for Jorik Linneman at all. He's inside Schnack, but not close enough. He didn't need that, Hal, did he? Because now he needs Schnack to be decisive in terms of getting past Victor Franks. So, Franks end of the straight. The fastest lap of the race on a 41-4-0-2. I tell you, if Franks can win the AM final in the RX2E car, that's an absolutely brilliant result. And I hope we might see a few more turn up to later rounds. And he's, oh, oh, he's Tam's got a inside. problem. Tam drops back, so now Victor Franks leads. Schnack goes around the outside. Ulrich Linneman is in the background. He's been, he's in Linneman been passed. There's too much dust in the background to figure it out. Tam has an issue. So Franks now leads. Current lap two. I feel like we've done about nine. So this is a battle for position at the front, isn't it? This is Schnack and Franks, who've both jokered. I'd say Schnack is, is, has more experience in years. I'd say Franks has more experience in uh, racing recently, certainly in this car. Linneman's gone, Hal. Sorry to interrupt. Linneman's gone. He's a DNF. Just spotted it. He's come up. We, I wonder where he'd gone in the background. He was being passed by uh, Christensen yeah. on that last lap. So Linneman's gone. Christensen's also got Tam now as well. Franks is gapping Schnack up front. Wow. So you've seen a lot of Franks. Obviously, I've seen a bit of him last year in, in Nordic, and I was uh, at Lytton Hill a couple of weeks ago seeing him win that semi-final in the supercar category. Uh, he's, he's great kid. He's doing really well. Doing really well, yeah. In the RX2E series last year, the sport class of the World Championship was so competitive. There was so little to choose between the guys at the front. Nils Anderson, who's working here with KMS this weekend. Patrick Donovan, of course, who won a couple of rounds. Really should have been in the title fight, but for a few weekends that didn't go his way. He won the British Rallycross Championship, then dominated again at Lydon a couple of weeks ago. Isaac Schuchfest, who's so fast, you know, such a strong group of young, talented drivers at the moment. And he got it done. And Franks came out on top of it. You know, yeah. as, as a 16-year-old, he's got so much seat time in this car, but he's absolutely making the most of it. Fantastic to have him back in the Rally series. Yeah, very much. Good to see him here. And a nice to see the electric car in the mix as well. I had the pleasure. Look at that, look at that, Hal. It's a mixture of smoke and dust, I think, at times. Something's going. Ooh. Some there's some water down or something because the both had a very yeah. similar problem there coming out of uh, the final corner. We're on the final lap. Could it be fluids from Linneman or someone? If someone Easily, else yeah. has had an issue, is that down in those last couple of corners? And in fact, yeah. So it's wipers on as well for Schnack. Look at the head. You see the head nod there on the landing just coming over. It is absolutely brutal being in these cars. So it's the final lap. Franks is coming through that right-hander. He was on the back row of this supercar and final. And Victor Franks is going to come through the left-hander. And in the RX2E car, 
waits on the top of this, flew it down all the way through that corner. Franks takes the win from Morton Schnack. And Stefan Christensen is the only other car remaining because Tam has moved out as well. But there is definitely fluid down in that last corner. We could see it in there. You can see it now, Hal, in the, the glint from the sun. There's a lot of fluid down through there. From Tam, look, you can yeah. see it's all come out the bottom. Here's Franks. He'll be delighted with that. So just so that was the, the AM final. The reason yes. this has gone before. Well done, Victor. Fantastic job. Is there an appeal? Was there an appeal? What's the delay for? Yeah, brilliant job by Franks. No, they, no, it's because the AM drivers have the opportunity to go into the pro final. Let's watch the first couple of corners because it was a bit mad, wasn't it? What happened to Ward? He, he disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> so part of the problem here is the first corner is so dusty that you only see the front three. This is Lineman up the inside. Had a good old look on. He was never going to make that. He was well, a bit optimistic move on. I liked uh, it. Yeah, yeah, but there's tyres that actually stacked that, pushed him across. Yeah, for me, he's 90% he's inside. Great awareness from Franks to take the Joker when he did. That's what won in the race. Because Going I don't on, know if he would have one. passed Schnack, Schnack if Schnack had had track position. Well, if you see him later, let's find out if he called it himself or if Gear times, called it. Their lap times were their best lap. Schnack did a 40.9 and Franks, who won, did a 40.6. There was little to choose between them. So the interesting thing about the Pro and the AM, so we see I had the, the AM final. Now we've got the lights final in between to give the best of the AM drivers who've qualified for the Pro final the opportunity to be in the Pro final. But the driver that qualified for the Pro final is Tam. Who's now, blown, Who's now blown up? So, so I, will we get a reserve in the pro final? Yeah, just the five just be, no, there will be a reserve, but who that will be, I don't know. Okay, so yes, yeah, so there comes uh, our open two wheel drive drivers, Simon Tiger, wandering up the hill there at the back. Hearing there's going to be a delay of five or six minutes because of the oil that's down in uh, the final corner. We can see out of the country oh, yeah. box window that there's a lot of cement dust going down there. That is. Uh, not ideal. I really hope Tom hasn't blown the engine or something because uh, that's fantastic to have him in this championship. I thought that was Andreas Ericsson for a minute. That would wouldn't surprise me. Look at that. Look at the dude on the quad bike for the win. That is yes. He's done that before. Dude is pro, isn't he? Look at that. Okay, well, what kind of, that is he? That man needs some sort of an award, doesn't he? The, the crowd are clapping. Cal Award. A hell of a move. Back the other way. Look at that, eh? Look at that. I'm impressed. Are you impressed at home? Was that the move of the day or did somebody else get the move of the day for you? <laughs> move of the day. <laughs> Seriously, though. Yeah, bag open, just cruising along, dropping it out. Yeah, it's going to need a third pass, though, isn't it? Well, because it was. It would have taken a lot longer if you'd done it by hand. You're not impressed? Well, are we, are we not impressed. entertained? <laughs> You're not entertained. <laughs> yes, you are. What a great first day of Rally X 2023. Say, beautiful day here in Denmark. We think we've got a beautiful day tomorrow. Should we check the weather? Can do. We're British, if you hadn't noticed. It means we check the weather occasionally. We think, well, it was going to rain overnight. That's what the forecast said originally. We're not sure if it's going to rain overnight now. Mr. Ridge? Oh. Uh, no, it's not raining tomorrow, but it's raining a lot overnight. So a lot keep, overnight. Keep the dust down. A lot of rain overnight. Wind gusts up to 25 miles an hour. That's quite windy, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if the tent will still be here in the morning. Mental note to TV team. Uh, <laughs> well, we need the hire car back. That's one of these. Yeah, we'll be taking the hire car in a minute. So, well, not a minute. We've got a little... Look at that. So, I have to say how that amount of that fluid... What are you saying? Transmission, engine... I think it's got to be It's got to no, be an oil for that to be out yeah, there. No, it is oil, yeah. And it looks, so it's it looks like it's engine to me. Right, and if it is... I mean, he's but he'd lost lots of pace, so I... Yeah. But he is also... So it could be could be turbo pumping all the oil out, or it could be big fat bang. If it's a big fat bang... No, I don't think it was a big fat bang, because he was going slowly for a while. So if he's... So if it was he, a probably... Spare engine or no? What's your money on? He's not sure. Mm. Six o'clock curfew's gone. Local local council's not here yet. Can we see Vigo? Can we go and see where Vigo is with his landing pad? Can we get can we get a shot of Vigo or not? I don't know if we can. Maybe he can get a shot of himself on his own drone. Or just you know, can't Vigo get launched? He's probably saving batteries because he knows he has, he's waving at us. Vigo's waving at us. Oh look at that! Oh wow, what's that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah.
There he is, Andreas Eriksson, leading the charge of the road sweeper through turn, what is it? Two, three, Depends what lap you're nine. on, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the last corner. Look at him, there he goes. Majestic in his... <laughs> Go on, Andreas. OK, we're sending the drone up. Here goes the drone. OK, Vigo's going for it. We can go, we, we can go we on can board with him whenever. We can ask Vigo where to go now, can't yeah, we? Yeah, well, look, Vigo's... Yeah, come on, Vigo. He's getting ready. He's getting ready. Can we, we can go, see him. Can we go and look at Part Fermé, please, Vigo, and see what well, sort no, no, of... I, I, want to, I want to wave. I want him to show everyone where we are. Oh, yeah, we can do that. But come on, come past us. You probably need to see three minutes of that. And it? then, can he, Vigo, can you just find out if there's a bar over at the where the road sweeper is? We'd like to know that as well, in case uh, we need to go and check out the view of the last corner. Uh, he puts, he's putting the drone down on the launch pad. Here we go. Maybe we can go on board. Can we go on board for takeoff? Can we do that, or is that not just not going to work? Is he live yet? Oh, he's putting the goggles down. We can see Vigo from the commentary position. Now, director, hopefully, is telling him where he where he wants it to go. To road sweepers, Dan Sweep, look with the Viking on, is closing down the gap on uh, other man in the sweeper through the final corner. Epic. How? Who do you think is going to joker first? Dan or the other one? And we don't know what the Delta is doing because they're going the wrong way. True. Imagine trying to get around the hairpin, coming out the Joker up the hill and then do 90-90. Imagine sitting on the start line now knowing there's about 8,000 litres of stuff on the track and that the lap one's going to be an absolute lottery. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we don't know how far it goes, do we? It might no. go all the way to turn one. It might. Here he goes. Take off for Vigo. We're going to have He's a coming now. over. He's coming over. Here we go. There's the tent. Here we go. We'll have to turn around. Here he is. This will be alarming. All right, mate. Hello. So it's, it's like so a little good. friend, isn't it? It's ridiculous. All right, great, mate. Great flying today. Oh, careful! He's cutting the grass. <laughs> oh, he literally cutting the grass. Well, okay. we, we asked for the grass to be cut, so thank you, Vigo. Look at this. Oh, look at the aerobatics. Now we know what to do when we're filling. We just go and do aerobatics under the bridge. Oh, I've wanted him to go under the bridge all day. <laughs> Vigo, you're our favourite. Here we go. It's a loop the loop. Oh, it's a lovely job. Dropping back down now. Right, head over to the final corner, please, Vigo. Can you see if that's a bar on the outside of this next corner? Straight on. End of the row of flags. Right a bit. Oh, we're going racing. That's a disaster. That is... I mean, what... True, we are here for it. Vigo's going to head into his landing pad. Look, so he, there's our tent on the right, and his landing pad is just up at the top. Brilliant stuff. And now we know what to do if ever there's no racing. But there is racing. It's front row, Simon Olofsson on the inside from Martin Enland. You've then got Ola Henry Steinsholt and Isaac Hockfist on row two, Lucas Anderson and Marcus Expeth on row three. Supercar lights final coming up. You can hear the clunk into gear. Revs up. Here we go. The light is getting low now in the sky. The dust will be trickier. We've got those slippery corners as well. Oh, Enlund didn't get the best start. Oh, Henry Steins got a better start from row two, but Olofsson is away nicely. Enlund trying to slot into the gap, but there isn't one there, and he puts Steins in the wall. So Enlund can't, and Steins broke broken the car, and he's going to be parked in the middle of the track, and that's a red flag. That is 100% a red flag, because that's got broken steering, unless he reverses that out of the way, and I suspect he won't. No, he's out the car. He's out the car, so and he's okay. He's out the car, but I think they have to move that. So, surely that's a red flag. Look how there's zero grip in that corner. There's absolutely nothing. And that will really hurt the people trying to gain on uh, the race leader. That, that, that car is way out into the middle of the track. I'll be staggered if they let this the run. one thing is that the, all of these drivers have got spotters, assuming that they've got communication, so they can know to go to the left. But uh, they went. It's high speed down there. Well, they're going to let them go, it seems. So as they come over the crest now, they've got to figure out where it is. Oh, it's late. I don't like that, got to be honest. I don't like that at all. So I'm not they, they, they know they're there now, yeah, Hal. So, you know, OK, there, yeah. now it's arguably oh, OK. Oh, it's got a problem. He stopped oh. on the exit of turn three. Oh, Simon. That happened to him a couple oh. of years ago, didn't he? He's gutted. Shouting in the car, Hal, as you would expect. An issue then for the top qualifier, the pole man. Oh, that's gutting, isn't it? No, so Steintold's gone out after contact at the start. Olofsson's gone out with an issue. Enlund is the leader from Hookfist and Anderson. So Anderson might get a podium. Will get a podium, has already jokered. XPF's not on the back of him, and there's so few overtaking opportunities now. You're not going to do it down here. You're not probably going to get a run out of the final corner because it's so slippery. Low sun, as you said. Simon Olofsson 
is uh, stopped somewhere now. So there's yellow, there's a yellow light on the side of the track there, Hal, which is the equivalent of a there yellow flag. There's Simon. Yeah. There's uh, Herkovist has come out in front of. And, but I don't think he's in front of Anderson. I think Anderson's got. Yeah, Anderson's got Hockvist. So Anderson, wow. the 15 year old making the debut in Supercar Lights here, is in P2 and has got a gap of some two points. He's only 2.3 off the back of Enland. Anderson's going to win this. It's, uh, there's a long way to go, but Anderson could conceivably win this race on his debut in Supercar Lights, age 15. Oh, Enland, oh God, I do not like that bit of track. I really don't, but Anderson now... Enland, I wonder if Enland's got a problem here because he's losing lots of pace, isn't he? He's struggling out of that corner, pouring water onto the windscreen from the washers. We don't... He hasn't... No, I'm sure he hasn't jokered yet on lap three because he's led from uh, Olufsen retiring on lap two. Wow, what a debut this will be. It'll be so akin. I think there's a misfire there. Is that a misfire for Enland? Maybe it is, but I mean... It but the hook is looking still... OK, this is not over. We've got a lap and a bit to go. Let's have a listen. You wouldn't want to be owning Steintel's car, listening. No, I think he's just find, trying to find traction. Edlund's staying out, but he's not got enough over Anderson. The difference is 1.6 seconds. Anderson is right there. Anderson went uh, almost half a second quicker last time around. On best lap, Anderson is a... Lucas Anderson on the fastest lap of the race with a 43.8. Now Shukvis has just picked him by a couple of tenths. But that's half a second quicker than Enland again. I do think Enland's got something going on. But Anderson is absolutely in the pound seat here as they climb the hill for the final time. Look how slippery and wet it is going up the hill. Tricky conditions, isn't it? Low sunshine as well. That car parked in the middle of the straight now. Enland's got a joker. So here we go then. Enland is getting... A, uh, now we can hear a misfire. Victor and Enland hasn't jokered. So did Enland joker earlier? Did he joker earlier? We've missed it. Oh, don't tell me that. We, our joker indicators, we're not sure about. Enlund's coming around to take the checker flag. Anderson in P2. Either way, it's an incredible debut, whether it's a win or a second. Oh, we're on to the fifth lap. Sorry, how bad? Is there another lap to go? It's, it's, it was on the fifth of five lap on the... Uh, on the graphics. Counter, but, oh, we're, no, not on the timing screen. So we've been, uh, yeah, slightly deceived there. Well, they're still... So Anderson is, is still within reach. Schuchvist... OK, we're seeing checker flags. Apologies, guys. We're seeing checker flags on our timing screen and... This is the final lap. Well, yeah, this is the last lap, but we had that up on the screen before. Now yeah, we go to Joker, and we're right. Thank you for the confusion when we're knackered at the end of the day. It doesn't matter. It's a brilliant debut by Lucas Anderson, the Crosscar Junior Champion two years ago, runner-up in Crosscar oh, Junior I'm last year. Already. Steps up to take his win on the debut here in Denmark. What an epic performance by Lucas Anderson. Wow. Amazing. What a drive. Brilliant. Sorry, sorry for cutting across no, here. Mate. He was waving in the car so before good. he got to the line. I'm absolutely delighted for him. He's 15. He's only the second driver ever to be given permission. He's on the back row of the grid here. Look at this. OK, bit of carnage in turn one. Stein's Holt, for me, did get put in the wall here. So Enlund's trying to find the gap. It's not there, and he puts him in the wall. So I think, personally, Enlund might get a, a ticking off for that. Um, Stein's Holt's got broken steering. We were convinced they'd red flag it. They didn't. Here it is. Look. And by now, look, Anderson, oh, he got a big old clatter himself. Look at this, he's he miles off the back. Anderson was last of the cars that were running out of the first corner. I I, 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 he's last of the cars that were running at the end of the first lap. I'm, I'm a little bit in awe, Hal. I mean, it's just, what, what do he do? Just joke. See if we can see in the windscreen this time around. There's more grip there than there was now, isn't there, in the final corner? Enlund was lucky to get out there ahead of uh, Schuchvist. Yeah. Look, punchy, there's confidence, isn't there? He yeah. hasn't even got to the <laughs> line. <laughs> Congratulations to Lucas Anderson, graduating from Junior Cross Car, straight into Supercar Lights, and taking the win on his debut against a pretty well-stacked field. Okay, so now we're hearing 
and to add to the confusion that they drove six laps. But for me, Hal, if you pulled the flag at lap five, you'd have to give Enland a notional joker lap because he hadn't taken the joker, in which case Anderson would win anyway. What's your thoughts? Never happened before. So, You're see, correct. You're absolutely correct, yeah, because Enland's still out to Joker. So the result will stand. I think and Enland, I th what? Uh, depends if they were not, if they were shown with one lap to go board, then Enland can quite fairly say, I thought there was a lap to go, and they'll maybe give him the Joker time he had. Ultimately, they've done an extra lap, but it wouldn't have changed the result because Shukvis wasn't close enough. So. And Enland hadn't Jokered. Check social media later. There's the confusion. Try being in our shoes. Anderson's won. There's no yeah. two ways about it. Yeah. Anderson won the race. OK, here we go. Final race of the day. Supercar. Let's do this. Front row, your five-time World Rally Cross champion, Johan Christophsen, up against Peter Hedstrom. He's had a great day today. The Hyundai has been on fire. Not literally, in terms of the timesheets. Row two, Kevin Eriksson, back in the Honda Civic. He drove in Nitro Rally Cross a couple of years ago, remember. Belevsky. And then at the back is Andreas Backer. And I think we're missing Michael Tam because he had a problem with that car. And so the pro drivers, the, the AM driver who'd made it through to the final, looks like he's not going to show. Waiting for one last thumbs up. We are well over curfew here. How they've got away with it, I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't matter. As long as we get this final away, I'll be happy. Apparently some sort of a delay while the stewards decide on the previous situation. Maybe they're checking why the flag went. What we don't want, Hal, is we don't want a repeat of that in this one. Um, with regard to the, you know, the extra lap or anything. It's remarkable how difficult it is to count to five or six, but it's so easy to criticise. And yeah, oh, mate, it's not that. Yeah, I've done it myself. I know so many amazing spots. Ollie Erickson said, "You joke early." Just he said to Kevin Erickson. Make sure you know what lap you're on. Make sure you know where the, the lap counter lap board, board is, is yeah. so you yeah. know what lap you're on. Yeah. And they're some of the most experienced spotters in the business, so it's it's not easy. It sounds super easy, but it just isn't. It's like the start procedure, you know, I call people out all the time for going when the ready to race light yeah, goes mate, out. And then my first you... supercar starts, sat there, handbrake, ra -da 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 -da, ready to race light goes, I went. Good like, lad, good lad. But I was like, you idiot. Oh. OK, supercars clunked into gear and good to go for one last race, round one of 2023 rally end season. Christopherson versus Hedstrom on the front row. Ericsson and Belevsky on row two backward. Can he get anywhere from the back of the grid? It's a great start by both cars on the front row. Belevsky as well. Backward looking out to the outside line. Is he going to wait and see what the carnage is? Belevsky's inside him. Hedstrom's got the jump on Christopherson. Christopherson inside. Ericsson spins on the brakes. Oh, he nearly gets collected. Belevsky hits the tyres. Ericsson runs wide. And this Christopherson hasn't gone joker. And I thought he would, but he hasn't gone joker on this one. Smoking up the tyres on that slippery stuff and through. So at the minute, Hedstrom leads from Christopherson and Ericsson. Johan couldn't joker. He was in the wrong part of the track and there was cars everywhere. Hedstrom's must got smoke pouring off the back of his car. He's had contact in the left rear. The bodywork was pushed under the rear tyres. Move now. Christofsson's also had contact in the rear. How Kevin Erickson is still third, I don't know, because he was going right when the second corner goes left. And now it's all about how much Christofsson closed down this gap. Belevsky was there as well. Did it, did, backward didn't joke it, did he, from the back of the pack? I didn't clock it. Oh, extra runs a bit deep. Is that a mistake? Where does Christofsson go? Does he go into the joker or not? He doesn't. Christofsson stays out on the standard lap as well. You can't be making mistakes like that, Peter, when you've got Johan Christofsson closing down on you. Look how slippery it is still through the final corner. Hedstrom gets so sideways on the exit. Backward's joker. According to our indicator, backward has joker already, so we need to keep an eye on what his gap is up to the cars in front. There's something wrong with Backward's uh, transponder, but he's 9.8 seconds behind, so he's had some kind of issue. So he's not going to get there, is he? Even if he, whether he's joking or not, he's not going to get there. Ignore the ladder on the left-hand side. Hedstrom is leading. He's not in P5, so Hedstrom is leading. Forgive us for the uh, little issues at the end of the day here. It's been a long day for everybody involved. Out of the commentary box window, Backward is still circulating. Belevsky's in the joker lap, so Backward's had a problem at some point during the lap. And look how much Joe Christophson's closing onto the back of Peter Hedstrom. 
So the gap as they came over the line was 0.6 of a second. I wonder what Johan's waiting for. Is he waiting for a bit of space behind Haller or does he just want to be really lose. close to Hedstrom? Because Hedstrom's not slow here at all. He'll lose track position to Kevin Erickson as it stands. He's only 2.8 ahead, so he's the risk go, ending up in a fight with Kevin, yeah. which he can't afford to do because then that will just let Hedstrom get away that little bit. So he's going to wait then. Surely Johan's going to wait. He does. He's going to go with Hedstrom and they'll have to risk it on lap four, but by then Kevin might go anyway or oh, a bit of smoke flicks the car the other way now the five-time world rally cross champion is right underneath the rear wing at Hedstrom surely this is the lap to do it what's the gap going to be back to Kevin this time round they cross the line and the difference is come on how far back is Kevin a long way back 6.8 so Kevin must have gone Kevin's gone joker has he yes he has that's freed up at Christoph it's got to be this lap Hal. this is a stellar performance from Peter Hedstrom he's only three temps slower on best lap so far than the five-time world champion behind him Christofsson has to joker this time around, you very correctly say, unless Hedstrom goes in, no he doesn't, Christofsson's going to joker. That tyre stack as well has changed the line in there, Hal, that's the first time they're taking this joker lap the way they're taking it, so Christofsson now to the left, going to see what the gap is, Hedstrom is holding on out front, there he's uh, Christofsson, he comes over the line, what, one lap to go. What pressure to try and beat the five-time world champion, Johan Christofsson, on a single lap, this could be the lap of Peter Hedstrom's career, he's done the fastest lap of the race so far on the penultimate lap. So Hedstrom then has got purple timing screens. He's doing his absolute best. The pressure is enormous. The best rally cross driver in the world is behind him. But this could be the biggest result of Hedstrom's career. He pops up over the crest, drops into the choker lap. Now, where's Christophs on the merge? Look to the right-hand side. Hedstrom holds on. Peter Hedstrom holds off Johan Christophs to win round one of Rally X 2023. That is a hell of a drive from Hedstrom. Christophs gets P2 and Ericsson comes through into third. Wow. Wow. What a drive from Peter Hedstrom. He did all of that at the start. He's doing donuts on the loose. He is such an experienced driver. He's won Swedish titles before. He's made a comeback this weekend. He's going to do the full season, and that is laying down a massive marker. Brilliant, brilliant stuff from Hedstrom. I think he got one donut in before he ran out of visibility and has had to park it, but it's epic. This is the start, look. Watch for Christophson on the inside. Hedstrom gives him a... Oh, how much of a squeeze does he give him? No, uh, enough. That's but, fine. Yeah, but Johan knew, didn't he? Johan was turning into him as he was turning out. Kevin Eriksson drops it on the brakes here. Watch. So he's dropped it. Gives it. Gives Christophson a nudge. It helps rotate Johan, actually. Johan doesn't lose out too badly with that, nor does Kevin. No, Belevski ends up on the tyres, Hal, on the inside. I thought Belevski would lose way more time from this. Look at this. Oh, my God, he drove over them. You only he's do almost that. rolled. <laughs> you only do that with 600 horsepower and a bale of tyres. So and where did, I... did go Joker on lap one. Yeah, but I don't know where he lost the time because he was a long way back. Wow, I cannot believe, genuinely can't believe that the Peter pressure. Hedstrom has beaten Christofsson on a single lap under that pressure and did the fastest lap of the race. Yeah, fair, that's what I mean. Fair, you, you have to understand. That was a, that was a genuine win. There right. wasn't anything, no. there was no. no mitigating circumstances. He beat Christofsson fair and square. Okay, Johan's not in his favourite car. No, was already still. saying it, what didn't feel quite right. But he's still been the top man to beat all day. Of course. Christopherson's still been the man to beat all day. And Hedstrom, in the last race of the day, has got the job done from the outside of row one. And it's a brilliant performance by him. Hal, are you going to head down to the podium? Yep. I will uh, see, see you there. down there shortly. Yeah, so Hal Ridge is going to jump on the back of a quad bike, which I'm going to be on in just a few moments' time. Wow. So just uh, checking, uh, can Hal, can you hear me? He's, he gives me a thumbs up, so Hal can hear me. He's got a set of cans on. He's sitting on the back of a quad bike with our RF cameraman. We, I mean, if the RF's live, we could take a look at their rundown, actually. Have we got the RF live on the uh, on the quad bike? Just for a quick look in a moment. Here's another look at the start look. Hedstrom turns in aggressively here, but partly to set the car up. But Johan knows he's already in the door, pushing him back again as they go down to turn one. Look at this, look. Cuts in. Christopherson turns out into him, just as Hedstrom turning in, that's fine, that's what we expect. Kevin Erickson looking up the inside, watch this, comes in, just locks the rears up a little bit too much, nudges into the back of Christopherson. Pilevski gets through, somehow pulls the Audi over the top of the bale of tyres, and in the background, Backerud has had a bad start, he's got bad visibility, there's all carnage kicking off in front of him. He has to come around the outside of Pilevski. Where is he? There, look, he's looking and going, I don't even know what's going on. That's Christopherson. Jumping in the car, not his car, remember. This was Bergstrom's car from last year. 
They've done a bit of work on it. It's not the same, quite the same spec as uh, the car that OC Baby's driving. Through that sweeping right hander, but Hedstrom at this point, just imagine the pressure on your shoulders. He's in that great Hyundai, he's had a good day. He's been on the pace all day long. This morning he was telling me and how the car is so fast on the straight. I can't keep up with it in the corners. Well, he's found a way to keep up with it in the corners right at the end of the day. Hedstrom has got a brilliant start. He was assertive off the line. And Christopherson has done his best. Christopherson couldn't joke at any earlier and give himself any clear space because Kevin Erickson was just in that window that he needed to get it done. Hedstrom pitches the car into a donut, chucks up a ton of dust and then has to park it. There's Vigo's drone look disappearing into the cloud. That is the podium. Hal should be down there any minute. So Hal is uh, is nearly down. We've got the uh, the cameras coming up any minute now. He'll be able to go and talk to the drivers. On the right-hand side, you can see Christopherson talking to Kevin Erickson, Andreas Erickson trying to get them over to the uh, the podium. Is that Cuba down there? I'm not sure. The photographer. There is Hal. Hal, first of all, mate, how's the atmosphere down there? It's uh, electric. There's a, uh, a lot of conversation going on between the podium finishers. I'm going to jump in. There's a big dent in Johan Christopherson's door. Peter Hedstrom. That was enormous pressure from Johan behind you. How do you feel? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, the start was all perfect. And I, I tried to, to um, I, I it like that for, for Johan for, so, to, so he should try, take it down. But he was very, very good in the first corner. He don't uh, press me and I committed some number one. And uh, yeah, the, the race was, was awesome. I mean, that car. That is just like a rocket. What does it mean to you? You've won Swedish titles before, but to beat the five-time world champion in a straight fight, what does it mean to you? I don't know. I'm clear. We don't drive tomorrow. <laughs> Party time. Well done, mate. We'll just jump in now with uh, Johan Christofsson. Johan, your uh, first race back. There's a bit of fluid from underneath the car. How was, uh, how was that race for you? Uh, I mean, I... It was a good final in the end. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't plan out uh, like I wanted, but um, yeah, Petro had a good start and he did absolutely perfect in the first corner. I couldn't really defend harder than I did. So uh, uh, yeah, T2 was a bit of a mess, but uh, yeah. Uh, from there on, I tried to hunt down Petro, but he was driving really well. Uh, he drove very fast. So, and then uh, yeah, the issues was coming more and more. And uh, unfortunately, Towards the end, the, the car was bogging down a, a bit too much, but would have maybe been a bit closer with Peter, but uh, he drove fantastic, so uh, very well done. I mean, it's not easy to, to jump in and uh, with these cars uh, win after the, the long winter break, and uh, yeah, he did a very good job. How much have you enjoyed being back in the, the KMS team with uh, an ICE Polo this weekend, racing together with Ola Christian? You, you're, you're back for 2023. It must have been a good weekend overall so far, or at least the first, first day overall. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I really like Rally X Nordic. It's fantastic. It's so many things that you can play around with, with the car and, you know, without, uh, you know, uh, punishing too much if you don't make uh, the best result. Uh, but yeah, final was definitely not what I wanted, but uh, that, that's how it is, you know. Uh, and, uh, you know, good fun to try out a new car as well and, uh, yeah, do some tweaks for tomorrow and hopefully we will be a bit stronger then. See you then. Bye, mate. Thank you. All right, so we'll continue moving around the... Uh the finish area, this is Kevin Erickson's car. You know, the cleanest car in this area is actually Peter Hedstrom's. Kevin got a lot of damage if we look. The under tray and the front bumper, not enough to slow him down too much. Where is Kevin? He's over here. Let's just have a word with the podium finisher. My goodness, Kevin, you were pointing 90 right in the first corner when you should have been going 90 left, but you gathered it all back up and got back to the podium. How do you feel? Yeah, first of all, all my apologies to the KMS team for some extra damage for, for my mistake there. I, I, I went too much on the, on the left there in the dust, and as soon as I braked, I, I, I just snapped the whole rear and I locked up the brake. So I apologize to you, and it's not how I wanted the final to go. And yeah, they maybe need to dent that bumper back up. And of course, I got some damage to my car, so it's not ideal. But uh, big congrats to Peter and to you, Juan. Uh, yeah. I would like to be there myself and uh, yeah, so yeah, once again, sorry the KMS guy for some extra work. But for you to be on the podium, it's been a, a tough day. I, I know your, your foot's not ideal in this car especially. How, how do you feel to be uh, in the top three come the end? 
it feels good for sure. It was a big uh, change now coming back into to, to the supercar. Uh, I had absolutely zero miles of testing beforehand. It was a very late, uh, very late decision really to do this, but it feels good. I had a lot of fun. Uh, you one has been, you know, the, the top guy, and we we will all been trying to find those extra three, four tens that he's been faster than us. And Peter has also done a tremendous job, and it's so good to see him get to get a win here. And uh, hopefully tomorrow I can try and get the fight a little bit closer to, to those two fast guys. Well done, mate. Get some rest. I know you've worked so hard for this whole event to run as well. And uh, the next round in tier up as well. So delighted for you to be on the podium. Thank you. Hal, I'm not going to make it down to the grid, mate. So I'm going to stay up here and close the show out. I just wonder what your thoughts were on a brilliant first day here in, in Nice. I've loved being, being back here with you in the commentary box. But that's some performance by Peter, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Let's just go for two seconds. Let's just go and have a look at the damage on the back of uh, Johan's car. Go for it. Go for it. Kevin was mentioning you can I love being down here you can really smell the intensity of a supercar race the car smells so hot it's like being on a, a gravel rally where you can smell the gravel if we look at the back of Johan's car there's not too much damage it pushed the the bumper onto the rear tire but I think that supercar final really typified the high quality of this championship of the drivers that are in it and uh, we saw some brilliant finals didn't we cross car and cross car junior were especially epic and uh, the supercar pro final really put the uh, cherry on the cake Brilliant, Hal. Thanks so much for all your hard Thank work you, mate. today, mate. Thank you to the whole TV team as well. We're going to come back up to me in the commentary box uh, and we're going to get ourselves ready for, for one more day tomorrow. Um, we've got a whole round one done and dusted, finished, but we've got a round two still to come. We're going to do it all again tomorrow. Hopefully the sun's going to be shining. It might rain overnight, which could make track conditions pretty interesting in the morning. But thank you so much for watching. I say thank you to Hal Ridge. Thank you to the entire team. Uh, we had uh, Ollie Erickson came up and saw us earlier on today. So we really hope you've enjoyed it. Get in touch with us on social media if you have. Please like and follow the, uh, the YouTube channel for RallyX as well. And we'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, guys.